NASCAR leaves its circuit of the Americas venture and moves back to an oval. Welcome to Short Track Racing at Richmond Raceway, live on JB Motorsports and USRN, as we welcome you to an Easter special here for NASCAR on Easter Sunday. Hello, everybody. Well done for tuning in, whether it is Monday morning, if you're in Europe, very late Sunday evening at 11.33 p.m. in the UK and Portugal, or if you're just finishing your Sunday fit tea as we get ready for the Toyota Owners 400 here at Richmond Raceway. Well, we have been experiencing what has been a very unusual week as well for NASCAR. We've left the Circuit of the Americas Championship and we've had a load of different winners. And our first repeat winner of the season with Will Byron as well taking the chequered flag, proving that he can do it both on ovals and road courses in 2024 for that number 24. Now we arrive back at Richmond and things look slightly different. That's because for the first time this year, rain has hit us and we have a rain delay now the race is due off in around about 40 minutes time we are hopeful and optimistic that we can get going maybe using nascar's rain tires now for those of you who tune in on JB Motorsports and are unsure about what rain tires are let me just explain to you that on ovals, NASCAR does not race if it's A, heavy rain, or B, lightning within an eight mile radius. At the moment, NASCAR does race if the track is just a little bit greasy. And that's to try and make sure that we don't have hours and hours and hours of rain delays. So what we have the prospect of is running what in the motorsport world of Formula One, we know as intermediate tyres, which is a half dry, half slick, half wet, half grooved tyre that is allowing grip in the apex via the curves on the outer side, still sort of a slick tyre. It just enables us to get running a little bit quicker if the track's not 100% dry, but is anywhere between 80 and 100% dry. So that's what we could be seeing as a factor here later on in the day. I want to say as well, uh, Matthew Owens is going to be joining us in the commentary box for this one over on USRN as well. I know we're tuning on on USRN too. Uh, just a little update for you there as well. He's busy finishing the college basketball, then having his Easter Sunday. Uh, and also that means that Josh T isn't with us because he's got Brands Hatch tomorrow. So he's off trackside and other events. And of course, Alan Memridge as well over in the stateside, not with us this weekend as he is uh, with Easter. So Megan Birch will be joining me in the commentary box for stage one. And then from stage two onwards, fingers crossed, Matthew Owens will be joining us in the commentary box as well as a sort of a split strategy. And he'll be hearing from the Fox guys in the commentary box. And that starts right now as well here as we gear up for the Toyota owners 400 here, 400 laps. It's a mile a minute. And let's see what we've got going. Let's hand over now to Fox Sports. That is amazing. He just about wrecked us for no reason. Now we're starting to see some racing. Oh, hard hard to to off. And we do expect to have a pit stop or two or three. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold up, hold up, Joe. And we can see how these two race one another for this win. A little history there. Alex Bowman. Kyle Larson. All right, baby. Kevin Harvick wins. Yeah, boy. Great job. Fox Sports continuing live from Richmond, Virginia. 20 races until the playoffs. Five drivers already are locked in. And glad you're joining us on this Easter event from Richmond Raceway as Chase Elliott starting on the front row. The weather has changed a little bit. Cloudy chance of rain as Denny Hamlin calls this his home track. The Toyota driver with great success and the Toyota owners 400 a chance of rain later. But planning to start things on time. Let's hit the track with our team of pit reporters starting with Regan Smith. Regan. Well, Chris Drivers down here getting ready to get introduced to the fans. Lots to think about tonight, Daniel Suarez. You've got possible rain tires. You've got fall off. How do you put it all together? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, the last time that we had a situation like this, it was in the All-Star race in Northwest World. 
and we had a blast, you know, the first thing the wet and then it got dry. It was a lot of fun. So overall, you know, I've been pretty happy with the 99 Chevy Camaro Quaker State. So we're looking forward to, to have some fun and uh, see how the race play out because it seems like we're going to have rain for an hour, hour and a half, and then it's going to dry out. So it should be fun. Let's go. I think Bubba Wallace just gave us a sneak peek as to who Jamie's got. Yeah, Bubba Wallace, wants, he wants his turn to talk. I know his team, Tennessee, just lost. Get that out of the way. He did not have to bring that up. I know. I'm sorry. Let's talk about your good qualifying effort, though. Three straight weeks, top 10. Yeah. How happy are you to be back at Richmond, back on an oval? I feel good, Jamie. Uh, I mean, the weather is putting a damping on things, pun intended. Um, so a little bit of unknown what to expect with the wet weather package here. Um, if we can relate anything to North Wilkesboro, maybe we'll see. But uh, McDonald's hood, Camry is really, really strong. It was good in practice. So just got to lock in, just get into a rhythm and execute all night long. Good luck. Thank you. Regan. Ryan Blaney having a conversation about what's going to happen out there. Ryan, is it going to get as wild as we think? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what we're uh, – the plan is – might do the wet weather tires. I don't know. It's not raining too hard, so we'll see. I mean, it'll be interesting. Um, we tried it at Wilkesboro last year, and it was successful. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, maybe uh, maybe we'll throw them on here to get going. So we don't really get told much until we get out there at the car and, and we get rolling. So we'll see. But Menards, Duracell, Ford Mustang's pretty decent. And, um, starting not too bad. But, yeah, I think the weather is what uh, everyone's kind of, you know, is, is looking forward to or not looking forward to. I don't know, but um, it'll be a wild one for sure. All right, it's going to be wild out there, Chris. All right, thank you, Regan and uh, Jamie and uh, Ryan. Boy, Toyota's heated up in the fourth race of the season, always among the best with Joe Gibbs Racing. And Joe Gibbs, the only person in both the NASCAR Hall of Fame and Pro Football Hall of Fame, and the drivers may change through the years, but JGR just keeps rolling. Come with me now. So we're waiting to see what we're going to have here at Richmond, and we are in that cursed rain delay to see what's going to happen. Let's hand back over. Joe Gibbs Racing has made it their specialty. With two races down on tracks a mile or shorter this season, we watched JGR go to victory lane in both. Christopher Bell wins in Phoenix. Denny Hamlin is going to win Bristol. The early success this season isn't a coincidence, as all four drivers in the stable are running up front. They're all up there leading laps. They all potentially can win a race. Those Gibbs cars were fast today. With a trio of vets at the top of their game and a lone youngster waiting for his shot at glory. It's coming. It's not going to be long before that team is in victory lane with Ty Gibbs. Tonight, Coach Gibbs and company head to Richmond, a track they have dominated through NASCAR's history. It's Tony Stewart. With no better place to continue success in 2024. Which of the four can get it done under the lights at Richmond? And Joe Gibbs joining us live here in the Cup Garage. Happy Easter uh, to you and, and the family. Boy, the years go by. Drivers change. You just keep on rolling right along. What's the secret to the uh, Joe Gibbs success? I think it's uh, the people we have. And so I think these two guys know. Uh, it's one thing to have great drivers, which I think we have. Two veteran guys, two young ones. and uh, But really, it's our people there uh, at the race shop. We got some guys that have been with us 25 and 30 years now. And so it's your people. Uh, it kind of makes us go. I hear, I hear a lot about the people, but I hear about you uh, from a, a lot of those people that, that work for you. You have these interesting dynamics of drivers. You have Denny Hamlin to a Martin Truex. You have your grandson and Christopher Bell. And through the years, you've managed some of the toughest ones with Tony Stewart and Kyle <laughs> Busch. How do you keep all these guys straight? Because the dynamics, it, it is a little bit different right now with, with Ty there. But how do you keep all of that straight year after year after year with your drivers? I will say this. You hit on it. Tony, Tony Stewart, you know, I got a lot of gray hair here. A lot of it's Tony Stewart. And then Kyle, you know, that was a different experience. And now Denny Hamlin. Yeah, well, 
Yeah, Denny now is growing into it. So maybe it's something about me. <laughs> maybe, I'm, maybe I'm the wrong guy yeah, to be you, handling this. You make them winners. <laughs> you make them winners. I, and I think I, I don't think. think you take enough credit for that because you make all these guys win. And it's all about it's all about putting the right people in the right spots. And and it's just amazing how you do that. And can you tell us how? Well, I, I think really um, our race team started off with 17 people today. We got a large number, 450, and it's those people that have built things over the years. But we all know this, you're not winning up here unless you have a great guy drive it. And right. so we've been fortunate to, those guys helped build our program. You know, Tony Stewart was a big part of that, you know, Bobby Labonte, and you go all the way back to our, our, our guys that kind of came here, drove here, and helped us build things. So it's a big part of it. And you got to have it. Yep. Joe, you say you got to have those drivers. You got to have that championship caliber driver. How special is it after a Tony Stewart, after Denny Hamlin, after Kyle Busch, a champion uh, that he was, to have a grandson and Ty Gibbs <laughs> out here in race winning form? And I, we say it week in and week out the time is coming. It's, it's a, just a matter of when. I got great grandkids. I got eight of them. Case is having a birthday today. I got them in baseball, I got them in racing. <laughs> I think Ty, honestly, he may have been born on wheels because I only time I ever remember him from three years old, it was a skateboard, it was a go-kart, it was something. And I think every parent out there knows what it's like to have your kid or your grandkids, you know, trying to live their dream and having some success. And that's exactly the way I feel. Both of you have young people, we all have our kids. And so I think that's an experience that every parent knows exactly how I feel. And so it's really special and I'm thrilled to be a part of his team. Yeah, and you, you've lived the dream. I mean, you won three Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks, right? You won five cup championships with three different drivers and, and uh, still rolling along here. I mean, do you think about stepping away, easing up? I mean, obviously, I remember you telling me that you uh, you had to coach football to fund your NASCAR habit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's true. Yeah. Uh, the, the biggest thrill I get every month is the first of every month trying to pay the bills. <laughs> so, well, you can pay them. So that's a thrill, okay? And so when you talk to the drivers, there's one thing about all of them, okay? Right. They want more, more of that. So we're trying to find a way to pay for everything. But honestly, we've been so fortunate to have great guys that race for us, build the program. I love this. I yeah, love the competitive part of it. We love coming to Richmond. We had a bunch of our sponsors here today. Right. Our sport's different. You gotta have great sponsors, and they're more than sponsors, they're partners, and they're gonna be on that car today for three and a half hours, which other sports, you don't get that. It's a thrill for me to be a part of this. I love being a part of our team and contributing however I can. Yeah, well, and you've changed with the times. I mean, just like football, yeah. you've adjusted, adapted, and that's why you've been able to be successful. Good with them sponsors, yeah, yeah. too, yeah. by the way. Yeah. That, that's not what a lot of the people say, <laughs> yeah. well, okay? We, you're a special man, and we love yes, having you, you are, part of this. You sport. are. We Thank you. I'm, Thank you. I'm, I'm, Thank you, man. It's been a long yeah. time, and we're, we're so great to have you. All right, when well, we continue live, he's got to prepare for the race, get his drivers ready. Tom Rinaldi will sit out an amazing story of how a visit to an orphanage created a NASCAR fan who's now working in the business. A driver helped make all of that happen. And the driver introductions continue. Good start qualifying for Bubba Wallace as he will start fifth today looking for his first win of the year. We'll continue in a moment. Absolutely a good season start so far. And I can hear myself on an echo as we're broadcasting on USRN as well so scheduled start in around about 20 ooh, 28 minutes time until the green flag goes out then here at the moment as we've got ready to go uh we finally fixed by the way uh the tv pictures uh megan's laptop is taking the billing uh today as well hooked up upstairs via hdmi cable and ethernet so that's not going to break on us from abby dabby sports too and over on the main comms box screen that's how you're hearing the fox coverage as well alongside us keeping up here in the box so quick facts about richmond as well hundreds 
134 races it's held over the 75 years that NASCAR has been racing as well. 58 different pole winners. Uh, the youngest ever pole winner, of course, was Brian Vickers back in 2004 uh, as well in the 15th of May. 20 years, 6 months and 21 days old. But pole position today goes the way of Kyle Larson. He's no stranger to pole positions. He's no stranger to Richmond either uh, for Kyle Larson. Looking down on the stats, uh, 18 starts here. Uh, second pole, and when he started that first pole position before that, he got a victory. Could he get a third win on the lines? That's what he's looking forward here today as well. Uh, in terms of top fives, four tops fives, eight top ten finishes. But in terms of DNFs, only ever had the one here uh, in 18 starts. So uh, Kyle Larson starting for the pole is very much a good spot and a good run as well. The rain is building up massively above my commentary box right now and I'm very thankful for a time that we haven't got uh, international pictures uh, via satellite and when it's coming through the internet at the moment. So that's a good thing. Let's head back over then and I head down to Fox Sports. See for the start of this race and you want to clarify first of all they are wet weather tires and will they race in the rain or not now we don't have windshield wipers we don't have rear light it's on the yeah. cars well when we talked to nascar earlier if, if it's a light mist or light rain and and the spray is not too bad as you heard us talking to joey logano earlier the the biggest issue is just the the spray uh that comes from the car in front of you and the drivers just want to be able to see so i think as long as we we keep that to a minimum i don't think anybody's got a problem with driving on a wet track so in other words what he's saying this mist that we have right now i think it's perfect for that scenario the biggest thing my takeaway from the questions that we asked nascar was was what is the intent to get these cars on a racetrack under green flag conditions? And that answer yeah. was yes. So, man, and I'm here for it. Baby. Any drivers favor in the situation more than any other? I, I think it's I think it's pretty wide open when, when you get to this point. I think if it was dry, Martin Truex would, would have been my pick. Again, Kyle Larson experience. Look for experience. Denny Hamlin on that list. If these wet weather conditions happen, it's going to be experience, just like we saw in Bristol. Yeah, Truex, the points leader, and he has completed every lap run this year, just like uh, Denny. Hamlin has led in every race this year the only driver to do that yeah and I think when you when you look at this this list I mean Kyle Busch could could be a great pick for a long shot right there with all of his experience here how about your old ride uh, Josh Berry in a four car that yeah, car looked good in practice look for him to march up through the field and Fords, could this be a breakthrough moment for them? I mean, the Toyotas and the Chevys have been just, you know, outstanding, especially well, Gibbs and, and, and Henry. The Fords have to, you know, this is, a like we talked earlier, this is a racetrack that Joey Logano has done yeah. really, really well. And if they don't run good tonight, it'll be an, a big a big uh, alarm that goes off. Well, we know wet weather tires don't have any stagger. That is an adjustment massively to the setups of these race cars. If I'm in a Ford Mustang right now, I'm looking for an opportunity somehow, some way. Good race track force but maybe this wet weather condition might be what they ordered and it could be good for them yeah a little unknown a little strategy we'll watch closely you guys have to head up to the booth to call the race yes. with mike joyce so have fun and again happy easter to you and your family as, easter, as we everybody. continue here you know kyle bush has yet to win this year but he does have six wins here in richmond more than any active driver he's won everywhere he's been he even has won when he hasn't raced and he went to a special place that made a difference with a fan of nascar as tom Rennell tells us some 18 years ago. We all have journeys that shape us. For one man on this pit crew, the journey started 18 years ago in a single moment with a young driver. To just have one visit with a particular child, to then see the prosperity that he has and the dreams that he has, to be able to go out there and achieve some of that, makes you really feel good. How did Kyle Busch affect your life? Changed my whole life. Charles Brown's journey began in 1996 in Liberia a West African country torn by civil war. I seen my mom struggle. There was no money, no food. There was refugees camps and all that. My father saw what was going on in the country. My dad wanted me to come up here to further my education. That was the whole reason for me to come to the United States. In early 2006, Charles, his brother Dustin, and his father arrived in North Carolina 
but the transition was hard. Had nightmares for like six months straight, being there, just from stuff that happened back home, the war, so it was, it was rough, but we overcome a lot of adversity in our life. That adversity continued just months after arriving when Charles and his brother were removed from the family home after being physically disciplined by their father. The parenting style of African parents and, and American parents is totally different, right? My dad did that because my brother got in trouble. So when your kids are unsafe at home, Department of Social Services can come and get you. So that's what they did. They came and got us. I was like, now nah, I don't know what my life's gonna be at all. Charles and his brother were sent to live at the Church of God Children's Home, a group home for children. Not long after, a 21-year-old NASCAR driver paid a visit there, which he still remembers vividly. I remember going to Church of God and having a pizza party. Went over there and was just to have kind of an afternoon with the kids and to be able to just take their mind off of their situation for a little bit. I was like, okay, cool. I was like, I don't know nothing about NASCAR, but guess what? I'm about to go get the free pizza today. <laughs> so, but I started getting curious. And I started asking questions. Charles was the one who just kind of kept coming up and, and asking the questions. And I was like, this one's intrigued. And I was just like, oh, what you do for a living? You know, how, how fast the car go? Just asking questions. I was just, I was intrigued. I was intrigued in the sports for job. From that day forward, every Sunday, I was glued to the TV, cheering for Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch driving for his life right now. Pulling away for the rest of the field. A decade after their meeting, Kyle Busch won his first Cup Series title. The championship goes to Kyle Busch. Yeah, you guys are awesome. oh my God. Just months later, Charles met Busch again at Dover to tell him he was starting his own path in NASCAR. No problem, man. Well, I appreciate you saying something, and uh, I'm glad it's all worked out. I started going to Excalibur Pit School, learning. I just found love. After that, I was like, yeah, this, this is exactly what I meant to do. Now, eight years into his career, 18 years after meeting that young driver, Charles Brown is working for the same race team as Kyle Busch, both part of Richard Childress Racing. Charles now, he's a B or a C team guy right now where he works in the truck series, he works in the Xfinity series, and he pits different teams in those, and um, he's still working his way in order to get to the top tier cup team. What's the goal? <laughs> Be on the eight car in the pit, and hopefully by the grace of God, help him win the championship. That's the goal. I think that would be remarkable. I mean, that would just kind of show the determination and the work ethic and everything that Charles has put into wanting to live out his dream. All right, thank you, Tom and Kyle Bush. Reminds me of that line from the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, strange, isn't it, that each man's life touches so many others? And that story touched a lot of us. Counting it out of the Toyota Owners 400 live from Richmond Raceway. A light rain falling. Opening ceremonies are straight ahead. Yes, and we really are into this weird period now where we have no idea exactly what we are about to face here. With the Toyota Owners 400. We're gearing up. Opening ceremonies is four minutes away, and we will be bringing you all that here on JB Motorsports and USRN as well. Now, fingers crossed, this is going to start on time and we're going to have a completely good race. And thinking about it as well, just listening to my commentary box, it's raining here in the UK where I'm located. So Megan, who's got to rake her way out and down to the commentary box, isn't going to be best too pleased. I would have said, oh, we'll just join via the Discord call, but I've stolen her laptop. So she could have joined on the backup bus mixer and headphones that are currently in my room uh, where her laptop is. She could have done that, but we're using her laptop for the TV pictures, so she can't do that. So yeah, she's not going to be best pleased when she arrives right here at the bottom. So, this is looking good to see what we're going to have coming up shortly. Uh, hopefully, opening ceremonies will be back on the World Feed TV pictures. But if not, we've got the backup here uh, via Fox Sports. So, 
even if not, we've got one and two TV pictures. I'm loving this now uh, that it's got sorted. Maybe if I'm very nice, Megan might let us uh, have this permanently. But we're getting ready for opening ceremonies. Trackside, let's hand back over to Fox. The light rain is continuing here at Richmond as the sun begins to set. And you've got to start thinking, how quickly can they drive this track? Let's send it back over. Let's check in with uh, Michael Walsh for, for, for the Easter grid walk. Michael? <laughs> Hey, Chris, you'll appreciate this one. You know how the Easter Bunny keeps his fur style? Hairspray. Oh, Get it? hairspray. Oh, oh, that's pretty good. Ah, oh, he finally got it. I yeah. liked it. Get it, hairspray? Hey, hey, how you doing? How's uh, how's your uh, life going these days? Good. No hairspray here yet, so I'm, I'm okay. Um, tell me about this. I mean, everybody's so excited to talk to the crew guys. This is going to be fun when it goes. I think they must have been uh, telling you a story. I don't. I don't see many excited faces, but I am uh, because it's the same for everybody. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, have fun. I'm gonna go talk to a few other guys. Hey, Bowman, uh, you got a second? I come with an umbrella and a belt. You can win if you win the race tonight. How you feeling about today? Yeah. I mean, it's barely raining anymore, so I feel pretty good about that. But uh, we had a pretty fast Ally Chevy in practice. Don't know what it's gonna do on wet tires, but uh, I think we're fixing to find out here pretty shortly. Well, I raced in the rain. Uh, in the Ferrari in Spa, Belgium, and they said, just stay offline. And I said, if you need a guy to stay offline, I'm your guy. <laughs> so you're going to see some wild racing when this thing goes, aren't you? Yeah, for sure. I think we really don't know what to expect. Like, you look at North Wilkes Pro, the rain tire was way faster than the dry tire was. So it, we might all find grip at Richmond, which has never happened in the history of Richmond, I think. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited. It's going to get dry eventually, and I think we have a really good race car. So uh, we'll see where we stack up. That's cool. A little momentum for 48 team. Have a good race tonight and keep that going. See who can find next. There's Devin, my producer. He's up there running and waving and carrying on. We found a bit of a gap in the grid. And, uh, hey, uh, MTJ, Waltrip, and the Fox team on the scene. You want to win uh, this belt? This is a trophy for tonight. I'd love to. What do you think about what we're getting ready to see and feel, and how's it going to go? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, honestly, we've only been on these rain tires once at Wilkesboro. A lot different surface, more banking here. So I think as long as they get, you know, most of the water off the track, it's going to be fine. And uh, just a matter of how quick do they wear out. That's a good, big question. Well, it's been a good start to the season. Have fun tonight. Yeah, I will. Thanks. Good to see you. Uh, see who else we can find. There's the Monster Energy girls. How are y'all? Good. How are you? I'm great. Just passing by. Austin Sendrick is in town. Hey, Austin, you got a second? Where were you headed? I was headed to the Portal John. I figured that's where you were. Thanks for stopping to say hello. Uh, I remember you on the rain tires in Austin drove a straightaway away. Is this going to be the same as road racing in the rain? Uh, well, I was actually on slick tires when I did that. It was it went downhill when I put the reins on. So not saying anything. I'm just saying that uh, no one knows what's going to happen, put it that way. Well, I love what we're doing tonight, and I know all the fans are going to get to see something special with what's going on. I hope they're going to see just a really classic, dry, Richmond, under the light, short track race. That's what I want. Well, continue your journey. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. We're going to go trackside here in a bit and get the party started. It's so much fun, so much energy down here. We just talked to Joey Logano. Joey, I'm throwing it trackside, and we're getting ready to go to the ceremonies and have some fun. Okay, you do it. Good okay. job. Okay. Trackside, it's all yours. Here it is then, pre-race ceremonies. Please rise as you are able and remove your hats and veterans render a hand salute as Goochland High School Marine Corps Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer tonight's invocation, please welcome wife of NASCAR Hall of Famer Bobby Labonte, Kristen Labonte. Father. Thank you for bringing us together here at Richmond Raceway on this amazing Easter Sunday. Help us live every day in your grace and your glory and let you guide our journeys here at the track and beyond. May we all believe in the happiness and the hope of Christ. Today, Lord, we pray for a good day for the drivers and the teams, the officials and the glorious fans let the truth of your word show us the way, and let your joy fill all our hearts. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome four-time Grammy award-winning artist Michael Tate. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed 
at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave all sets get going here at nascar to get out of the start of the toyota owners 400 the skies clearing they're hoping to start the race soon just delayed a bit but we're live here denny hamlin will join us in a moment Okay, so they are going to delay the start, which was an upset. We thought they might uh, have that option from the stewards, and that was the case. A slight delay to the start proceedings here uh, for the NASCAR Richmond 400, the Toyota Owners 400 here as well, the first two races we'll have here at this circuit. So a little bit of a delay. Nothing too uh, unexpected, sadly, but uh, fingers crossed we're going to get back into the green flag running soon and it will all be up and running as well. So the national anthem has been sung. For some reason, the TV pictures that I'm watching on the international feed are like 40 seconds behind. So uh, I'm going to run in and fix that when we go back from commercial break and they have an interview uh, and it's going to be running through the rain as well. So it's not going to be that great of a news uh, situation as well for some reason. But fingers crossed, it's going to be a good one. So a slight delay here. If you're watching and listening in on USRN and JB Motorsports, uh, because of the track conditions, a small delay to the schedule shouldn't be too long. Amber has said, uh, Joshua, happy Easter. Happy Easter to you, Amber. And uh, he has risen in time for the NASCAR as well. We are all ready. Was it Ray's Helen Praise Dale? <laughs> Dale Earnhardt would have loved these conditions, wouldn't he, as well, uh, in these as uh, we get going. Megan's now texting me. I can't talk to you, Megan, when, when you're there uh, to get ready for it. Uh, so we're going uh, for all the action. I just told her, she says, uh, hurry up, get in the thing. But I can't move from where we are because I'm broadcasting as uh, so we get set for it. So we've got the grid. Let's take a quick look, though, at how they line up in terms of the points paying positions. This is our battle screen that we have up here in the commentary box as well. You might notice Martin Trix Jr. Uh, leading the championship on 254, uh, 250 points. He is five points clear to Kyle Larson is on 245 who is matched with Ty Gibbs. It's a very interesting run around. And I'm looking down out of the commentary box at the moment on our TV picture screens, looking down at the control tower. The flag marshals have just climbed up the gantry and there is a vi it's visibly wet out there. The pit boxes are soaked and there's no dry line at all on the track. So they'll use the wet weather tyres, but... They want to wait as long as possible to make sure that everything is okay and everything is as safe as possible as well before we head back to the green flag conditions. That's going to be the important factor here. Uh, Josh, do you have a commentator from the track? I'm guessing only sessions of British tracks. That is the case, yeah. Uh, I'll be at Donington Park in a few weeks uh, for the season launch party of British Touring Cars. And uh, Josh T's going to be trackside. And then I plan to go to a couple of races this year as well in the commentary box. I think Knock Hill was talked about as well from British Touring Cars. But uh, there's all sorts of action that we're waiting to see and waiting to get going as well here from the uh, season. And we were even looking at the Dutch Grand Prix, but that's getting harder and harder. MotoGP seems to be an option. NASCAR was on too. But uh, it's time to head back over and join the World Feed as we get ready to go for this wonderful racing event. And Richmond is where racing lovers flock, in the heart of the roaring engines and the pulsating vibrations of the crowd. Well, Drivers and fans alike unite in an intimate dance around the track. 
rejoicing in their shared love of motorsports. The sweetness of Strawberry Hill draws enthusiasts like bees to honey. Sure, sometimes you get stung. But it's a lure who's worth the gamble. He wins the Richmond Raceway. Oh, yeah, God. Hell, yeah. So sit tight, grab someone you love, and hold on. The love is in the air. I love this racetrack. Green flag, we're underway. Because Richmond is for racing lovers. Denny Hamlin loves this place. Four wins here as a kid. We go to races here, and he's joining us now live in the Cup Garage. There's some moisture on the track, and they're drying it out. Remember when I said they were going to go up to the booth to call the race? They decided to hang around when, back. They, when they knew Denny had somewhat dry. That'd be probably the ideal condition. So, did your windshield wipe? Did your windshield wiper actually work good enough to oh, wipe I'll, the window? I couldn't tell you. I never. We've synced back up. I never turned mine on either. So <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know uh, why they're why they're worried about the windshield wiper, but. Uh, what do you think the biggest thing that, that will happen if they drop the green flag right now? Do you think you're going to run in the groove, out of the groove? What's your plan? I, you know, I see, you know, these stripes on the track. You certainly don't want to be anywhere near paint. Right. So you're going to want to run like like a slot car in one lane. Yeah. Not want to cross over multiple lanes. You certainly aren't going to want to be near the yellow line on the bottom. I think you probably have 70% of the field that knows they have no shot of winning in the dry, yes. like fire these things up. Let's go right opportunity. now. Opportunity. Right. It's yeah. a huge opportunity for them. And then you have others where it's like, okay, let's just not tear my stuff up <laughs> here in the wet. That way yeah. when it gets to finally dry, we can actually see what we really Where do got. you ride in that? I, I think I'm in the 30 percentile. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, apparently we just got it up. You saw the covers. You have, you have to go to your car. Right? Hey, I good luck out there, buddy. Thank, thank you for stopping by. We appreciate it. Giddy that. up. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Welcome, yeah. welcome to watch. the 70 percent category. <laughs> <laughs> have, a, have a good race today, Daddy. Always good seeing you, especially here in Richmond. All right, we'll continue live updating the race as we continue for the Toyota Owners 400. We are going to race, and it's real soon, sooner than we thought. It is indeed sooner than we thought. That's exactly what we like to hear as well. The covers are coming off the cars and we're building up to the start here for the NASCAR Cup Series. And we've synced back up with TV pictures as well. So uh, everything now up and running. And we have two separate screens up here in the commentary box as well now. For the first time this season, I wish I could, I wish I could show you the commentary box. I think it's on my Twitter. Uh, but we've got... Um, we fixed our monitors, finally. So we finally, 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 uh, this year, have our main timing monitor back. And it hasn't been a problem for most of the series. It hasn't been a problem for Formula 1. It's been a massive, massive, massive problem for things like MotoGP, Formula E, and all that, where the timing screens are always on our right. Now we've got it back. And for the first time this year, I can see NASCAR in all its glory. All 36 drivers are there on the screen. I can see them. They all look fantastic. And uh, Kyle Larson on pole position as well from Chase Elliott, then Ross Chastain. 400 laps. That's the distance. That's the duration as well. A few safety trucks going around there. The pace car is going to go around. And fingers crossed, this will be a smooth race and a big operation to get going as well. As uh, Speaking of it, Walking into the commentary box as we are actually going to go green uh, pretty much on time, which is a surprise to all of us. And uh, Megan Birch now joins me for stage one here as well. First time Megan's actually... Oh, you're putting your headset straight on. Okay. Uh, first time you've actually seen our new commentary layout. What do you make of it? I think it's very good. It's also the first time I've actually been ready for the day today. Yes. Uh, Easter Sunday for you has consisted of bedclothes. Yeah. Although in fact, I don't actually get ready at all on some days well, can if I, preferable. Can I just make one thing to you, Megan? Considering that the current time is 11 minutes past 12 on a Monday morning, you yeah. weren't dressed at all on Sunday. Yeah, true. True, 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 true. Just make sure your mic's on. True. Back here in the race Let's cross studio, back to Charlotte. Chris Myers uh, let Denny Hamlin know that they're calling drivers to those race cars. You saw the covers coming off the race cars. We are starting with wet weather tires because there still is a little precipitation out there in Richmond. Shannon, Larry, and Jamie. Denny talked about some of the challenges that, the, that you guys will face, the drivers will face when they get out there, right? Not being on the paint, watching out for where the rubber is. Walk me through what you think we're going to see when this goes green. Well, your number one goal for all of them is survive until it dries out because we know that it is going to dry out in the next 30 minutes or so. 
It'll be interesting. He mentioned the paint of, of the hash marks, the stripes in the middle of the track. You want to stay off those. You know you're going to try to stay off the rubber. But when this will get really interesting, Shannon, is when it starts to dry out, the drier line will be quicker. But how long can you run in the dry line before the, the wet weather tire wears completely out? So they'll be this kind of cat and mouse game of do I want to move up and, and run in like the wet area where the tires will last a little longer? Or do I go down a little bit lower where it's starting to dry out and I can run a quicker lap time? So those drivers are going to have to balance that. We have just under two minutes before we do fire engines out there at Richmond. As a crew chief, what are some of your priorities before this race starts? Well, my concern, though, is exactly what he said, because the wet weather tire is a softer, grippier tire. It's going to wear quicker and because it's a treaded tire you don't have as much rubber on the track so that enhances the wear so that's a big concern right there one thing that NASCAR did allow these teams to do because you do want to make adjustments based on the wet weather tire is they let them make adjustments and if and when we do go back to the dry slicks they will let them undo those adjustments this is something we've talked about North Wilkesboro North mm -hmm. Wilkesboro North Wilkesboro this I'm positive in saying this will be the first time we have run the wet weather tires in a cup series race at a points event when you've got stages and stage points and all these other things that are so valuable to these drivers and these teams. I feel like everyone's been really calm when we talk to the drivers we've asked them about this and they don't seem to have a lot of issues with jumping in. We did well, hear the word unknown so do you believe them? Yeah and a lot of the I mean a lot of the guys ran them last year at North Wilkesboro. Mm -hmm. They also have done a lot of testing that we don't talk about a lot in here. So there's a lot of experience. And that the tire has more grip than any everyone expected. I, I think most guys have experienced the slicks when it starts to rain and it's undrivable. But these actually have pretty good grip. I think it's going to be a lot of fun for all these Well, surprisingly, um, Megan's laptop's just frozen because somebody just joined something and uh, caused the systems to go wrong. So, I think Kevin go. Harvick, Joe Logano hit the nail on the head. My concern would be making sure my driver has good vision because, once again, no wipers on these right. cars. The spray could be an issue. Could be good for Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott, who are starting right up Amen. front. Amen. <laughs> because right. you don't have those cars in front of you. We're getting closer. We're going to go down right now trackside for command to start engines. First night race of the season. And we got a little wet weather, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the command. Richmond Raceway, this is the moment you have all been waiting for. Are you ready to get this NASCAR Cup Series Toyota Owners 400 started? Here to give the command to fire engines. Please welcome tonight's Toyota Owners 400 Community Heroes representing Special Olympics Virginia. The proud owner of a 2022 Toyota RAV4, Izzy Nelson, and her uncle, Special Olympics athlete Brian Beck. Drivers, start, go! <laughs> yeah, we got 400 laps around this three-quarter mile track after the break. Mike Joy, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer on the call. Happy Easter, everyone. Well, after last week's boring uh, call, uh, that was certainly a bit more eventful, Megan, mm. as we take a look to the full grid. And fingers crossed we're actually going to have an entertaining race today. Uh, what are you reckoning? It's wet track. I've very the really have it. Very for Maybe. once both... England and America match yeah. in what their weather is like today. Very rare do we have a wet race in NASCAR in where it determines that we have to use these tyres. So it's going to be very interesting. Could you shuffle that way a little bit? Thank you. We'll only be here 45 minutes. Yeah, well. Oh, 30 minutes. Yes, we have decided. Stage one, effectively, isn't it, really? As long as until yeah. Matthew uh, clears out. I'm going to turn that down because it's actually quite warm in this coverage box, isn't it? Oh, I see you've decided to get the... Peppery out of the way, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that caused me harm. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I have stomach issues. It's not the product itself that caused me harm. There's nothing wrong with the actual product. It's just how it affects me. I love Dr. Pepper, but this Professor Pepper, tastes like a Harry Bow sweet. So I thought, it does. So we'll just get rid of it during the race. It's like uh, drinking Harry race. Yeah. So, um, Megan, you've moaned for years to me about not being able to see the timing screen. I finally can. Can you actually see that now? Yes. And we even have backup TV pictures if we miss something that's about three seconds behind. It's finally visual. Yeah, and down here... Though I'm scared to actually move the desk. Yeah, I know. I need, I'm going to go to B&Q and get something because it cuts off our monitor, but I quite like that. Um, this monitor here, it's an outside normal type driver tracker. Uh, this is the pit stops, so that tells us what's in the pits. 
and this will tell us some information as well appear on the screens and it's basically what you get at home just a little bit different as well now bigger. try yeah bigger now we're going to hopefully try and get the uh graphics working for you in terms of the raw feed which will tell us exactly where we need to be and for everything else but as always uh you can imagine one thing it's being a pain trying to get it sorted something has to be yeah, well, these TV pictures are, are, are you know, like, <laughs> like that, as you can see. The drivers then just coming around. This is Kyle Larson yesterday, where he, taking the flag and then driving the opposite way around the circuit, which he's tend to do. And he's won here twice before. Starts on pole position for this I one. Do. But four Chevys in the top four. Toyota starting fifth for Bubba Wallace. You were in the comments box for the last time. Was a back with Fox. Let's cross back over as we get ready for the start. Lethal to green at Richmond. Respect is earned at this raceway. Crash every time. Man. And nothing is given. It's Cup Series Racing right here on Fox. Welcome back to the Toyota Owners 400 from Richmond on Fox. There's about a 40 minute, minute hole in the clouds here, so taking advantage of a little bit of sunshine, what's left of it, and a track that is almost dry and ready to go. Let's dial up our pole sitter. All right. Hey, Kyle Larson, it's Boyer and the Boys up in the booth. You got us? Yeah, I got you. Well, man, they call these tires wet weather. This is wet weather conditions. You're on the pole. You're going to be the first one to the corner. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I uh, I don't really know. You know I'm trying <laughs> to have enough confidence where I don't get swarmed into one, but then I'm also trying to manage the confidence and not go in there and blast it in and, and crash. Um, so I don't really know what to expect. I don't think any of us do, but everybody will be judging off of my entry, I feel like. So um, we'll see. Hopefully, Hopefully I just can do it right i'm just gonna try and go off a of field so we'll see here is this exciting for you i mean we watch you race sprint cars late models everything indy cars coming in may is this exciting yeah this is exciting i honestly i i hope it stays wet for a while um as long as my car's good um just because it's it would be similar to like bristol you know where we're all trying to like learn at the same time um that's that's fun um, as a driver to see who can adapt the quickest. And you know, I feel like our team does a good job of that. So we'll see here. It seems as the you know, sky is getting clearer, so I don't know how long it'll stay wet. But either way, it's going to be fun here for a little while. Well, nobody finds a grip better than you, man. Good luck out there. Thank you. It's quite a nice view. It's a nice sky view. Especially that one. Sun is breaking through the clouds, but this is a night race here at Richmond as well. So we know that it's coming <laughs> in. <laughs> Megan, Megan, international feed, international feed. <laughs> so, Carl Larson and Chase Elliott, they <laughs> take you through row one. Row two, Ross Chastain and Alex Bowman. Then it's uh, Bubba Wallace alongside Todd Gilliland. Martin Trex Jr. alongside Ty Gibbs. Austin Sindrick and Joey Logano has the top ten. Denny Hamlin alongside Ryan Blaney, Will Byron and Chris Buescher. Kyle Busch down in 15th place. Ryan Priest has 16th. Then it's Noah Gregson, John Hunter Nemechek, Tyler Reddick, Daniel Suarez, Corey LeJour, Austin Dillon, Brad Keselowski, Ricky Sainz Jr. 24th, Carson Hossevar 25th, Harrison Burton is 26th, and then we get Eric Jones in 27th, Zane Smith 28th, Christopher Bell 29th, Josh Berry in 30th place, 31st for Michael McDowell, 32nd Chase Briscoe, 33rd for Ty Dillon, 34th Daniel Henrik, 35th for Kaz Grala, and 36th for Justin Haley. Pit road and down to Jamie Little, Megan. Quickly, can I just say, why does Bubba Wallace's, or shall I say Boba Fett's car, <laughs> look like it's about to ask me whether I want fries with that? Is it the Big McDonald's one yes. this week? Yeah, it's back to the big M. Jamie Kevin Little. mentioned he's a two-time winner here. And by the way, they had a good qualifying effort. <laughs> he will roll off. Tim, Joey Logano looking for a good night tonight, Regan. Well, Jamie, if there's such a thing as home field advantage in NASCAR, that is exactly what Stop Denny Hamlin, who's stretch. from nearby Chesterfield, Virginia, has at Richmond. Four wins, 18 top fives, and over 2,200 laps led at this racetrack. Success is expected when the 11 car comes to Richmond. That is no different tonight. No matter what the conditions are, crew chief Chris Gabehart told me practice went well yesterday. And if it does get into a situation where strategies come into play, that is where this team excels. Look for Denny, who starts 11th, to be very good tonight. 
pretty it good. Is, just it, it, it is, and it looks like the clouds are going to come through, Megan. And That's just got a million times darker. That looks like the view you would get in the behind the seat. Well, the background view you'd get in like a 1700s painting with loads of like farms around it. Well, I'd just like to remind you, Megs, it is actually a night race that we're going to have here. So uh, that's the situation we have to contend with. Larry Mack is dressed for it. Let's get the strategy report from him. Go inside the Ooh, cockpit of the car. Let's go to our Toyota Camry virtual car and let's show you exactly what's happening. First, we're going to go inside the cockpit of the car. You'll see the pedals there, the throttle pedal. The driver does the best job he can to keep that throttle down on the straightaway, but he has to roll completely out in the corner, sometimes jumping off the throttle. Butterflies closed. The fuel injectors are feeding no fuel to the intake when the butterflies are closed. But even though there's no fuel being fed, there's still residual fuel in that manifold. It starts heat hunting heat and oxygen. That in turn is what calls those flames out the exhaust pipe, guys. Okay, we're all getting set down, and Megan, the rain's returned. You can see uh, the wet tires that we're starting on here, the sort of intermediates. It's kicking out some dust and some spray around the camera, as you can see. So, yes. this is how long until the caution starts? And more and more cautions. This is very much treacherous conditions. 20 minutes. You're going for the. You're going to be that optimistic. I'm saying turn two. Someone will be around. I want to be optimistic. North Willsboro was the last time we ran these in the all-star race, the wet compound tyre, and it provided the excitement as well. So fingers are crossed and everything is on as well. You're listening to NASCAR, the Toyota Owners 400 from Richmond Raceway. It is live on Jamie Motorsports YouTube and Twitch and a special Easter welcome to USRN listeners here tonight as uh, we'll be joined by Matthew Owens later on. Now, it's 400 laps, 300 miles. Stage one is 70 laps. Stage you told me 60. I got it wrong. Stage two at 160 laps. I have to recalculate this. <laughs> the final stage at 170 laps. Pit road within is 40 miles an hour. And fuel window... 28 minutes. Fuel window is between 125 to 135 lap times. And there, Megan, is the wet tyres. Grooved with slight wets. It just means that you have enough to go through if you need it. It's not designed for monsoon conditions. And, of course, we don't race on ovals if it's in full wet. So yeah. what do you think? Is it going to go well? Or are we going to have to go yellow, yellow, yellow again? And then just go round and round? I think it will go a bit of the yellow, yellow. And then we'll be like, OK, no. For what? When the when the dry start coming back through, two yeah. pace cars I've just noticed are now leading the field uh, down the other circuit. The so, moment yeah. of glory. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Two pace cars lead the field. It's a short track here, of course, at Richmond, so it's split. Twenty-four into two. seconds. Yeah, we rounded up <laughs> twenty-three point six because that's just evil. Yeah. <laughs> getting ready and getting set to go. Everyone watching on as Justin Haley is the last one in position. Kyle Larson on pole position. There's Bubba Wallace in the McDonald's liveried car as well, getting all set to go. So, oh, I don't know if that's wind or actual <laughs> rain, but that, something's blowing off at the top, isn't it? That's, that was Somebody's horrific. hitting over, really. <laughs> yeah. That was horrific. Let's just see it again, look. There's the Goodyear Eagle tyres. Now, good. last time you were in the coverage box, Megan, uh, Goodyear had severe problems with punctures, and now we're going to a wet tyre. No one knows what's going to happen. Hi. They've called the start off. They've called the start uh, off. Why? Multiple laps under yellow is the command from race control. We should have gone green next time around. That's why we focused in. So it's this another lap under here, yellow. Right? Could be. Well, we should have started 11 minutes ago, but NASCAR delayed the start a little bit. I wasn't even meant to be here. No, you weren't. You're very much uh, filling in this weekend as well. The original commentary lineup for this weekend was supposed to be me, Josh T, and Jess Ball. I think you were even surprised when I said this morning. Yeah. Yes, you're going to, yeah. Because you were ill as well. Yeah. So that's why, you. that's why this weekend we've teamed up with USRN. And thankfully, Matthew messaged me saying, Are you guys covering this? I said, Yeah, that's the plan. I said, oh, good. Could you just put it on USRN while, because I've got family dinner for Easter? I was like, Sure, no worries. Because it's 12, it's currently 12.26 a.m. on the Monday here. So we're fine covering this one. Well, I am. It's my most hated day of the year today. It's April Fool's Day. Yes. And NASCAR's delivery is an April Fool's Day. That's the point, yeah. actually. Today is April Fool's Day. Yeah, I don't like that day. Technically, however, me and you might miss it because we'll be asleep. Good. So it's only until the first. So actually. It's only until 12 p.m. Oh, the, hey, we could get Dad back when we go in. Why? Well, think about it. We've been commenting at NASCAR race. We could say anything happened. 
Montoya hit the jet truck again. <laughs> Throw back to 2012. You'll never believe what happened. <laughs> All the drivers stopped and they just got out and started just <laughs> having fight. It wouldn't be that unusual. That's believable with NASCAR as yeah. well, isn't it? That's very believable. I mean, we've had people throw barriers at each other's cars. Oh, you saw that today. Yes. <laughs> I was looking at your phone. I was like, what? <laughs> Uh, we've got a situation, NASCAR is just trying the pit lane as uh, they've come off pit right now, so they want to try and get that done as quickly as possible. So they're going to go do a lap to the pit lane, test the 40 mile per hour with, uh, speed limit as well. We could tell him that it rained so much that they decided that they were just going to paddle yeah. around the track. Yeah, we got the, we got the, we got the uh, jet skis out going around. Yeah. That's Russian for jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on then. Uh, look, now they've got the portable fans out, Megan, drying the pit boxes as well. Uh, it's funny how they think that will work at such a low distance. Have well, we got a leaf blower in here? We are in the garage. That's we don't the actually own is. a leaf blower. No, I was just thinking that. I was just looking over to the side. Do you, you know what we own? A broom. <laughs> yeah, broom yeah. <laughs> We've been standing in this garbage box now since 2019. That's six seasons, five years. And all this time, I've never actually... We used to have... Well, we want a green screen up there, don't we? Just to cover that in. Yeah. But all the mess is still here, so we haven't been able to get that. So we oh can look, actually see right down to the Coupe. Yeah, we can actually see directly through, but I've never actually known if there's a leaf blower in here. No, we've never owned a leaf blower, we, but we own several brooms. Five years since we said, yeah, let's do out the whole garage. Half of it's been done. And, and I can see how that's progressed. Yeah, well, can I just point out? Look at the half that we actually work in. It's a massive mess now because we need to tidy it up. Car's going we down pit lane. We can't tidy up this bit without tidying up that bit because if we tidy up this bit, then that falls. Yes, I know. We're pretty much done. It's a catch the, 22. It's a catch 22. Well, the, the eventual plan is to get rid of all that junk, put, the, put that table up there, have the green screen back there, and have a separate studio to a coverage box section so that we can host over there and then walk over here to the coverage box. That would work, wouldn't it? Mm. Two different setups. Sorry, we're rambling because they're just coming through the pit lane testing the speed and crucially Megan as well, drying that inside line through turn one and two because that's going to be wet offline like down here at the bottom. Do you know technically this is only a third of the garage? Yeah. It's bigger than you think this place. Yeah. It goes right back there. Exactly. We could have such a big place here if we'd only got a storage locker. Yeah, and we are literally right in the side. I mean, we can fit three people side by side in here. But yeah, that's about it, really. Maybe two now, because this... this we lot need of, to clean. Yeah, a lot of TLC is needed in this comedy box at the moment. We've been busy. It's been a busy six months. He's barely slept. Yeah, he has been busy. <laughs> Daniel Suarez, who won the All-Star Heat Race last year in 2023 is going to be watching on. That was the last time at North Wilsborough where we were at uh, the last time we ran these wet tyre events. The 99, who of course won the and Better Health 400 at Atlanta a couple of months back. He is going to be really charging up the field and I'm trying to see. He starts 20th on the grid. Hey, I can actually read this now. So yeah, he starts 20th on the running order. Last on our timing page as we are getting ready. So multiple run-throughs, that's what we're experiencing at the moment. The cars are on the track, but we are waiting for the green flag to come out for the start of the Toyota Owners 400 at Richmond Raceway. 300 miles, 400 laps, and lap speed at 41.272 is the last time around. Last lap time, again at this safety car speed was 65 seconds, so 1 minute 5. Huh. So under green, we should be quite good. But interestingly enough, uh, they haven't started taking laps off yet. So like if uh, we've got the one to go, oh. one to go. We are going to start this race. Yeah, well, we're going to start this one now. Guess what I am? Nuts. Mm, yes, but I was doing something different. <laughs> Here we go. Look, yeah. what am I imitating? Safety car. The, the car's going left and right. Yeah. Yes. Right, here we go then. They're coming out of turn two and three, and we're getting ready. Green flag is getting ready to uh, go up, and the Toyota Owners 400 will be underway. 60, becomes 70 laps now in stage one. We're going to have to run like that as well. Stand by for blast off here for this one. As we see Bubba coming through on the inside line. Here they come then. 
Happy Easter to everybody watching. It's time for a NASCAR treat. We're ready. We're steady. Here in Richmond, it's green flag and race on. It's a good start from Carl Larson. It goes down low. Coming up high as well, Bubba Wallace trying to retake on the inside line into second position. Chase Elliott on the high line trying to come through. Todd Gilliland's going up in the 38 car right around the outside. Alex Bowman dead in the centre as well in the number 44. A little bit of a spray kicked up. Larson's the first to meet the conditions and not liking it. Chase Elliott's going to try and go right round the outside Joey Logano in a battle midfield as well over 10th position end of lap four one abreast. and Elliott's taking the lead of the race it's four abreast yeah down at the midfield Wallace Truex Jr Logano Blaney about three rows back as well just trying to keep it in so keeping it together and I think as well, Megan, that's a that's a good clean start. Now Lagana's under trouble because there's Truex going down low. There's we see Gilliland in the 38, Bowman in the 48, Bowman down low, coming across the control line. But the outside high line seems to be the better grip compared to the inside. That's where Elliot got the lead. I mean, I suppose the inside has all the water having just gone down to it, so it's the least dry out of everything. It is the oh, and up into the wall there as well comes the 47 of Ricky Close. Steinhaus and still Gilliland for third and Bowman for fourth battling it out. We're seeing as well coming through Bubba Wallace moving up into sixth now, fifth position as he gets through on the inside on Joey Logano. Logano's actually dropped back a little bit. Gilliland has cut the low line and retains third position to Bowman, but it's Chase Elliott who has the lead at the moment by two tenths of a second to Kyle Larson. Gilliland is third, Bowman, Chastain, Wallace. Gibbs, Trex Jr, Logano Blaney has the top 10 at the moment as we go on to the fifth lap and so far Megan all is well which is what we like to see no one having problems out there as they ride in now it seems pretty equal between low line and high line oh and the 54 dropping it, back it does seem pretty equal I like Elliot's cooler car mm, the light blue oh you see the sparks of the double exhaust yeah. the time, that was coming through as well for Trex Jr uh, to come through uh, across the line we go once more at Richmond. They're sliding the rear of the cars. It's like a classic NASCAR uh, race this as well. They won't wear tyres, but they are literally drifting out the back. It's quite fun. I'm sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> that heat is on you. Do you want it to move? Look at no, that. Fine. Look at Larson trying to go around the outside line to three and four. Takes the high line. Might make it. He's got the better traction in lane two, and he's gone right around the outside. So that, that confirms it. That low line Jeez. has not got the grip that the higher line does. It does not. I mean... I'm not surprised that it doesn't have as much grip, but still, it's interesting to note, and it certainly makes overtaking a more difficult process. Now look at uh, down low, Ryan Blaney and Chris Busher in a battle, as we see Bowman up the inside, taking third position away from Gilliland, so that was unfortunate. So that's a low line coming back up. Gilliland's tyres not working on the high line. It's a mixture right now. I think it's pot, look, I think turn one and two, it's inside line. Three and four, it's outside line that's got a better grip. Mm. So it's sort of shifting as you go around. As thing is, though, the track's only going to dry out by the cars because the sun's set, and it's a night race, so the lights are on the track, but it's, the track temperature drops. That could cause... Uh, that could cause accidents. Yeah. Due oh. to there being no sun. And we were just seeing... Uh, as well, Lagana getting chopped up by Wallace Chastain, and he's got tricks just behind him. This is the battle. Bowman sort of back him up with the Gilliland in there too, so it's becoming four wide further back in the battle to complete the top ten. And Bubba's going down low. Gilliland's coming up high. Bubba's going to try and take uh, fourth position Not here. Not going to make it. No, he's too far back. No traction. No, he, he's really struggling, isn't he? Now he's falling back into the uh, to Trix Jr. He's running in seventh. So MTJ is running into a little bit of trouble, Martin Trix Jr. with Logano now shot back a little bit, actually. Oh, Chastain. Yeah, Chast that, that's Chastain who's dropped back a bit. Oh, and that's second place for Bowman. Bowman's going to try and take Elliot. And Elliot's got the high line, but into one and two. The low line's going to work out better for Bowman. Hit that traction. Go on. Full throttle down. He's got him. No traction through one and two on the high line now. Low line works better. Elliot's not having a good day when it comes to that low line. And sparks for Elliot there. Mm. Elliot's having that line side by side. Bowman takes second. Elliot immediately cutting back down low. Mm. That was quite something. I want to take the look again. So he's on the high line through three. He's going to try and make it back. Yeah, he's going to take that low line. So he's cut sides, and that's forced Bowman to go into the middle lane. Three lanes here, not Richmond. Out. Low line, middle, and high lane. And that middle lane is where Bowman wanted to be, and he sort of perfectly kept himself 
I don't want to say strategize, but he's kept himself sort of in the defensive position where he needs to be dead center. Okay, um, am I the only one noticing that uh, Bubba Wallace's car keeps getting repeated sparks? Yeah. I mean, it, and it's normal for the occasional spark, though. It's all the time. It's not even the exhaust that they're throwing through, is it? 386 laps to go. It's that 14 of the race here. It's a clean start at Richmond for the Toyota Owners 400. Blaney's up into eighth position. Logano's gone down to ninth place. We're uninterrupted here at JB Motorsports through green flag running as uh, Fox go to an ad break. <laughs> we can tell when they go to ad break now because we can see it on our monitors. Woohoo! They're going down further back as well. Chase Elliott under a bit of pressure. Where is he in that running order? Car eight, Elliott. Uh, oh, car eight, so it's Kyle Bush, but where's Elliott? Down in P3 at the moment, so he's dropped back a bit. But uh, Kyle Bush, I want to say running in 28th place. He has dropped back massively from the start of this race. He'll have to improve. But Kyle Larson retaking the lead away from Elliott, who got it on lap one. He's now put out a 7-10th, now 6-10th advantage to Bowman. And Elliott's right behind there too. I just looked at the thing and it said 6.20 and then I looked away for one second, she one second, and then all of a sudden it was 6.40. I was like, how long was I looking this way? What were, you, what, what were you looking at? What, what number? I think I actually blinked. <laughs> what number were you looking at on the timing screen? The there. timer. Oh, the actual timing screen, yeah. It literally just jumped. It could be oh, catching itself back up. That's the question. Am I going insane? <laughs> Possibly, but that's a different matter. <laughs> that's the thought you need to go. True. So Larson leads and Logano's past Blaney, so they're but making a battle is, further is back. Is this the call? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's a true question. <laughs> Suarez up into 11th position. Suarez started 20th. He's made up nine places already. The winner of uh, Heat 1 of the All-Star Race uh, last year at North Wilkesboro. Uh, keeping it together. This is turning into another one. Hello to Redbox Sports, who says, hey all. Hey, welcome to you on USRN2 as well, listening in. And welcome to everyone listening on JP Motorsports YouTube and Twitch. Oh, Redbox actually said, hey there, it's Redbox from USRN commentary. was listening over there, but figured I'd come here so I could chat with you. Hi. Sorry, Hi. you were in one place, now you're in two. Hello, Redbox. Nice to see you, my friend, uh, in there as well. Carl asked to push short track equals recipe for success. Expect us to do big things tonight, people. We will indeed. You're back with us on TV Pictures. If you're watching along in America on Fox Sports as well, if you're watching along with his international pictures on our radio commentary, you haven't missed a thing, but looking at the side-by-side -side pictures, Megan, it's looking absolutely fantastic right now as they flow across down to turn one. Yeah. Larson leads by three tenths, and here comes Bubba Wallace taking that middle line through three and four, getting better traction, but sliding out of it, Elliot's coming back up to him. Now, apparently, since it makes people a better driver, does Larson have an appendix? <laughs> I don't actually know. <laughs> you want to hit the Google? Where's your phone? Where's now your I want to know if Michael Schumacher had an appendix. I know Michael broke his leg, I don't know for sure. I don't actually know if Mike, if Mike had an appendix. I need to look up and make a note to see who has appendixes and who does not. I don't have that in so, my uh, stat sheet up here in the commentary box, I'm afraid. That should be a new stat. Yeah. Appendix, yes or no? <laughs> Well, the last five winners at this circuit, Kyle Larson did take his second victory here. He's won here twice before. So I'm getting no appendix. No, yeah. <laughs> Larson won here on the 2nd of April 2023. And it was by 1.5 seconds. So he won here a year ago. Nearly to the day. Pit stop time will be coming up shortly for tyres if they want to change from wet to dry. Is it bad this isn't even the weirdest thing I've looked up? No, it's far from it. But Bubba Wallace into third position. Truex now fourth. Elliott's dropped down into fifth position. So he's still got a few to battle with, as we see on the inside as well. Uh, Hunter Nemechek coming into a battle. Ricky Steinhaus Ooh. coming in there too. Steinhaus taking the low line. And that's going to try and get ahead of the 10 from the back of Noah Gregson. Steinhaus Jr. Gregson. Justin Haley, what? Justin Haley's up into 19th place. He started way, way, way down the field in the 30s. How on earth did he manage that? What an absolutely awesome start from the youngster. I cannot find whether he has an appendix. I'm guessing yes. Safe bet, yes. But he's... Larson's... He's, as I said uh, in the pre-show, we if you were joining us back then as well, for Kyle Larson, uh, 18 starts here, two pole positions, took his second one 
uh, last night. I actually need to change that in our mind commentary. He's won here twice before. He's had uh, four top fives, eight top tens, and eight DNF ones here. Huh. Yeah, it's not that bad. But Bubba Wallace, Megan, what he started fifth, currently running in four, in uh, second place now because he's passed Bowman. So Larson's right up there. He's done it again. Yeah. Yeah, time has been jumping around. No. What? This car has sparked oh, again. Yeah. Everyone else is, isn't doing that as much. Does he have like a loose piece of flooring that we should know about? That's what I was thinking. How was that ride height on the, on the on the car it's, there? It's always when he's going round the yeah. corner, like at the most highest point. Oh, I was about to show you, but it missed it. Last's last lap time was a twenty-four second exactly. Ooh. Yeah. There it is. Look on that on this time of screen. Twenty-four seconds exactly. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> So it was closing in once more as they go on the attack. Larson, Wallace, Bowman, Elliot, Gilliland, Chastain, Trex, Logano, Busher, Priest, the top 10. As we continue to attack, we've run 27 of the 17 stage one. We've run it green flag for 11 minutes and 42 seconds. Can they stay that way? Ty Dillon, though, is down in 36th and last place, and he's 19 seconds back to Larson, which means he's almost a full lap behind. So soon, They'll start to get the lapped cars coming into equation, which could help Bubba Wallace in these conditions keep up close to the back of Larson. Look how close he's already through one and two. Got that so dark so quickly. Uh, sunset as we see Chastain pass Gilliland for fifth place. But yeah, it's a night race. It's the, fir it's the first night race of the NASCAR season as well. Daytona ran into the night due to a red flag. So did the Ambedda Health 400. But this is the first night race that starts in the night and goes into the day as well. We have a yellow, command yellow, out on the circuit. Oh, who's it now? Don't know who's putting in the wall right. or what's happened. Who's dropping? Can't tell at the moment. Or no one apparently. Is, it, is there a problem with the circuit? We haven't seen it yet on our monitors. The thing is though, the timing towers are the same. So... All we've got is yellow flag out on the circuit. No, and yeah, TV Who pitches. messed up? TV pitches out that behind. Bowman, what's happened here? Bowman's going to get spun round, isn't he? Is it? Well, Jones has dropped back. Bowman on the inside line going down low. Elliot up high. Chastain coming into it as well. Still no sign of the yellow, but we've got it out. There's Here the caution. And... Don't. None of them. Well, that took a long time. The caution's been out for a minute, and it's for lightning. What? I think it is. I think. It, have we got lightning? What's, what's the yellow for? Are we going to go red flag? That's the question. I, there was no Please accident no. on the track. I think it's lightning. Can they just delay it? They well, delay it what? They could, but we've only run 30 laps, so it would have to keep going. NASCAR cuts off generally at 1 a.m. for times like this. So, well, they haven't come into 15 the... 15 minutes. Yeah, 15, uh, 13.42 uh, on our monitors. So what's this one for then? Let's have a look at Bob, what he said on Twitter. We No cars have gone off, and it can't be for rain. The only thing I'm thinking here is the reason that we've gone into pace car is for possible lightning. Either that or someone left on a button and no one seems to have noticed. Yeah, let's have a quick look from Bob Pockross. What's he saying on Twitter? I've got to um, say, it's such beautiful skies. Uh, it's a competition caution. They were changed to slicks on pit road. So uh, that's what's happening. That's a stupid reason. Right, so we only got told about this three minutes ago. That's why we That's why we haven't picked up, up, up They're here. They're so the, good yeah. at communicating. Yeah, that, they, Fox could have put something up on the international field or something or other, but that's why we haven't heard about it. Uh, Bob Pock was four minutes ago. Competition caution, lap 30. And it will be a non-competitive pit stop on lap 30, and they will change to slicks. It won't be live pit stops because pit road is still wet. So they will change to slicks on pit road, and that's kind of going to dry pit road. So that's why the cautions come out. It's for uh, mandatory changeovers. Th they couldn't just put this on without all the dramatics. <laughs> I know. Charles Fan just says, uh, Josh, does your back hurt with bending so much to look at stuff? I don't. It's not so much when I stand up because I can. I'm as chiropractor yeah, now. I can crack my back quite nicely now. Not like that. No, but uh, I'm I just really good at cracking. Before the fluids between bones, so Megan can vouch me. I do my eight warm ups before I'm in here, don't I? He does. So I'm all limbered up and all that. Look. But uh, every now and then, my back does need a bit of adjustment. Yeah, and for some reason, when you adjust it, it makes him really taller. Though mm. so he gets a lot of back, he gets a lot of tension around here. 
Not to mention my neck as well. Yeah, his neck isn't isn't great. And this shoulder. Yeah, that <laughs> shoulder's knackered. It's um basically it's you. I know exactly how to make him scream in pain with that shoulder because it, it's just got such a build up of knots. For those of you listening there. on USRN, it's my right shoulder. That's my writing hand though, when I'm on typing yeah, hand. Everyone's right shoulder or left. Well everyone's dominant shoulder. shoulder like from their hand is always a little bit more stiff because you use it a lot more. People of ambidextrous are just lucky. Mm. So I can only do certain actions with my left hand, which I can't actually do with my right, and I don't know why. As I <laughs> discovered, I am I am quite good at bowling with my left hand. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that a while ago. It took me a while to remember actually when I played bowling a couple of weeks ago. Quite good at aiming at things with my left hand, like Archery. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I once was told, it's like, okay, since you're right-handed, why don't you do like this? Just like, okay, if you want to hit people. Competition caution. Pit lane's being dry. Let's hand it back over to Fox Sports. More driven. My Down to road, Jamie Little. Well, Mike, Denny Hamlin has been singing the praises of his pit crew this season, and for great reason, especially a couple weeks ago when they won on the last short track race at Bristol. So let's meet team number 11. I'm AJ Rosini, I'm the front tire changer, formerly an IndyCar tire changer for two and a half years. Now I'm in the Cup Series with seven wins. Devin Euchre, rear tire changer. I started pitting cars at 18, and now I pit for the best driver in NASCAR. Happy Easter. My name is Dylan Dow. I am the tire carrier. I am a former Cup champion, Xfinity champion, and Daytona 500 champion. Joël Alexandre, Badou Boignon, Jack Mann, former Green Bay Packer running back. My first language was French. Kenneth Purcell, Fueler, 20 years on pit road with over 50 wins and four-time consecutive champion with Jimmy Johnson. They'll do. They'll be just fine. Yeah. How's your French? <laughs> Very you know French? Terrible uh, French, but how about a Green Bay yeah. linebacker? That is awesome. Shows you the, the men that those guys are. A proud bunch, and rightfully so. Chris Gabart, of course, the crew chief up on the box. Running things for Denny Hamlin, and uh, here's a look at his career. 20 wins as crew chief. He's been with Denny since 2017. Won the 2019 Daytona 500. Now pit road is not yet open because NASCAR is elected to bring the jet dryers down pit road to try to uh, dry that area of the track a little more. And while the cars are circulating, we listened in to race leader Kyle Larson. I think it's ready for slick, so for sure. You know, I'm debating how far we go back to what a normal slick car setup would be, so I'm going to make the best educated guess. We'll see how it goes. I think that's a decision. It really is, and and when, when you have to free the car up, it's tough to get back to where you need to be. All right, drying pit road at lap 34 in Richmond. Loud. Very loud. <laughs> I've just learned to stop talking when that comes on, otherwise we're going to be deafened. But yeah, pace cars out and mm. drying the pit road. Are you sleepy? I'm sleepy. No, I'm weirdly energised. I've done this for three nights now, so. I'm sleepy. Do, do you know, I'm surprised. It hasn't been a night race weekend, but I've still done night shift things because Friday it was um, Formula E in Tokyo to Saturday morning. And Saturday night, I thought, you know, it'd be nice and calm, be, 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 be in bed by uh, half 12, get some nice sleep, you know, go out for a drink for three hours there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then it turned to 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> thanks to the clock change as well. We lost an extra hour. So. And thanks to Luke. Yeah, thanks, Luke. No, we accepted it was like a 60-40 thing. <laughs> he thinks it's 60-40. It's not. It's 80-10. <laughs> At like 90 10. Where's the other 10? <laughs> the other 10 is uh, external forces of not taxis. <laughs> it's 80 10 10. Of walking <laughs> down a literally <laughs> abandoned road at this point. Hey, it made for an interesting thing. I felt like I was Del Boy from Only Fools and Horses walking down there. I put it on my Instagram story to the close friend stuff <laughs> as well. That's why I said you and Luke should just dress up as Del Boy. Yeah, and Batman and Robin. <laughs> no, yeah, it's down Del Boy and Rodney dressing up as Batman and Robin and just do that on Halloween. Like, yeah, but we we could do that, me and you. You could be Batwoman or Batgirl, what is it? Batgirl. I'm sorry, I would not look good in that. <laughs> That'd be funny. All right, what about Catwoman? 
No. Really? No. What about Harley Quinn? I'd look good as Natasha Romanoff. Ah, uh, okay. What about Harley Quinn? No? Not even going to take Harley <laughs> Quinn? No. Uh, I'd look good as Natasha Romanoff. David's, or Yelena. David's come as the Penguin. <laughs> More like the Joker. I used to love the Penguin. Quack. I wonder why he liked the Penguin. Can I get that umbrella? I can't get the umbrella. I liked his top hat. <laughs> yes. Although, if anybody... If any, word of caution, so this is us talking nonsense until NASCAR returns. Um, I just saw the 14 taking the high line uh, as well. Uh, it's coming back through. Anyway. You've been listening to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Actually, wait, which one of them did I name Obi-Wan Kenobi? Well, <laughs> which one has the high ground? Where's the stats that you wrote down? You left them in the box. I'll find no, them. No, I, I, I brought them back up to my room. Oh, that's how I'm to Fox. look at NASCAR's oh, most recent Easter Sunday winners. Who's the 14? As they Bell, finish up drying pit road, which should open here in the next no, lap one's down or on pit two. Road, yeah, according to this. 39 complete, 31 Bris to go in Brisk. stage Brisk. one. Cheers, Brisco. So, starting to caution. The well, I think that, that opens up a Some lot of doors for us as we go forward in the future. Great job by NASCAR getting this, this race started. Spray was a perfect amount when we when we started this race. It got our track to a racing condition a lot faster, Absolutely. and I think the next time we do we I have these rain situations, me. we know that we can go in exactly what we did, probably a little wetter. Now we're going to have non-competitive pit stops for this first round of stops. Uh, cars will line up when they come back on track in the order in which they entered pit road, unless they have an I abnormally long stop. But pit road is going to be key to this race, down. as it oh. turned out to be oh, key Obi-Wan. last Sunday. At Circuit of the Americas. First, you have to get on pit road. That's not easy here. No, nope. I don't know yet. I'll text you when I find well, out this is who's Obi Wan. But you wrote it down. I wrote it down in a thing upstairs. Red flag. Red flag has come out and they've stopped the race. Would you like to see what time it is? 20 22. minutes in. Yeah. Clock has stopped and the red flag has come out. The Toyota Owners 400 has been stopped. And Why? NASCAR determines that it's now critical to stop the race. Well, into the rain delay coverage we go. <laughs> Why a red flag? Rain building north of the track, still moving east so far, so good, but they've red flagged the race. NASCAR tells teams they've dried pit road in case they need a green flag pit stop after this one. NASCAR will park the pace car on the back stretch. Teams will be allowed to change the slicks and manage adjustments. So this is why it's red flag, but it's not a competition change. So effectively, this is the free pit stop after a red flag. Tires, it's they not can a real adjust red flag. The, the blades on no. the front rear sway bar, how stiff or soft they are. They can adjust the, each of the shocks. You've got adjustments on the two rear shocks, the front shocks. That's probably the two biggest things, Mike, that they'll be adjusting, which is what they adjusted when they put those wet weather tires on. We saw some of those right sides coming off there. It looks like Truex right front was chewed up a little bit more than your race leader, Kyle Larson. If but this was I think Ferrari, they still had they plenty of life taking in them. away the entire jack. Yeah. So this is that not one looks good. Yeah. Accidentally. So this red flag neutralizes Tires the field. Wallace's radio. Oh, I remember what I was going to show you. <laughs> I saw... I mean, when we use it like Wilkesboro and some other... Pl- when we go through the slicks, it's a massive change. It's, you don't think something's broke until it settles back in. Yep, yep, good reminder there. Absolutely. Anyway, Booty the thing that I was going to show you earlier was a... Do you know that funny meme of the... Well, not meme, video of the cat going basically like help and then being dragged away. I saw that, but it being like, Bono, help! <laughs> and it being Hamilton in Ferrari. Like, help, Bono! <laughs> so the red flag's been brought in and we will go back to a yellow condition. Now, the reason NASCAR stopped the race there was to enable free pit stops and enable a non-competitive pit lane. They've stopped them on the back straight away. They're going to get them back in the correct order that they uh, went into pit road. So no one loses time. No one loses position. That's what's going on here now. So they'll reorder the field and then we'll head back to green and we will go racing once again. So they're just getting themselves back in order. And uh, that's why, uh, according to Bob Potcross, they didn't want to have... Uh, a changeover now they didn't want people refueling they just wanted people changing tires to dries from wets so nobody's refueled they were still in the same fuel window 
And now we could have green flag pit stops for fuel or anything going in. So that red flag right. was just to change to, from the wet tyres to the dry tyres. So the track has dried out. So that's good news because we were thinking we were thinking lightning. It hasn't been very well communicated from NASCAR. What's going on here? No, not to us anyway. We've got the media channels now. So why don't we know? I don't know. I don't know. Before that red flag came out, however, we've gone back to uh, caution now. Uh, we were talking about the um, one voice singing in the darkness Instagram video that I put out. Do you remember? Going yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you do. Yeah, and I was just, I was just sort of one of the weirdest things ever because I put that only to my close friends on Instagram. So the USN lot, us lot, family and all that lot. Maddie Patterson's involved in that now because she's part of the work crew. So Maddie saw it and liked it. And I still can't quite <laughs> believe that because she liked me up the picture of me and Luke on the night out, and she, <laughs> and she also <laughs> saw the one voice singing in the darkness. So yeah, that was. Uh, it's still going to get some getting used to having, uh, you know. But soon it'll Team become pencils. second nature. Yeah. Well, have uh, Zach Brown you know, <laughs> you know, liking my pictures on DMs and all that lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, it's going to be, it's weird. Weird life that we leave, lead, isn't it? Mm. But yeah. Maddie be back with us, um, well, I want to say next weekend, but technically it's this weekend as well. So uh, it's... it's oh, it The should, next yeah. Saturday, that shall approach. Excellent. She'll be back with us uh, again with some little... Information stats. So she, I think she's again in the media centre for for race three. <laughs> she she's had more goodbyes than sh than uh, uh, Britney Spears has uh, done last tours and Sheer and that lot. So uh, she's she keeps coming back, but um, yeah, she's trackside again. So we'll get we'll get her in the box. And I don't know where you're going. I'm really sleepy. Yeah, <laughs> it is one a.m. and uh, stage one. And is we all lost an hour's sleep. Yeah, technically it's midnight. You can't, you annoyed me. I got to sleep at four fifty, and you woke me up at what ten? I woke you up at ten eighteen. Yeah. Because we were having breakfast. Did I care? No, which is surprising because it was food. Did anyone actually eat that breakfast? Uh, there's two sausages left and some bacon and hash browns. In fairness, one of those sausages were mine. Ah. Well, we can share it. To Tell you what, it'll be fine for tomorrow. I didn't want the rest of it. Then. It'll be fine tomorrow. I'll, I'll put um, a hash brown, bit of bacon, sausage, bun with a bit of egg. I'll make that up for you. Invented. With uh, tiger bread. Oh, I do love a bit of tiger bread. Yeah. Uh, that's your Easter breakfast. When I eventually wake up, because at this rate, we've been going for 26 One. minutes, and we've only done 44 laps. It was meant to be done in two minutes. We've been on for half, we've been racing for half an hour. At yeah. this point, Matthew will be here. <laughs> Jamie Little. Oh, we just don't have a lot of experience right now. She's in Jerry Lagano's pit lane. You know, we made some adjustments to start the race, um, kind of anticipating what it would drive like with those tires. Um, seemed like we were reasonable. Um, we're able to kind of hold our track fish and gain a few, and um, now we'll see what we're like when we get back on the slicks here. Right. Good luck. Thanks. Paul Wolf there with, with Jamie Little as we get ready to go going. And uh, I think they've come to the choose, Megan, and Bubba Wallace, I think, has taken the lead. Yeah, Bubba's leading from Carl Larson. Although, on the official timing screen, it's saying Carl Larson. I think Chase Elliott might be only one. Let's take a look at these wet tyres. This tyre this. looks pretty good. The outer edge, just a little bit worn on the front edges of this tyre. So, as a comparison, this is what the new tyres look like. Not too bad for the first go of it here at Richmond. Right, cheers for that. Next. Oh, hello. Are you sure? Yeah. Because I, I, I remember Kyle being Kylo Ren in my report. I thought that was Bubba. Who, uh... No, Bubba is Boba. Whoever won last time out when I was here is Ventress. Uh, I know that. I know that for a fact. That was uh, that was Kyle Larson. He won at Richmond. No, 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 no. So no, he no. won at Phoenix. No, where no. are you? Phoenix? Where? I was... It was when we had the track coverage. So, Bristol. Bristol. Who won then? Larson won at Bristol. No, he didn't. I'm 90% convinced that Larson won at Bristol. And I'm 100% sure that Ventress won. Well, who won Bristol? <laughs> I usually have last wins, don't I? Oh, well, but, uh, Hamlin. Denny Hamlin won Bristol. He is Ventress. Yeah, Hamlin won. Where is Denny Hamlin at the moment? Uh, he's running 14th. 
in car 11. He's Ventress. I feel bad for your sister staying away from most likely nothing as I don't think we're getting anywhere today. We're, we're not at the moment. Stop, start, stop, start. I am very sleepy. She's only here for stage one, though, of the race. Yeah. Matthew I Owens was tired will, enough. Yeah. Matthew okay. Owens will be joining me in the comms box for the remainder of this race. Which will hopefully be shorter. Yeah. So, basically, we've got two different commentary lineups. One to go. We're going to get going again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Which so, is appropriate to say of all days. Yeah. So, Ventress is Hamlin. Oh, we're going green. Kyle Larson is Kylo Ren. Robert Wallace is Boba Fett. That's all I know. Right, come on then. Let's get going. Had enough of this now, where we've been waiting for green flag conditions. The pace car lights are out. We are waiting to go back to green flag here at Richmond Raceway. There's the Sunny D car. That's the four. And that's going to come through as well with Josh Berry. He's up into 16th place as we get ready to head back then. Competition caution over. That took a couple of laps as well. 18 laps under yellow and a combined red flag into the Geico restart zone. We are racing for the second time today in Richmond. And look at Bubba Wallace immediately getting onto the back of Kyle Larson. He gets a much better line than those dry tyres on the outside. Larson's almost on the pit wall. Bubba's giving him no room through one and two. Bubba's going to have the lead of the race here. Logano's going down low through one and two. And Bubba's on the high line. And we know Larson likes to tip in. And Again. We go, oh, my word. They didn't make it contact. Bubba stays up high and Bubba leads a lap here but Larson's coming right back at him and look at him, it's nearly fenders and there's the sparks again from the exhaust coming through and just touching out the ground and Larson's not giving Wallace any positions at all. He really isn't. Um, this sparks yeah. again. I'm looking at it again on these pictures. It's just getting so yeah. now. Yeah, it's something coming back on it, isn't it? That's a bit, it's very strange seeing it. It, it, front, yeah. it looks like there's just something stuck underneath. It's like the flooring is just like Because the exhaust, down. Is, the, it's not coming from the exhaust from, from there. So it's like it's like they're running only on the left side. Because it's in the same bit yeah, every time. It's like when he changes down a gear, it's, it's going sparking a bit more. And it's bluish. Yeah. It's like a flame from the exhaust valve, but it's only coming out. And usually, it's happening at both sides of the exact same place. Yeah. Now, usually, look, we're seeing on the Garner's car as well when it downshifts. It's a thing that happens as well with them but it's unusual to see it happening only on the one side for Bob Wallace not the other the Toyotas do have the same exhaust patterns but yeah. it's only happening one side and it is like a spark and not a normal flame out and it's just repeatedly happening yeah I can see it sparking under the left side something is under the side of that car there is the right side so okay. again so it's a, it looks like every time it goes to downshift Yes, we get the normal spark for when it recharges the spark side. But there's something blue. But there's something else underneath the car every time he downshifts. Because no one else has looked like that. I wonder if it's something like uh, when he lifts off, something is just like, you know, like when you're hitting speed. it. Yeah, you know, like when you're at speed, the front goes it it down and comes, yeah. So I wonder if there's something catching because there's a like friction. Yeah, it's hard to tell because you've got the normal fire at the side of the exhaust when they yeah, downshift. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But there is something else, just a little bit of spark coming so from underneath it. I just saw from the number four, which is Josh Berry, his does spark a tiny bit, that's slightest fine. tiny bit from the exhaust. But underneath Bubba Willis's it's car, forward. it's like it's... It's almost like someone's trying to light a cooker. I wonder if it's something it's to do going with, out. I wonder if it's something to do with the banking here and the suspension, like it's rubbing something in, do, it's only doing yeah. it through one part of the track. So friction. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's yeah. always in the same type of places. It's not happening to anybody else, is it? No, it yeah. isn't. So Bubba has got something there with the suspension set up on the car. I don't know what. What if he sets it up differently with the wet tyres? Like, mm. that we wanted it higher on the wet, so now they're higher on the dries as well, it's changing them slightly. Look at Suarez, start to 20th, up to 9th place already. Great start from him. Chris Buescher, 14th, now 10th. And they're battling out side by side at the moment. I don't think Bowman might be Palpatine. <laughs> I think he might have said that, yeah. Is that a yellow falling? Oh, who's the gunner? <laughs> I was wondering. I'm going to have to go back. Yeah. I was wondering what was happening there. Here's Truex. These are down. Have you noticed? Yeah, I was leaving it for you. I don't need it. Put it up for you. Because I lean on it when you're not when I'm standing. Whew. There we go. Larson's three tenths off the pace. Uh, sorry, three tenths faster than Bubba Wallace at the moment. So he's finding in the pace times. 
That's a 0.346 off Bubba's right there. Bubba's continuing that pressure. He's not letting it go at all. Lap 59, 341 laps to go. And there's Martin Trex Jr. running in fourth position now. Bowman's uh, five tenths of a second up the road from him. So there's nothing going on there. There's, there's Josh Berry. You were talking about him earlier on, Megan, making a move on the inside there of the 17 of Chris Busher and makes it stick into turns three and four on the low line. So that Sunny D car for Josh Berry is looking very, very good here on Easter Sunday. It really is. I, I am literally going back to <laughs> see who I named. Right, okay. At the Food City 500. I'm not sure that I said some of them out loud because it was so busy and there were so many people there. It's like, You're not going to find it in a three-hour broadcast. Where's Henry? Oh, I need you on here. Had to leave a check in 23rd. Alright, fair does. So mute me. <laughs> That's the leads. Four tenths of a second now to Wallace. I'm muting myself now. Alright. Look at Joey Logano, six starts, no wins, only one top ten finish, two DNFs, average finish of 23rd position. And he had that controversy with the spider glove, you know, the, 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 the webbed glove that we put it all together early on in the season. Took the opening two poles of the year to get into it as Larson comes in. And we've got the yellow out. Not sure why. We haven't seen it on our TV pictures yet, so we'll hold judgment. But the track's gone yellow. There's Lagana on the outside. Bush coming through on the inside as well. Uh, Bush really out of shape into one and two. Lagana keeps up high. Looks like they're all stopping through one. They really are downshifting quite crazily, aren't they? Okay, I can't find it. It'll be this lap, whatever happens. We're into three and four. Lagana's going up. Too wide, further up the track, coming onto the control line. Berry's on the inside, and Berry spins Suarez. And is Suarez going to save it with the world's longest drift? No, spins out at one. Collected by anybody? No, he's on the infield, on the low line. Suarez will get away with it. Larson isn't Kylo. That's Bush. Yeah. But Kylo's well, Josh Berry spins. Daniel Suarez out to turns two and puts him on the low line and brings out caution number two. And with only five laps to go, that will end stage one of racing here at Richmond. I think I know who everyone is. Who? Priest. Yeah, I think you're right there. Yeah, you have that one swinging your bell. What do you think of Barry there? A bit cheeky or does Suarez deserve to give him room? What do you think? What do you make of it? As it's down here. Suarez comes down low on him. Room. Yeah. That's Suarez, not Barry's fault. Yeah, Barry did nothing wrong. He couldn't have done anything if he tried. It was Suarez who was literally going down. And given I'm pretty sure I named Suarez as Tarkin, this does not surprise me. <laughs> yeah, he just he chopped down in his return too. Barry couldn't lift off there. That, that is Suarez's fault. That's, mm. that's Suarez not using his mirrors to get ahead. Or even just looking to the left. Yeah. It's like, la, 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 la. Oh, there's actually a car there. I should not have just decided to, you know... Going to that lane. Got on the brakes immediately. Rears were still going for a while. Did well to keep it out of the wall, but he's flat spotted those slicks. I, mean, I thought you said police. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? There's four to go in this stage. The field's backed up. Can we just go now? Why does it always have to be like, oh, one caution for a half spinning car? Let's spend the next 15 minutes under caution. Pit road. Oh, no. He's car. Coming down the track. He makes the decision to cut me off in the hill. That's all good. Even Barry's agreeing with you, Megan, so you've got that one spot on there. Didn't need to happen the way it did. Four to go in stage one. Sunny D. Isn't that just basically like our family? It's uh, orange juice. Orange juice. So, citrus? Like a, it's like a pureed orange juice with water in it. In the I 90s, it turned kids orange, I think. Or Orangina? No, it's not, fizzy. it's not fizzy. Tango? It's not fizzy. I, I don't know what to compare this to. Like, you know we have cartons of orange juice? Yeah. It's like that, but with water in it. We have Sunny D in this country, Megan. Do we? Yeah. David and Kellyanne used to love it. 
I've never had it. Would you like us to buy you a, a bottle of Sunny D? Not I've really. Al- I've always avoided it because Kellyanne and David told me once about how it used to turn people yellow. Apparently it was a case. I can't remember. don't even know if it's true or not. I've never, I, I don't think I would want to risk it. It's fine now, obviously. Otherwise, it was to be in business, would it? I mean, I don't know. They might be trying <laughs> to replicate <laughs> things like Willy Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to end up like Violet Beauregard and turn purple. Oppa, look, oppa, diggity do. Are we allowed now to sing that? that? Megan's done a do. I've done a, done a for the day. I've done. Screw it. It's Easter Sunday. Curse? Know. Josh, this weekend, if Max retires, please jump around the comedy box on camera. I did jump around the comedy box. I hit Megan. Megan's got a bruise, haven't you still? No. Oh, good. I heal quickly. Good. Caution's out then! Apart from this one scratch I have from when I was putting up my hair once. Right. I can still see it. Three to go. Are we going to go green with one to go? That this? happened a year and a half ago. I've got the <laughs> feeling that they're going to end the stage here. No, we'll just go around for the next stage. Three cautions in stage one. Took us 40 minutes to complete. Effectively on the clock, so you were right about that, Megan. But in reality, it took us... One hour, it took us 42 minutes nearly. So we've got yes. to, because we went green with an hour after, we were on air for the pre show for an hour because it's an Easter special. So yeah. You're right with your back. You're sat down. <laughs> yeah. It's just I can't really crack the top of it. I'll go like that then. No, I'll just have to, when I'm, when it's, you know, daytime, <laughs> I'm just going to have to like bend over the armchair backwards. But Does it? Yeah, no. it cracks the top half of my back, and I have no idea why. Do you remember in our old secondary school those chairs in English class? Yeah, those. Ones. Those did it perfectly. Oh, I hated those. They're like they were too thin at the back. Yeah, but they were perfect for cracking the top of your back. Uh, I preferred the uh, uh, the science chair. They they were nice and high. They were nice. Not the not for a short person, they're not. Not those ones. That, we had a really nice one. Like, did you, you did you have the the one where it was all one chair? Not those like back and bottom ones. It was all one chair, nice and great. Oh, they were nice. We had I, that and that. No, no, no. We had all. We had this we all didn't. great one. Oh, it's comfortable as well. There used to be a fight over that, and I always won. We did not have that. We got told to be sat down in just a chair. No, uh, when I was in Miss Donovan's, me, Maggie, Jordan, Casey always used to fight over that chair, and I always used to win it. Literally, I used to, co- I used to go there. I used to get to that lesson early, and I used to go around like, okay, that chair, mine. Thank you very much. And I'd sit there. I was like, yeah, okay, I've got my chair. Sorry, sorry. Have to be early next time. I miss my science teacher. I miss uh, Miss Donovan. Mrs. Bull. Miss Donovan actually was one of the easiest names to spell. Do no van. D o v do do d o n o v a n Donovan. Do no van. Easy. Hi, if you're watching. <laughs> always reminded me of Tasha Yar. My science teacher always reminded me of Kellyanne. Even the hair. Or Amber. And the blood type. Was it Amber? No. Oh. Her name was Mrs. <laughs> Bull. So even her blood type is Kellyanne's blood type. That's, that is unusual. Yeah. yeah. She donates blood, you know, a lot. I feel Josh was a bad kid in school. Ha! He was the opposite. Literally, the teachers trusted Sorry. him wholeheartedly. The teachers both of us. And stage one ends under caution as the green checkered with the yellow flag is out. Kyle Larson wins stage one and picks up the stage points. Bubba Wallace second, Bowman third, Trex fourth, Lugano rounds out the top five. Most wins this season, but most top three finishes go to Christopher Bell. Most wins goes to Will Byron. 7.8, best average he's finished for Ty Gibbs. Five straight top ten finishes. Most laps led, Denny Hamlin. 275, the only driver to lead in every race. Hasn't led so far today. Points leader, Truex. Only driver to finish on the lead lap in every race so far. Trix leads with 260 points as we go. And Larson in there too. Yeah, we were good kids. Both of us. Uh, Charles says, I'm slightly a nerd, I think, in school. Nobody's a nerd in school. Everyone's got their own uniqueness. That's going away now. Now you're just very talented. It's, I like that. Mm. No, I had too much power. Yeah, you school. did. I had my own office. And because we went to the same <laughs> secondary school... You had that power. I... 
<laughs> it, the powers kind of shifted on to me. Not as much as he had, because I was always very just... I didn't do as much as his. And I was... <laughs> obviously, I have a different personality. Wise. I had too much power. I had the passcode to the bathroom for the teachers. He gave you that passcode. Was it C2678? I still it's remember it now. down somewhere. I still, I still remember it as well. C2678. I wrote passcode. it down in every single planner I had. What? You never know when you need to a nice, quiet bathroom. I know, but they changed for bathrooms in our last yeah. year. Literally, you couldn't close the door anymore. It's literally just open. So it was better to have that yeah. That one, yeah. C two six seven eight. But yeah, they they trusted me, mm. which is good because me and Josh were actually good kids in school. I did paperwork. That's how yeah. much I did. I did actual paperwork for the schools. People just <laughs> didn't care when I walked through the halls. I had too much power. It was quite fun. Josh should have go his commentary box to commentate during school hours and Friday practice. Uh, well, not to say I did, day. but. When I was at college, I had my own box to comment on the sessions. He commentated on my sports days. I used to... I, I, I'm mine. Yeah, I you went to the public teachers. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I was... I, well, that's, that's what happens when you can find a job with the teachers. It is. You should have gone to the karaoke. I'm actually place. friends with my old PE teacher's niece. <laughs> you, should have went, you should have went to the karaoke bar. That was quite fun. <laughs> anyway, uh, the driver's coming through then. And there. That's purely coincidental. Like, me and her niece... <laughs> met just randomly at college and became friends and I still are our friends and then I was like your, your auntie is my auntie teacher I think they're I think I think she's leaving I don't know she's been there a long time I oh, mean well, she was there when well, I was five I left 10 years ago and she was there now she's been there about 15 years she's been there at least since I was that's five that's scary to think that. she's been there about 15 years had to have been easy so we've got distracted massively. Our other PE teacher lives down the street from my dad. Yeah. Josh ruled the school. Growing up. I did rule the school. I did rule the school. You really did. It was creepy. No, but I'll tell you what I did get. Uh, when when, when um, they were, when we had the BBC. I used to have regular chats with his old principal. Yeah. When we had the BBC. <laughs> so 2010, 2011, 2012 and all that. Long. 13 as well. Um, anytime they had the sessions... In, we had uh, my business. I used to do business and IT, so I used to go for like double business and double IT, and then a swimming lesson. On we Friday. all did business. Friday was great. Friday was great for years nine, ten, eleven because literally it was Friday morning, double business in an IT, double IT in an IT room, and then when there was no session on because you used to have the morning, and then you, you had the, then we didn't finish at two forty. Practice to start till three. So we used to, we got to finish at 2.30. Yeah, we used to go, we had swimming. So we had swimming, and I'd come back, put the heads on, and start the commentary. Anyway, pit lane, I said that. Want some help with that as this team goes to work. The 19, a Martin yeah. Truex Jr., pretty happy overall. Has a little bit of brake shake, but overall, he's happy with the balance of the 19, Regan. Chase oh. Elliott, we just met his team a moment ago. His car right now is surprisingly la lazy with the front. That means the front tires aren't working as good as he wants to through the middle. And the five car of your leader, Kyle Larson, the entry is okay for him. The middle is too tight. Kyle's getting off pit lane. Do you know a fun fact? Well, all four of us, in our siblings, all four of us did history yeah. and business. At that some point. That is true, yeah. So, race off pit lane. Larson, Wallace, Bowman, Trex, Elliot. And then that's the top five. Logano down to six. Justine, Berry, Pierce, and Gilliland, the top ten. No idea how mum and dad managed to produce four children that for some reason did two of the exact same things. And yet everything else, different. It's like, my qualifications were, apart from obviously... English, maths, and science, which honestly I did amazing in because I did higher levels in all of them. Show off. Because I'm smart. <laughs> um, I did history, which I got good grades in. I got great, great, good grades in all. I did history, business, art, and photography. I still can't work out these monitors. If you want to. Oh, and by the way, I did art because I am actually a very good artist. There we go. And that's not just me bragging, that's me 
constantly doubting my artwork and everyone else telling me it's actually really good. <laughs> we wouldn't hang it in our house if it was not good. Loved US slash world history in school as well. Practical was uh, mega. I hate it also. We were sometimes made to do written works. It was so annoying. That was for PE. Yes. We did that Adam occasionally. PE, yeah. I hate... We had the bleep test. That was, I, I got an oh, yeah, exemption for the bleep that. test. We never did that. It's banned now. It, the bleep test is banned. It's only for athletes who running track. That's it now. I used to love the discus. Because I am very good no, with throwing things. Here's the things. thing: I didn't, I didn't enjoy football. Didn't, didn't like that. And yeah. I enjoyed badminton, table tennis, swimming. We had our own swimming pool. I hated swimming. Loved swimming, me. Loved. It. I couldn't. I could swim just a little bit. Thank you to Angie. I can't. But I, I'm not that great. I she spent most of her time with me too. Yeah, yeah. Me, same here. Same here. Um, we can't swim. Our parents can swim. <laughs> I can float thanks to Angie, and I can get myself. As long out as I'm holding there. something, I can. Yeah. Um, but. The one thing I loved above all else, badminton. Mm. badminton so much so, nice. me and Caitlin Clover, we were discussing this a few, a few weeks ago actually as well. Um, we used to have, I forgot this until we started talking about it. Um, this one time we were playing badminton, we had an hour. Mm. We got so into it and so competitive, we literally took, it was supposed to be doubles. We took over the one court <laughs> and we stayed on it for the entire hour and we got so competitive it ended like 40 40 something rather we were just going again and again and again we were going at it for an hour and nobody could win it and we would we were just too competitive the table tennis games my god when we were in college actually i could we we, did, we, we had it uh, oh school. i remember that no, table but, tennis thing table tennis at uh, uh, college was, that was unbelievable the amount of games that got in <laughs> Toyota Owners 400 here for round seven of the NASCAR regular season. We're getting ready for stage two. What are you still doing here? I don't know. <laughs> we just got so into talking about our school days because, fun fact, me and Joshua never actually were in the same school at the same time yep. because, coincidentally, like secondary school here is five years. Our age difference, six years. Yeah. So... I, I don't think one school could handle us. <laughs> no, uh, but they did have to do take a double at one time, and we, well, you know, one of us was there for all mm. events and things. Uh, stick tyres coming in. We are going green this time around as well. Do so I stay or do I go now? I do not know. Well, <laughs> it's going to be uh, 321 laps to go, lap 79. Coming into it. Is this Matthew? No, not yet. Right, here we go then. Coming into the green for stage two for all the Toyota Owners 400. 152 miles to go in stage two. Just to point out to you as well. Stage two begins now. Green flag, race on. Great start from Larson this time around. Bubba Wallace trying to go high. Bowman is coming there as well. And he's in a battle with Truex. Truex going around the outside. Logano's taking the low line of this restart. Josh Perry's going to battle out again as well with Elliott and Chastain. So that could be something. But Larson and Wallace keep the advantage through one and two. Calm restart there for the top two. But uh, Truex takes Bowman around the outside coming into position there. What are we still doing? I don't know. You're now starting stage two. Good start as they come into it. Bowman. Bowman's keeping on the low line, keeping it to position. Nearly running into the wall. Look at oh, and that's that's Josh Berry on the inside of Logano. Logano was out of position there. And he's gonna chop it back a little bit too much. That could be contacts, they're not careful. And now here comes Chase Elliott taking sixth position away. So Berry's out of position here. Yeah, he is. He's gonna go on the inside line, trying to get ahead of Logano. Push, push, push. And he's on the inside of three. Oh, look at the traction on the inside line. Berry pulls right alongside Logano. That's close. And Berry using the low line. Logano in the center. Now he's going up high. I think Logano's got better track position here. He can dictate where exactly to put the pace. Mm. But Berry's through, so never mind. <laughs> and now Logano tries to cut down low. Ford v Ford in terms of car provider. Chevy leads though with Kyle Larson. Getting an interesting restart here. So it's 14 laps of 116 stage two, 315 to go overall in this race. 
in school, I was always very quiet, surprisingly. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> I, was always, I was more kept to myself. So I used to chat with the teachers after class because I actually, I've always got along with adults incredibly well. Reddick <laughs> with uh, Keslowski and Gibbs. I've noticed being an adult since I was like 10. And Byron goes down a couple of positions. In fact, Byron's been passed by both. Byron's down to 17th place now. Mm. Which one was Brad Keslowski? As we see Berry take third, fourth position away from Bowman down the inside line. Berry up Jeez. to fourth. Do I send you a picture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to know now. Shall I go in now and you, send you a picture? Are you leaving me? Do you, do you want me to leave you? Well, so far, we've got no one else in the coverage you've got, so I'm sort of like, can, how can long you, is Rafi going to be? Can you handle? <laughs> I have no own? idea. I've never done it on so long. Look at NASCAR. Uh, Megan is now hugging me, for those of you on yours already can't hear me. Um, I'm getting mic feedback in my ears. I'm sorry. 41 on the inside <laughs> line getting through there as well. So uh, that's a more overtaking positions further down the back of the field. The 20 go around the outside line. So I can't even see where I'm looking on the timing screen. That's going to be Bell passing Ryan Priest. Priest back up the inside I line. I noticed that before they have the sectors underneath it. Oh, yeah. Like in a different little colour. How did we not notice that before? I don't know, but now we can see who's stopped. That is true. Oh, yeah. Sectors one, two and three. I've never noticed that before. Good spot. Well, it's because we haven't had this timing screen on before, so it's yeah. all brand new. We're still getting, getting used to it. So there's third position taken. Now that's fifth. Bowman's defending fifth from Logano, who's trying to go down low. So Bowman's dropped back massively in this second stage. He's now dropped behind. He's down to sixth. Logano takes fifth. Bowman was started this in third, stage two. He's lost out. What's wrong with him? He's lost out big time. Any <laughs> sign? Here's the 12. This is Ryan Blaney. Come on, man. No. Ryan Blaney trying to take the inside line. Jamie. Basically, he just burned up his rain tires and lost all that track position. Then he was complaining that he lacked stability. So when he came in for that first pit stop, they had to make a big adjustment, but they also had a bit of a slow stop. So he went all the way back to 32nd, Mike. Wow. So down to 32nd is Daniel Suarez after that problem as well. And the 12 has dropped back from Ryan Blaney down to 28th position. So I'm fine. So he's uh, going back. This happened yesterday as well. My neck gets tired of supporting itself the other day. This is Byron. Uh, I'll support him. <laughs> Thank you. This is Byron in the pit lane. Um, oh, and he nearly ran into the back. Byron had to reverse on pit lane. That'll be a drive through. Byron had to reverse on pit lane. Nine times out of 10, that's a drive through. There he is. So the Daytona 500 winner, winner last time out as well, a week ago. He needs better pillows. Yeah. Kozlowski making a move on the inside line. And that's Brad getting ahead of Hamlin. To go. Yeah, 10 4. I just, I can't get around him. Like, I'm blocked out with the wheel and spun the tires. Yeah, we, you gotta get slowed. We just, even if we gotta give it up, it's gonna be easier than backing up. So slow down, coming in, stop on the side. That's for the. Pace, that's for when he comes in for, for pit stops, yeah. Which we must be close to. What happened on 94? I don't think, have they taken fuel, fuel, fuel yet? They haven't, have they? That's, no. Was it 125 to 135? They had a wheel change. Yeah. No fuel. No fuel. So they're still running from stage one fuel, though. So it's like a burning. I must admit, flagging. <laughs> I don't know how you're standing it. On the inside line, coming into it. How do people on night shift do it? I was so into, you know. I can ask my friend Greta. Well, I was asking, uh, thinking about it. I was like, how do you do it? Like, oh, I don't know. Larson leads by 1.5 seconds to Bubba Wallace. Bubba once again getting up there. I couldn't do it. 96 down, an hour in. 304 to go. Stage two underway here for the Toyota Owners 400. Any time zone is Matthew in? <laughs> uh, Eastern, I believe. So, yeah, it's, it's not Eastern Standard Time. It's half eight. Half eight. Oh, well, people got to filter out. <laughs> Thing is, so, gonna, nine? Nah, probably. He's probably going to come into the comments, but it's like, what's going on here? <laughs> what's, what? I think they'll be watching it. Definitely going to be in a situation to have it on. Last of 1.4 seconds clear at the moment as they come into it. I want to eat one of my Easter eggs. Well, I'd, if I eat it all whole, you know, then I think it had bad effects. Today, I've had a Cadbury's Galaxy. I've had a Cadbury's 
caramel, mm. a Oreo, and uh, the little bunny, one of my bunnies. Bunny. And I have had uh, all flavours of celebrations because I got that. But I haven't actually had an Easter egg. Really? Yeah. I've eaten a little bit yeah, of but my Easter I egg. I can't believe how many we've got. I've got seven. We never used to get this much, but they've been free with Vodafone rewards. So it's like. Yeah, so. We usually <laughs> have like, what, three? Yeah. Now we've got seven. That's going to last us a long time. It's like this, that could easily last me two, three weeks. In fact, the whole, ca- the whole kept of, his till June. I'm going to try and get mine to last me until my birthday, which is April 21st. So if I can get mine to last so you, 20 you've got to days, make it last f- 20 days. Yeah. Seven, making it 20 days. Technically three weeks. Yeah. It's not, it's not too bad, is it? I could, yeah. I could last. Because then I've got chocolate on my I birthday. should hope that it lasts till then, Joshua. Oh, what Otherwise, you're just going to be eating one every three days. Trix, one every three days. Trix Jr. on the inside line going for turn three and four. Try and get ahead of Bubba Wallace. This is for position. Josh Berry is just behind them. And Bubba is not looking quite good at the exit line. And Trix has got the inside into one and two. And there it is still again. still sparking, isn't he, for Wallace? It's bluish. They both sparked at that moment. That but was his more. was blue. Yeah. So that's, that's ethanol burn. Yeah. That's something burning from the exhaust. So fuel's burning from the exhaust. Yeah. Oh, interesting. His sparks have hair dye. <laughs> <laughs> the Marge Simpson colour. Yeah. To which, if you're watching this race being broadcast on Fox, if you're wanting to know where the Simpsons episode is, it follows this broadcast. Does it? I think it was on before. I think, no, family... It's around this. Family Guy follows this broadcast, I believe. As it, as it does. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Family Guy follows this, I think. I remember when I was... Like, younger, like 10. Do you remember how mum used to get annoyed with me watching Family Guy because she wouldn't have a bad influence? Oh, the Philly is <laughs> Too <one>. late. <laughs> um, I used to just stay up and just watch it after I watched Screen Queens, which is about murder, so it's... Nothing <laughs> changes. <laughs> this was me at 10. Welcome back. If you're watching along with us on Fox or around the world, Kyle Bush, 60 short track victories in his career. He is currently... Uh, not on the pace. Where is uh, Kyle in the eight? Oh, he's down in 20th place. For a minute, I thought he was going backwards. <laughs> I thought he was. That's Josh <laughs> Berry in the fourth ID car. Camera's not catching up with him perfectly. We've been, on, we've been racing officially an hour now on the clock. Unofficially an hour and three minutes. Yeah, and our brains are just like, what? <laughs> yeah. An extra hour and three minutes. You can go to bed. I still probably have another two hours to go. If we stay normal. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen in this race. Bubba. Oh, hang on a minute. That's Truex. And Berry's up to third. Bubba's down to fourth. Berry got through. Fifth. What? Yeah. Logano's through. What's happening to Bubba? Is he tyre saving? I heard there from one of them. Or is he burning fuel? <laughs> That's an alarming risk. If he's got a bigger problem, it goes out for a mechanical mechanic. You've been calling it since the stage one, the early stages of this race. So it's too bad I kind of hope he has a problem. I hope he, yeah. <laughs> What's happening with your microphones? Miles away from your mouth. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we had lit mics. So, last of two seconds clear at the moment uh, to Truex. I told the idea I'd be in that uh, 45 minutes ago. He probably hasn't even realised that where we are. That's the question. We're getting ready, though, for the first pit stops of this race in do terms I, of fuel. Do you reckon I could fill up a water bottle, like a hot water bottle? Oh, I was going to say... Hot water bottle. There's a water bottle here. I mean, that would stay hot, but... <laughs> <laughs> Third degree burns, maybe, with the vessel. Yeah. <laughs> On board with Christopher Bell in the 20, running in ninth position, coming into turns three and four. There's something hypnotic about a night race on an oval. It's, yeah. it's weird. It's, it's for to, light. Yeah, it's going to my eyes. It's making me really sleepy. <laughs> it's a night race, Megan, but not as we know it. Either that or it's because it's 1.35 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm, this is going to be a very interesting tell. Shall I not wake you up until like 11? I have no idea what is going to happen tomorrow. I'm just going to roll with it. Ideally, I'd like to be woken up. A bit. I'd like to be sleep uh, sleep deprived throughout the day so I can sleep and get a bit of normal schedule. Yeah. Because it's only Japan next week. So, that's so it. ten. Yeah. I mean, I say it's only Japan. Yes, we've got a NASCAR. Yes, we've got a. I just forgot to open my eyes. <laughs> yeah. All right, you can go. So if we need to, yeah. 
We need Matthew in here to give us some energy. I don't, I don't want to leave you on your own to this. As soon as Matthew gets in, you can go straight to bed. And please remember to get changed and not sleep in your clothes. Yeah, I have a habit of sleeping in my clothes. The Marty McFly approach, as we see on the inside. Look at uh, Todd Gilliland in 11th position, trying to pass Bush up for 10th, trying to go through the inside line, three and four. It's not on purpose, I just closed my eyes. <laughs> and then he's like... <laughs> and it's like, oh, 7 a.m. <laughs> Gilliland cannot find a way through here, can he? Come on, Todd. Get back up there. Find that position. Just by Chris Bush up by, what, five? Four tenths? Yeah. Yeah. Gilliland, yeah. I do. <laughs> Gregson's in there, too. They're all right in there, actually. By, by the same terms, four tenths between them. So Six. Battle Six. for that. Yeah. Six tenths. Battle for that. Uh, top 10 I positions, think. really crucial. Yeah. Points as they run. Truex Seven? at the moment is going to have 262 points and lead to Larson. As we see, uh, the 77 in a battle further back with uh, Ricky Steinhaus Jr. Steinhaus on the outside line, down low uh, as well is the 77 of Holsevar. Uh, and then behind, Joey Lagana, uh, sorry, Ryan Blaney in the 27. So they've been running together for a couple of laps now, although it should be too bad. Oh, nearly up to the wall. And, yep, I think we're going to have Hosevar go through. Yeah, Hosevar passes Steinhouse now. I just want Steinhouse to Steakhouse. What? Steinhouse. Yeah. I heard it as Steakhouse. <laughs> Do you want my glasses? Oh, door bang. That's why they're side by side. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, Steinhaus came off that corner wrong, and host of ours said, OK, I'll get better traction, I'll come from the inside. If you if you put Steinhaus and Briscoe together, you could, even if you do, like, blur your eyes, you could be Steakhouse Brisket. <laughs> Not what I like Gilmore, everyone. <laughs> Shell fan says, I watched your commentary on Twitter, as you said, Josh, happy to was fantastic. I love the passion. I think that the closest to real of you losing your voice, yeah. Megan going, Mercedes, Mercedes, and I'm going, shut up, I don't care about the radio, we've got a battle going on here. Mercedes. Kill Watson. leads by 1.4 seconds to Truex now here. It's lap 117 of 400, 283 laps to go. In stage two, it is lap 46 of 160. So we are closing up here on, I think, pretty much we're, I reckon it's going to be halfway, you know. You do half, then Matthew comes in and does half. Mm. I think that's what's happening, don't you? That seems to be the, the general gist of things. Probably. Which means uh, two, so 200 to go. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I was looking at the laps and then laps to go. As in, like... Yeah, that'll make sense. That'll just up. Just 80. Just take away that. Yeah. My 82. My sleep deprived brain's not making sense. I was aiming to look at this monitor. Which tell, but your which, brain just didn't compute yeah. that you needed to turn your head. I'm trying to work out if it's at the end of stage two or the start of stage three that uh, we'll be at half distance. But if we go across 150 laps, NASCAR can determine this race. It'd be in this stage. As a, yeah. So if... We go 150 laps. Now, ask if the lightning or rain comes back, NASCAR can declare the race a result. So Matthew might miss it entirely. If that rain comes back, there's no sign of it at the moment. We're on dry tyres. It's all you going smooth now. at the moment. By the way, we've now got lap traffic. Larson has just passed Corey LeJour. So Corey LeJour has now officially been lapped in this race. So we are now officially back into lap traffic. If we go into caution, then they get their back. How long has that been on the camera? Not a clue. I've not looked down. Not 18%, so it must have been a little bit. <sighs> it's one of those days, isn't it, where you just don't know what's going to happen next. Really wish we had a, another chair. <laughs> you can sit on this one. No, I'm fine. I'm gonna, when no, you, I don't want you to be uncomfortable. I'd be, I would be more I go, to, I go to bed soon. <laughs> I would be more uncomfortable sat down with the heater. I'll sit down during... Um, so sit down! ...during cautions and that lot. Okay. We'll throw, when we throw to Fox. I'm... I have really bad back right now. I am going to have a sip of drink for the first time today. I think that's why I'm flagging. Still tastes like caribou? No! That now tastes more like Dr Pepper. So the trick... No, I can't. It messes me up. 
So the trick is leave it open in the fridge for two days. Yeah. That now tastes like Dr Pepper. That's weird. Noted. So is it like wine? You just got to air it out. Jeez. That's pretty, yeah. Is that pit stops? Berry. They should, they should put directions on these things. Ah, everyone's coming down pit road. Yeah. So first pit stops of the day for Green Flag are coming up. And now the field will head down pit road for the first time. We will go down to hear what they have to say. Pit road. Keselowski, the first two. Here comes some more. It looks like Priest. Well, we had heard him talking on the radio a little Josh bit. Josh Berry, your third place car. Yep. With, about being scared of, of that pit road being wet. <laughs> and, and sometimes that's the deceiving part that we talk about. Uh, being not as slick as what you think it would be looking <laughs> wet. Regan? Well, the four car, Josh Berry, get ready to hit pit road and come to the service of his team, as you see right there. Right now, he's a little bit tight in traffic, good in clean air. They started to get ready about two laps ago and then quickly call him down pit road. Kyle Jamie. Bush, Priest, Gallup, Negrala, and more. Jamie. You see the 54, and Martin Trex Jr. just comes to a stop in his box. He had just told the team, I fired off good, and guys, I'm still happy. This car is good. They had a good feeling about it, and Mike, all three of his wins are rich the light. Uh, Bob Pockrass is still monitoring some small rain cells to the west I of the circuit, you. but we should still be okay. He's Busher in two. By your leader, in. Kyle Larson, is still out there. Long stop for Austin Dillon. Fucked. Bell's in. What? Ross Chastain is in. The brain's what? It, it fogged. I on thought you said something else. It, she hears on pressing thump. the heat button. Yeah, I was wondering what you were saying as they come in. Busher in two. Well, once one car gets on the pit road, if you're going to go on this strategy to, to pit in the middle of the stage, you have to come with them or you just lose too much time the first field and don't stop gain of the, the day. benefit of the new tires to take off and gain the lap time. Larry, what do you do if you're the leader, Kyle Larson? Yeah, what they may be doing, right. we'll watch him here for about three more laps. They may split this exactly in the third, which is basically about 50 laps a run. I watched Chris Gabehart with Denny Hamlin in the July race do the same thing. That way he gets a little bit of advantage on the top side with the fresher tires. But if you're going to go it on one stop, he's going to have to go about another 20-something laps. Christopher Bell is in. Regan. Mike Christopher Bell doing a nice job moving up through the field right now. He's a little bit too tight in traffic, but told his crew chief, Adam Stevens, if we get clean air at some point, I think it's going to be right where it needs to be. He's fast right now. Interesting. Joy comes to pit road along with Chase Elliott. That leaves just 11 cars on the racetrack who have not stopped. So he fast. here's the hardest part. Megan. When I get bored or I'm concentrating hard on something, even though I'm British, I hum an American national anthem. Is that what you're just doing? Yeah, I decided <laughs> almost to. You know that about me. Not that the other people do. Logano, <laughs> Elliot, Corey LeJour, all diving into pit lane for tyres. Jamie. Three as they run a four tyre stop here, scheduled. Good stop for the 22. Austin Sendrick is in. Logano's Penske teammate. So and that'll stopping. leave nine drivers on the track who have not been on pit road since lap 74, led by Kyle Larson. Well, I'm thinking this five car is going to stay out for a long yeah, and, and he had a lead, right, Clint? So he he had a little something to lean on. His lap times were were faster than than the second half of the field, but he had a little bit of a lead to uh, to give up that gap. Well, I think the fall off, right, and the speeds that they were running is what brought them to this. Got some five radio right here. Ryan Blaney in. That completes the Penske stops. Well, that's certainly what affords them the opportunity to be able to do this, right? The pace that you hear Clay Fidelian is talking about still likes what he sees, but where does your pace start going backwards? Exactly what you said, Kevin. It always is a determining factor at Richmond is how much time you lose with these cars. Time it well when these cars on tires pass you. Yeah, getting good then with pit stop in this race. And they're keeping it nice and smooth. 63 of 160, so 96 to go now as well as 64. I wish I knew why I am the American National Anthem. Jeff, I love the one. I'm just going to do that for the first time today because it's got a little bit colder here. Um, 
So there it goes, Truex. Now, is this for position? Parsons, no, this is passing 71, so that's passing oh, Zane Smith. I oh, and that's it. Truex going for the lead. Truex, is that to get back on the lead lap ahead of Larson? I'm not entirely sure. And is it still doing that thing? No, I can see it. Get landed fourth, so Truex is sixth. Truex back on the lead lap. And still this, doing it. Yeah, still doing it. Bubba is getting... Oh, contact! Ooh. The 21 getting sent up by the 77. So that was Harrison Burton getting forced up the high line by Carson Holsevar through turn three and four and almost putting him in the wall. Just dive bomb the inside line to Holsevar and nothing the 21 could do. Locked up and then he went to the wall. And here's that battle now with... Uh, Larson, who was yet to stop, and everybody else getting their lap back on him. So they, they've got to stop, otherwise they're going to lose out a lot more time. Yeah, yeah. And I, uh, I, all I can think about right now is the fact that the colour of that car would mean probably Jedi. <laughs> Larson's getting contacted as well. He's getting punched everywhere. So that's by the tw that's by the 15. So judging orders down there. That's going to be Kaz Grala who is down in 29th position on that down. He's got his lap back. And Bowman, as he stops, Bowman has stopped. Yeah, two stops. This is getting a bit weird now. How long until they decide to box it? Because Larson, Larson's losing a lot of time here. Very much a lot of time. Look, the three's just passed him. Three Dylan's minutes. passed him. Three minutes? Yeah. Richmond Raceway delivering another interesting one. 140 down, 260 to go. On board with Bowman. And that's Gilliland who is behind. Uh, so still getting everybody in at the moment. Larson leads by five seconds to Bubba Wallace. So the steel delta to be controlled, I want to say, is the situation. Mm. Megan is now eyes closed. I'm just resting. Are you, do you yes. want to go in? I'm not going to leave you on your own. If you want to go in, I can make it. As now Lagana I'm passing. a good sister. Megan, there's a good sister which is doing uh, stage one, which was 70 laps. There's an amazing sister doing another 72. Oh, We're now at 142 you. laps. Yeah, and I, I, I can I can do 58 more. <laughs> Megs, I know you. You get to lap 200. You'll just stay for the entire race. Megan, your eyes are going red. Go in. Are they? The old, the whites of your eyes are actually going red. I can see them. You you uh, okay. you now need to go in. Yes, you've done your duty as being a commentator and helping me out. But you now really do need to go to sleep. I am sleepy, but I don't want to leave you on your own. Megs, it's fine. And one commercial break over in the states, so you can head off. And that uh, is the signal, I believe, of um, Matt uh, coming in. Hopefully. That would be perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> now we're seeing uh, Chase Elliott under attack now as well, coming through on the inside. Is it? Is it not? Is it? I don't know any. Why don't I just check? <laughs> so, yeah, just waiting now as one commercial break. Larson 5.9 to Wallace, Bowman, Gilliland, Truex, top five at the moment. And again, the five. So now look at this. We've got Steinhaus in the 47 touching the back of the 51, but Larson's right there as well. So Larson's right in the middle. What on earth is Steinhaus doing here? He's putting to the attack. He's going to make a move. Larson's been swamped by two cars battling for position. Sandwich. Larson can't even get the lap. Get through. What on earth was that about? 47 got through. And the 51 is stuck behind. So through goes Ricky Steinhaus. But out of position goes Justin Haley. Who's, where is Justin now on the board? He's up in 11th position. Good back with us on commercial. Carl Larson has led 139 laps today out of the 147. Let's hope he wins. He led only 93 this race last year. Huh. Hey. Certainly improved on that. 
And there is Bubba. And it's, his colourful fire. Yeah, that sounds to me like he's it's burning a lot more ethanol in the exhaust that one that this weekend. It's working, whatever it is. That's a hundred percent of that one. When we worked in eth- with ethanol in science class, our teacher told us do not drink it. <laughs> so my immediate reaction in my mind was I wasn't planning to <laughs> Yeah, ethanol is worse. It could, it probably would kill you. It's like, I, I want to know how many times someone's almost tried to sip ethanol that she's had to warn people about that. <laughs> it's like, don't actually sip it. I was like, it's not going to Berry, sip it. Berry and Gilliland in a battle as we see Austin Sindrick trying to unlap himself. Berry has moved up into fifth position ahead of Gilliland. Bob Potcross has just said, cells to the west appear they will likely miss the track but could be close, so there could be rain coming. Larson pits this time by. So the cells to the left of him. Cells Clears to the right. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miles. <laughs> All right, Larson will box this time in. Suarez and Dylan coming in as well. That's going to give Bubba Wallace command of this race. So Bubba Wallace takes the lead. Into the pit lane comes Kyle Larson. This is an interesting sort of turnaround of the books. Larson, 6.4 seconds to Wallace. Bowman, Truex, Berry have the top five. Brad Keslowski coming into position. Larson will pit with 80 to go in this stage. The stage is 160. We know that already. He pitted. Here he is now. Bubba Wallace boxing as well, you're right. So Bubba now boxes a lap later. Let's head down pit road. Yeah. Pit road. Um, anyone there? Hello? No. And Bubba Wallace will They've take over the lead. Here's Regan. <laughs> Regan's there. Mike Kyle Larson's been very run. quiet on the radio. Hasn't said a word this entire run, but has been getting coached up the entire time by Cliff Daniels on where he needed to be lap time-wise. They continue to tell him, you're doing exactly what you need to do. He was managing lap time as he ran. Jamie. And Todd Gellin having a great night. Started sixth, his second best of the year. Tight through the center. Question, why they, they just have multiple sets of people on one side? They'd be away a lot quicker. Bubba Wallace, this run has been too free into the corners, too tight center. We saw him lose a few spots early on, and that was his biggest complaint. Yeah, to answer your question, Megan, why there's only two to change tyres on each side, it's against, you can't have too many people over the wall. Coats a live pit lane. But there's people there doing nothing. Oh, they're all doing nothing. Some of them are. Yeah, but it's, it, it's the way it goes. Too many people over the wall, you'll get that big penalty. I believe Game of Thrones had that same analogy. <laughs> <laughs> so did Donald Trump. <laughs> Larson, it's very non-existent. <laughs> so Larson is 23 seconds behind the leader, but Trix plans to pit again for the end of the stage. Okay. That puts Barry up to second. And yeah, that's really changed the positioning on the, on the, on the screen now, hasn't it? Oh, nice. Rain is expected to stop at your location at 2.02, so it's raining outside. I've just got one problem there. You better text David and say, can you keep the door unlocked? Because I've got the only key. And if you lock the door, I won't be able to get back in at the end of the race. This is why you need a key for the back door. I do have a key for the back door. No, wait, no, I don't. You have a key for the front door. You have a key for the commentary box. You don't have a key for the back door. Why don't I just give you the key? Well, how's that going to work? You Wait a minute, your keys are there. Yeah, but you need to take the back door key to lock that door to get in and out, and then you'll lock it, and then how am I going to get in? Because you've taken my key. Joshua, we have a back door key in the house. So what, you're going back to the box? Given I'm going in. So how I won't have a key. Joshua, the door isn't locked right now. <laughs> well, we only hope. If not, I'll just quickly run it back to you. Ah, uh, Okay. 17. It's not like I'm going across the Alps. Hannibal. Now, Chris Buscher in Vinegar. fifth place. 
Professor Peppy. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Peppy. Well, I could go grab that mint sauce of mums. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're too poor for Dr. Pepper. We have Aldi's German version, Professor Peppy. <laughs> I don't know where Professor Salty went. <laughs> Well, to be fair, we couldn't actually get to the shop to get a dog's pepper. Yeah, that's why we had that. Yeah, we had a puncture, ironically enough, on a, on yeah. a shell in the back of a Chevy. <laughs> it was a good year as well. <laughs> it was. It was the same side. So, 71 to go Do in this stage. Do we actually know what caused it? Uh, not a clue. But if you look, the wheel isn't even the wheel. The wheel's a different wheel. The Chevy wheel's getting repaired because it actually did break. Maybe it just had a little hole in it. I have not a clue. At least this time it isn't a nail. Is that true it's going slow? He was a bit cautious across the line there. Probably thinks the caution. Start of lap 161. Now, now on to 162. Do, 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 do. So 240 laps to go. It's taking a while this one, isn't it? But it's, a, it's an interesting race. It is. Especially with our little side commentary. <laughs> By side commentary, I mean just random thoughts. Yeah. Which is basically what my commentary is. Yeah, well, next weekend uh, in the MotoGP, uh, we've got a uh, lineup for a guest, hopefully a rider, will be joining us in the commentary box. Because I don't think you're here next week, are you? You're taking a week off. Probably not. I, know. I, I don't know what's going on in my own life. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. At uh, 8 o'clock, I, 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 I believe there's a clash between. Uh, the MotoGP and the NASCAR. I'm not entirely sure. We will double check. Why am I rocking backwards and forwards? I don't know. Do you know, I read a fact once that really confused me. Well, because I've got a bad team... feeling that you're here for the entire race, by the way. I'm sure you might have got that feeling as well. Yeah. Go on. My teachers once told me, okay, so animals go backwards and forwards on their cage when they're unhappy and when they're sad. I saw a leopard going backwards and forwards in a cage when I was in year six when we went to the zoo. And I was like, and I literally said out loud, are you happy or sad? <laughs> did it have food? I don't know. I think it did. I'm guessing it was happy. Mm. But it, 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 it looked curious. And you know what curiosity is it? Killed the cat. Shame it. I was looking at a cat. <laughs> Leopard. Never changes its spots. Hey. 66 to go. I love leopards. <laughs> 66 to go in stage two on lap 166. Execute order 66. No, execute order 67. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody watching and listening to us right now has gone completely nuts. So, yeah. it's one of those where we're sort of tuning it back. If you know it, you know it. Let's have a radio remix of the race so far. That's it. Just remember, with these tires, you're probably going to feel like you've got quite a bit less grip than those rain. Radio remix for this evening as the 19. That sounded so positive before of me. That's yeah. not me. What? <laughs> Being positive. It feels wrong. Before the radio remix. Yeah. yeah. It felt wrong. Being positive. Just like, no. Ooh. So, Truex leading by 6.3 seconds. Now, that sparks my interest. And uh, Bubba is going to go around the outside, try and get his... Is that to get a lap back? Yeah, Bubba's down in 16th place now. But Truex leads this race. He has yet to stop in this one. There's something as well as there's the blue flag with the white stripe, which means there's a car faster than you and there's a car slower than you. As Larson battling now as well with Keslowski, that's for position. And Suarez goes down low, cuts off the inside there as well of Larson. And this is not for position. Suarez is a few laps down. Caution, yellow. Caution's out. Why? Who knows? I can't see anyone off the track. Probably lightning again. Someone in the walls happened here. Kyle Bush smacking the wall. The eights hit the wall, but he's Hello, kept going. Ren. Oh, did Ray hurt? So Kyle, yes, name put up on yeah, Kyle Bush has hit the wall and brought out the yellow flags. 
didn't see him hit the wall there, Max, but he's... I bet he's, it was a graze. Yeah. I bet it was a tiny little graze. Here it is. Out of two. And whack. A graze. Front left. Eric Jones in 17th place is going to get the free pass on the next time around. An F1, they wouldn't have batted an eyelid of her. No. That's a bit unusual that NASCAR did. Mm. They were so quick to throw it. That was only a little, look, look. It's only a little tap. I suppose we should be happy that they're so concerned. But annoying because it's going to be another 10 minutes under yellow. Yep. Yeah. That's the way it goes, I'm afraid, half the time. Okay, so. Eastern time. It's nine a. It's nine p.m. It's nine o'clock on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it literally is. <laughs> oh, Trex picks. Can you give us any hints? Trex is here? gonna get a free pit stop. So is Berry, Logano, Bell, Busher, okay, okay. Larson, Kazaski. They're all gonna dive in, get some free stops here. May as well under the yellow flag. It makes the most logical sense. Let's throw it down to Fox. And now they're all going to pit together because Kyle's going to have to pit with them. That's exactly right. Not exactly what Cliff Daniels needed on this one-stop uh, strategy he had going on. And you just you, you just never know. You never know when those cautions are going to fall, and you just have to you just have to pick a strategy. And that's that's crew chief Cliff Daniels right there. And, and the way that this works with the amount of people that you can bring, the crew chief usually has to do something, or one of the engineers, and Cliff Daniels on it. Well, I'll tell you, that is how intense he is as a crew chief, but he knows how important his pit stop is. You can get him done on pit road, easier than you can do it on the racetrack. Jamie. Joey Logano comes in from third, having a great night so far. A little tight center, turns fine on throttle, gets loose off throttle. Air pressure adjustment in fourth. The 19 of Martin Truex Jr., only driver I've heard tonight who has been happy start to finish, Regan. Tight the four car, speed Josh Berry, took off way too tight on that green flag after that green flag pit stop, but it got better as he ran. He liked it at the end. The 20 car of Christopher Bell is loose in and loose off of the corners. He wants an adjustment for that. And we've got a we've got a uh, pit road speeding for Ty Gibbs. He has been sent to the rear for speeding on pit road. Taking off tight. What? Contact with Bubba Wallace right here as Truex tried to leave. So Eric Jones, we now understand with that free pass, has jumped into the lead of the race. He decided to stay out and take it. Eric Jones now pits. So still under the yellow here as racing continues on. And a yellow flag to put the pace car out and just get a few more into position. So it's our fourth caution of the night, this one. Finally having some interesting runarounds. <laughs> You're okay, Megan. Mm. <laughs> if you can't, I know we're not, I am. Megan has now got her hand on her face and breathing heavily into the microphone. Do you want to be relieved at this point? And you can go, I can handle another 20 minutes or so until Matthew gets here. Come. Why? Don't be leaving you on your own. <laughs> it really is all night long here. Oh, Ryan Priest to the rear for speeding as well. So he's been done out. And now, look, they're reforming the field. Yay. So they are changing over a little bit more. So how long have we been on air? Two hours, 34 minutes. Mm. <laughs> You've only been in the box for an hour and 35, though. <laughs> Not too late. It is 2.05 a.m. though, however. Oh, Megan, I've got good news. You can go in now. Why? <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> A little bit of an April Fool's there for you. That's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> that I would almost believe you with if this box was on fire. <laughs> So, uh, initial for Kyle Bush has brought out the yellow midway through stage two here. We wait to see what's happening. Megan is falling asleep on the show, literally in the commentary box right now. Let's fight sleep. How long have you been awake? Eight, which is basically since the clocks went back seven. Right, okay. Forward. Yeah, but I really need to crack my neck. That really hurt. It sounded like it hurt. I don't know if I picked up on the mics. So if it did, I'm sorry. It's oh. all my ears. So, 
Uh, tracks from Logano, Berry, Bell, top five. Yeah. Usher, top five. Megan? Oh, what the hell? Megan's just checking my neck now for some reason. It's no, fine. I'm getting fluid out of it. I'm fine. Rule one, when you crack your neck, you've got to massage it downwards and upwards because that gets the fluid out of it so you don't have to crack it as much. Okay. That's how I fix my neck. Well, pizza from Papa. That's what it is at the moment. Not Papa John's, Papa Jones. Let's go over too far. No, I didn't. My color. Ah, there we go. That's much better. <laughs> bush light. Did you see any of those bush lights out there? I thought you gave that sport up too. Actually, I did see a lot of bush I lights. I bet you did. I saw a couple, of, a few cold ones, and man, it looked tasty. All right, so there's the Ford Performance Cam on board Noah Gregson. He's up to 12th place. SHR is having a good night. They needed one. Yeah, the four's been good uh, with Josh Berry. Noah's been just right in there grinding. Well, can Kyle Larson pass some cars here? Get back up through them and put the pressure on Truex. Logano, man, talk about that. Exactly what they needed, Clint. And this is when you come to a racetrack that you expect to run good. Yep, and here we go. Coming to the green flag, the pace car's coming in, and the Toyota owner's 400 will restart late throw in the yellow fine throw in the green for some reason on our monitors over here the yellow has been brought in truex will lead into the restart berry logano logano berry on the choose line bell busher larson hamlin kozlowski elliott byron up to 10th and they're not racing yet but the rear of the field aren't there they're into the geico restart zone now though stage two resumes we're racing once more in richmond Good restart from Truex, and it's actually Logano and Berry battling for second position. Logano on the out line, Berry almost hits him up, it's four wide further back. Bad news there from Gilliland, he's down into 19th position, Gibson 20th, and Blaney's been pushed out in the midfield as well. Ooh. Good restart, that. Very actually, good. Logano and Berry battling together nicely. It's a very good restart. No, it's not working. Nah. Through turn two and three we go. Berry on that low line. He commands second position away from Logano. And here comes Larson. He's going on the inside now to get ahead of Christopher Bell. And this is over fourth, and Larson should get it through. And Hamlet's going to come up and attack now as well. So Hamlet's going to have the attack back on the inside line. You've got 20 more laps, Megan. Then you can disappear if you want to at halfway. I don't want to have to leave you on your own. No, but we better... Oh, and a little touch of the wall there for Bell. Surprise, they didn't throw a caution for that one, actually. There's been so trigger-happy today. They really have. Up the inside comes Hamlin. He's going for it. Gets back on the Ew. power, power, power. Gregson down to 11th now. He's dropped back massively. And Bell's going to lose out here to Hamlin quite easily and does so. So uh, Hamlin moves up into fifth position. Bell down into sixth. Truex leads this race. Gilliland is boring. Gilliland. Yeah, down into 20th position after running inside the top five for most of the race. He moved down a lot. Considering, Megan, that you're a commentator and you're barely talking, I think you're pretty much wiped now on this one. Mm. Let's have a look at the restart. And we're looking at... Mm. Oh, big twitch from Blaney from the back of uh, Austin Sindrick. So Sindrick touched the back of Blaney. That's why Blaney went out wide. Oh, he got a second tap as well. That's not nice. Off of the 77 of Carson Hossifer. That's not nice. <laughs> Blaney, I know he's having a, a bully as well with Chris Busher. Bubba. Yeah. Sorry, you got bad speed. We're in good shape. Oh, no doubt. You're still going to be the bad guy on Monday. <laughs> Always. Are you having a bully day? I'm having a bully day. <laughs> still going to be the bad guy on Monday. That's Bubba Wallace, all right. It's Monday. Did you hear know when Talladega is, by the way? No. My birthday. Talladega's on my birthday. Well, that's not all actually for your birthday. Yeah, but we're, I'm covering Long Beach. So I miss, I miss Talladega 1, but I get Talladega 2 later on in the year, which is when Talladega Nights is actually set, later on in the year. Yeah, that's fine. And I presume you want uh, to be in that one. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just about. Okay. Not much, but... Okay. Trixum, uh, no, I might want to be on that one, I don't know. Say again? 
I might want to be on that one, I don't know. <laughs> Now we're seeing Busher around the outside as well. Now Ross Chastain making the moves, battling with Eric Jones over 15th and 16th place respectively through the first couple of corners and making a nice getaway between the two. It's what we like to see here. NASCAR delivering us a proper, proper race. And Eric Jones keeping it in. We're approaching half distance though. It's alarming me because it's going to be about 1 hour 45. That means logic dictates another hour 45. Which takes us to what? 3 hours 30? Mm -hmm. mm. 145 plus 145. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 3.30. Uh. So we have another possible 2 hours to go. Mm. <laughs> this is going to be a long one for me. That's about 4.30 a.m. I would finish. Again, that's two nights running. I get, I get to bed at 4.30. That's not good. No, it's not. As we see, the 77 Hospital on the inside line, trying to have an attack back. Mm. 84 minutes remaining. Oh, OK, so... Yeah, around about three and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. 42 to go in this stage, but 10 to go until we hit lap 200. Truex leads the way from Barry Logano, Larson Hamlin. Megan, are you going to be able to get to the from the commentary box to the house? Mm -mm. Are you going to sleep here? Mm. <laughs> I can't carry you in when the race is over, Megan. I'm going to have to bring in the laptops. <laughs> Okay, uh, we've gone side by side on the Fox coverage now, if you wanted to know as well, if you're watching along with us in the States. Truex now has a second to Berry, Lagana coming in there too. Nice to, this, is, this is just a progression of how sleepy Megan actually gets as the race goes on. I've never seen you this tired ever in a race. A little bit of smoke up there as well. Trick still having... See, I could have practically done this on my own. You could have gone in 15 laps ago. Mm -mm. You'd be lonely. I'm more lonely now. and You're sat right next to me. I've got all our friends watching us wow, that's and deep. listening in. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right here. You're not here. <laughs> now you're working up. Humour helps. <laughs> Okay, two eggs leads uh, lap 193. He's got 1.1 seconds now. You want me to stay awake? To Josh show Berry. me a comedy show. Well, there's the 41 diving up the inside as well. So Ryan Michael Priest. McIntyre. That's right. That'll keep me awake. Akka, lack and gacka. Just for a sponge joke. <laughs> what? Thank <laughs> you. Megan has completely lost <laughs> it. Huh? Are you all right? What is going on with you? I'm thinking of Michael McIntyre <laughs> I've never seen Megan like this ever in the commentary box. Ever. In the entirety of time. No idea. Anyway, side by side. 41's having a move. So that's another position. So that's Michael McDowell passing Ryan Priest further back in the field. Both are lapped down, unfortunately. In fact... 25 down is a lap down. So Nemechek, Sindrick, Smith, Henrik, Dylan, Hosovar, Blaney, McDowell, Priest, Lejour, uh, Grala, and Haley out there. Interesting enough, Megan, we're coming up on half distance. Not one car has retired from the race. That's very unusual. And especially considering we started in the rain. Good. Yeah. Track's dried out wonderfully as well on dry tyres now. He's led 42 laps. It's gone by quick, hasn't it? Considering that, what was it, 139's been led by... Larson. Oh, hey, Carl Larson. So you're on, you're on it. You're more on than me. Barry's coming in there for somewhere nice as well, so he's still got the traction. See, it's made me think of Michael McIntyre jokes. That livens me up. With two laps, you can leave. The swan joke is what did it. In oh, my yeah. mind. Oh, yeah, the swan jokes. <laughs> that's what caused my uncontrollable laughter. <laughs> Kozlowski's just breaking in on the top 10. He's in 11th place. Uh, five tenths back to Tyler Reddick. So, well, he'll know about. I've missed this. <laughs> I really have missed this screen. I've had to have that timing screen for seven weeks. 
and it's been frustrating. Yeah, this, this is this is all I need. This makes you happy. Well, it's where I stand. So it's just alongside me in the, in the iris. And I hope Kellyanne knows now none of us can beat. <laughs> Two hundred laps complete. Two hundred laps to go. At one hour forty-two minutes and fifty-three seconds, we are at halfway in the Toyota Owners 400. You can go. I am telling Go. Check again. There's 30, are you going to complete stage two? Is that where you're going? Check. I'm checking Matthew. I messaged him 13 minutes ago. He hasn't seen it yet. Double text. I'll double text. The last stage is going to be 130 laps. Sorry, 170 laps. Well, I have no idea what Megan's thinking. It's crank it up, by the way. That's why we're talking. Durex, 1.5 to Berry. <laughs> Megan, go. Next, your eyes have gone red. You've got now puffy eyes. And your cheeks have gone. Go, go to sleep. I don't want to have to leave you on your own. Or is that you don't want to walk through that comedy Oh, no, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I've never buff been bothered by a bat gun. Oh, okay. So I just don't want to have to leave you on your own. I'm fine. But then you'd have to commentate all on your own with no one to joke with. Yeah, here's, here's some keys. I don't know what keys. they are. Sure, <laughs> 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 1.3 seconds to Josh Berry at the moment. I uh, know we keep repeating ourselves, but uh, there's not much happening in stage two. Stage two very much becoming the the normal of the podcast. Uh, nothing much happens. We had a caution. Three cautions so far, officially. Uh, one for the competition. One for... And he's doing the one for the back as well. In fact, you can see it for yourself, actually, if I press button. Anyway. This is the screen that we have up here in the commentary box that tells us all that information. And you can see where we've had the yellows and where we've had the greens and what positions we've had and what stages we've had and what different positions throughout the race have been. But still, 26 laps to go in this race so far. Officially, Megan, we've been on... Red flag was out for 2 minutes and 15 seconds. So actually, it's been 1 hour, 47 minutes and 30 seconds. It's a long time. It is. Larry, the corner, not too happy with it at the moment. And that was Truex, who's not happy with the car at the moment, so he's still having some issues out there, which I'm surprised about. Thought there might be a little bit of a change between them, but he's just struggling a time and time again. 1.3 seconds still, though. In terms of everyone on the lead lap, uh, Steinhaus and Burton have now been lapped, so only 22 of the 36 cars that are running this event have been are on the lead lap. Everybody else, 23 down, has been lapped. And has no chance of winning. Indeed. Well, they might. one of them might get a, a stage break, which means uh, they'll uh, get, if there's a caution come out, they'll get a, 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 a freebie, which in this case would be Steinhaus, because he's uh, the last one on a lap down in 23rd position. So he'll get the free pass on the order as well. Hmm. If there's a caution that comes out. 23 to go in stage two here of the Toyota Owners 400 for the NASCAR Cup Series at Richmond. Breaks might be six minutes, but it seems like they're getting longer and longer. They probably are. Sadly so. So let's have a look, sis, and see if anyone's improving. Well, actually, we've now got the case where Justin Haley and Corey LeJour are now actually two laps down to the rest of the field. Hmm. And it's side by side on Fox's coverage as well, so we're, they were still being able to talk. Uh, and you'll be able to see the same pictures that me and Megan are up here in the commentary box where Megan actually looks up for the keys. Why don't you just focus on the keys? The keys. Right, Truex by one point. Uh, Berry, Berry, Berry. Berry gets Logano. That changed over. I was going to say Truex to Logano. Then Berry took over. So, a bit of a timing glitch on that side. 
So, yeah, best lap for Truex, by the way, was uh, lap 52. But for Barry, it was best lap 179. So, sadly, this second stage of 20 to go is being the traditional NASCAR stage two of the lull period. Stage three, though, everything always goes incredibly nuts and goes incredibly wrong because everyone starts to push for the last 170 laps or so. Actually, looking at it, we've got 19 to go. Or, 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 actually, yeah. Megan, is it actually going to be 160 laps to the last stage? Look, 19 to go. Now, third, yeah, that's going to take it. It's going to be 160, isn't it, the last stage? Mm. Yeah, so it's 10 less than we thought. So they've took 10 from stage one and, and removed it from stage three. Yeah, because stage one was supposed to be 60 laps, but it turned out to be 70 laps. And now this one's going to be less and longer than it was. Interesting. So they've swapped the two stages around. I was wondering why they were doing that. It's probably why, because they realised it'd be like 200, 200 across the deck, yeah. Are you sure you don't want to go in? You've been nothing for the past 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, you are worse now than when you were having seven glasses of red wine before joining us at the British Grand Prix in 2021. It wasn't seven. How many was it? Six and an espresso martini and something else. I can't remember what. I want to say old fashioned. Yeah. And then you came into the coverage box of the British Grand Prix. Yeah. How was that? Intriguing. Long day, that one. It's like a science experiment. <laughs> it was hot in here as well. Wasn't it? That hit True. you. It was <laughs> very, <laughs> very hot weather. Hit you like a ton of bricks. It was hilarious. Watching that race back. You can see, see you slowly getting worse and worse and worse. <laughs> hey, look, I found a match in the key. Well done, Megan. So proud of yourself. So Bob Podcast <gasps> says, with that caution for Bush, don't really know what is the best strategy. Will Larson uh, split the last stage in half two? So 160, 80 laps each. That's tight. And fuel windows and tyres. 80 laps a piece for pit stops. That's that's more likely, actually, that he'd do that. 40 to go. To be fair, that is more more the likelihood that he'll take it as Josh Berry makes a pass on the inside line, getting ahead of the 16 of Ty Dillon. And is that for position? He's currently in second, but no, it's not. It's a lapped car, because Berry's in second, Josh. Come on. Even I'm losing track of it now up in the box. Barry's winning in second place and has been all day. Okay. <laughs> go on. 30 to go in stage two. So, yeah, it's going to be the order. Oh, Logano. And this is Logano trying to pass the 16 now as well. Oh, as I said, Tyden, just to keep in touch with Barry. Gap between them is... Uh, oh, half a second, Megan. It's half a second between Logano and Berry. Hmm. And then it's half a second between Logano and Kyle Larson as well. So they've closed up. In fact, Logano's right at the back of Berry. It was two tenths at the line. Berry's been held up massively by lap traffic. And Logano is coming to fight back hard. 11 to go. Truex is going to win another stage at this rate. Will we end up to green? That would be nice. Was that happening? Getting no, it's uh, it's uh, guess who again? <laughs> getting lapped, Daniel Suarez. Mm. Where is Suarez in this race? Twentieth place. not so. He's in twentieth place on the board. So that's another lap on the board for him, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Corey the Joe and Justin Haley are two laps down from our control monitors here, up in the comments box. That's the uh, order we've got there. And the difference between them. Nine to go in stage two. And then we'll go to the commercials and uh, everything else in the stage break. And then we'll reorder for stage three, which will be 160 laps. Most likely we'll see 148 of them. Probably. As uh, they come into it. Boma is nice car to get that with it. That's remaining in the stage. Going to be tight if he's lapped. Bowman now lapped. He was running second for most of this race. Keys are fun. <laughs> yeah, they are. Danny Hamlin. Keeping it together and pushing it up towards the wall. So, 
again, having some more pace and some more fun as we ride on board uh, with the Toyota now as well of Ross Chastain. No, that's the, that's the Chevy. So what, which one are we on with here? It's Lee and Evan. It's Danny Hamlin. I saw the one and assumed, but it's not. It's Danny Hamlin in the 11. Yeah. Numbers on the inside of the car are not clear to me. No, they're not. They are, yeah, but it, now when I look down here on the Fox coverage, it tells us Danny Hamlin. 52 career wins from Ventress. Chesterfield. Ventress. It's his 20th year in the Cup Series, you know. Danny Hamlin? Yeah. Ventress. Yes, from last time out. To me, it's Ventress. You can go ahead of stage three. You're not staying here for stage three. You you cannot stay for the whole race. But why? Are you going to stay here for the whole race? I don't want to leave you on your own. Megs, I will be fine. Matthew will be here in well stage three. Well, that's so much of a race. 160 laps. Mm. You're just going to stay for everything now, aren't you? I don't want to. I don't want to sleep. Then go to bed. I don't want to leave you on my own. On your own. There's five my laps to go in stage two. need to sleep. Is outweighed by my need to be a good sister. <laughs> like, there's being a good sister, and then there's be, being like idiotic when I'm dead. Leave. Have you ever known me to be completely sane? No, but I'm telling you, you need sleep. Oh, for God's sake. You don't need it. I'm different to you. This is my job, this isn't your job. Mm. <laughs> Look. I think Megan deserves some sort of award for this evening. Yes. Hi. So there's Bowman getting his lap back. He's trying to get ahead of Truex. So and now Bowman's really going to defend here. He can't be lapped by Truex. He's just had a fight back, remember? And Bowman and Truex are side by side. And this is effectively a battle for position because if Bowman goes a lap down to Truex, it costs him massively for the race. So that's why he's fighting so hard with three to go. It will cost him. Yeah, he can't be lapped. If he's lapped. He's, his race is done. He cannot be lapped here. Let's call it done already. Oh, Bowman's on the outside of the Exeter 2. Truex, I, if I was Truex, I'd leave him. He's got 1.3 seconds to bury, and Truex is risking it now. On the inside at 3 and 4, Bowman keeps it through. None of his contact with him. It's 2 to go. Now it's 1 to go at the line. So it's white flight They're for stage close. 2. I, oh, come on, Truex. Martin, just back off. Don't pass. Oh, he's got the inside exit too. Bowman might just hang on here. Truex is going to win the stage, but will Bowman go a lap down? That's the question. They're side by side out three and four. So Truex gets the stage. Is Bowman lapped or not? Bowman holds on. Green checkered flag for stage two complete. Martin Truex Jr. wins stage two, gets another point. The caution comes out. But Bowman kept on the lead lap. There's another problem. What's the other problem? The fact that I've just seen underneath Bowman's car the same thing I've been seeing underneath Wallace's car. Yeah. Blue. That's a Chevy compared to a Toyota. So two of the same things. They both have it. Mm. So let's go through the order. It's Truex Jr. who's won stage two from Berry, Logano, Larson, Hamlin in the top five. Bell, Busher, Wallace, Byron and Reddick, the top 10. Keslowski, Gregson, Elliot, Jones, Chastain, Bush, Briscoe, Gibbs, Bowman, Suarez, Dillon, Gilliland, Sindrick and John Hunt, Nemechek at 24th. Then it's Smith, Blaney, Dillon, Steinhaus Jr., Hosevar, Hemrick, McDowell, Prius, uh, Kazgrala, Corey LeJour, Hasen Burton, Justin Haley, down in 36th place. The last three of those names, LeJour, Burton and Haley, are... Two laps down, and everyone. Oh, Bowman now showing the lap down. So maybe he didn't get it. <laughs> it just didn't change over. Right. Maybe. Are you off now? You've got to go. You're tired. Go. Mm. Megs, for the next 10 minutes or so, it's going to be commercials, and then we'll be going green. Exactly. You'll need someone to talk to. I'm fine. I'd much rather you disappear and go to bed because you need sleep. Chat, agree with me here. I feel Megan has, needs to go to bed. Go. Megs, you, if you want, you can sit in my chair in my room and watch the end of the race. No, I just fall asleep. Then go to bed then. And you can watch the race ending tomorrow. I'm more concerned about you being on your own. I'm completely fine. 
I've been in my room in the comment box before, you know. I know. No one's in here at night with me in the comment box. I know. Matthew will be here soon in the comment box. In fact, no. <laughs> I thought that would be him buzzing. Maybe it will be in a minute. We'll see. Because for him it was 9.30. One. Yeah, 9.31. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. I just realised I, I said go to sleep, but we're now both of them on two mics. Yay. <laughs> That's what I have a problem with wearing a headset, mate. Go to go on, go to bed. Go on. You need those. No, I don't. Hopefully, if he's followed my instructions, he has not locked my door. Right. Okay. Well, then, Megan, what have you made of the race? As you finally, you get to go. I made it two hours in. Well done. I'm gonna wait until the two hours. You've already technically been in two hours. You joined two minutes for the green. I don't care. Yeah, but they're gonna come back from break, so that's. I found it. Interesting. Mm. Very interesting. That's all my mind can think of right now. Well, thank you, Megan. They're back from break. You can now go to bed. Thank you. Good night, Megan. Bye bye. Okay. And on that note, she'll leave the box. Let's hand it over to Fox as we get to stage Next three. Sunday at 4 Eastern on Fox. Here at Richmond Raceway, we're two stages in to the Toyota Owners 400. Martin Truex Jr. picks up the stage win over Josh Berry. And how close was it with Alex Bowman? Here they are at the line. There is the photo showing that Bowman was indeed the first car one lap down, so he will get the wave around. But as Clint pointed out, have to pit with the lap down cars and start at the tail end of the field. Little cosmetic surgery to the safer barrier there. As we get ready for pit stops between stages two and three, Martin Truex Jr. will lead them in. Here's Jamie. And Joey Logano on the radio said, not too bad on the long haul, just fires off too tight and stays too tight for about 30 laps. They want to free it up just a bit. The 19 said he's still happy. Little tight firing off, so an air pressure adjustment for Martin Truex Jr. Just picked up his first stage win of the season, Regan. Josh Berry in the four car felt like he might have hurt his right rear tire just a little bit too much early in that run. Needs some right rear grip, but does not want to affect the center turn of his car. And for Kyle Larson, the only issue right now is the fact that he doesn't have the clean air. Said there was a slight balance shift because of that. Truex is going to beat Larson on pit road. Yeah, but Larson gained a couple right there. Those are very pivotal spots. Hard to come by. Number one pit stall, Kevin, you told us. Up one for Josh Berry, who dropped four spots on pit road. Martin Truex Jr., stage winner. And Megan has now uh, left the commentary box, finally, because, let's face it, she's done a, a miracle job. We are two hours into this one, and uh, we will hopefully be joined in stage three by Matthew Ends, but we're fine at the moment. Uh, as everyone's enjoying their Easter Sunday. As we have Truex and Bowman Bell as the order rejigs itself here for the Toyota Owners 400. 164 laps to go in this one. So it was 170 laps when we went to the yellow. And then effectively 160 is going to be this last stage as well because we'll go green soon and then we'll all go from there. Briscoe. Did he just come into the pit lane? Several cars have darted through, according to our monitors. Disappointment from Todd Gilliland. He's dropped up to 23rd position, actually, because he was running in 26th place. We just dropped up three places from where I last saw him on the monitor. As the field, once again, will continue through. It's lap 237 of 400 here, when the final stage... 164 laps to go. Megan is in and in her room. So she is uh, done for the day. Thank you, Megan. And the racing will continue shortly. And we'll hand back over to Fox, obviously. They'll do some pit stop signalings as well and get it all ready to get going here on Easter Sunday. And now it's Easter Monday here in the UK. Another bank holiday to get through. Hopefully everyone's enjoyed their Easter weekend as well. It's been a bit of a weird one for uh, me and Megan up here in the comms box. But uh, still always nice to be in the commentary and enjoying everything. 
And fingers crossed as well, we're going to have a normal run in to the end of this race. But stage one was semi exciting. Stage two was a bit of a snooze fest, I suppose. It, it sent Megan to sleep. Stage three is where the fun begins. Let's cross back over there and join the team at Fox Sports as we begin to get ready for pit stops and get ready for the green flag to come out here for the third and final stage. Let's hand it back over. Back here in the race day studio, Shannon and Jamie coming into this race. All the talk was about Joe Gibbs Racing and its drivers currently have three in the top five. What have you seen out of that team? Yeah, well, they didn't qualify well. It was all about Hendrick Motorsports and qualifying, uh, but it's been a steady climb to the front for all those guys. And Christopher Bell is the one that I have had my eye on. Qualified all the way back in 29th, and you see it was pretty much a steady climb. The one dip you see there around lap 130 is when they broke the second stage down into two stops versus Kyle Larson uh, doing it just in one, and it paid big dividends for them. Uh, got all the way up. He's going to restart fifth right now, guys. Of course, Martin Truex Jr. out front. We'll send it back to you, Mike, for stage three. Thanks, Shannon. 238 laps complete. 162 to go. Uh, this final stage, 10 laps longer than stage two. And the two drivers that combined have led 230 of the 239 laps are going to start 1-2. Well, there's a few things that are going to play out here. One, strategy. What, yes. What's going to be the preferred strategy? And I think uh, under, that, under that caution, uh, qualifying definitely took effect with Josh Berry's pit stall and losing a few spots. Tonight's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. We're getting ready to hit the green flag. Stage three is about to begin. Truex on the low line, Larson on the high. 160 laps to go, 240 of 400. The final stage, it's green flag. And away we go once more here in Richmond. Good restart from Truex. He keeps it down low. Three wide is one. Hamlin trying to get back into it. Four wide further back as Bowman, McDowell, and Gregson getting him on there for 13th position. Getting sent out wide. That looks like Ross Chastain making it four. But Truex has the lead of the race in the Toyota. Logano taking round the outside. Gets third position from Hamlin. Exeter two and three. Cross the line into four. And now we have it. Lap one complete. Truex, Larson, Logano, Hamlin, Bell. Top five. Nice, smooth restart procedures. This is turning into a little bit of a... a, a, a well, I don't want to say it, but give and take. A fun race here. Logano... Holding that outside line, a little bit of a twitch, drifting ever so slightly. Hamlin trying to come down low. Logano shuts that door, doesn't want to play any difference between them. Who can blame them, really? You don't want to have that. But the door mirror to door mirror. Logano on the outside line, side by side. Hamlin backs off, easy, it's into three and four. Doesn't want to take too much positioning. Matthew Owens will join us shortly as well for stage three. Up here in the commentary box on US Seren and JB Motorsports. So perfect timing as Megan's left us. Logano just side by side now. And they're, if they're not careful, Logano and Hamlin are going to have an almighty wreck on the back stretch. It's a short track. It's, a, it's sort of a medium track, this one. Still classifies as short, but it's still quite close. As Brad Keselowski involved. Now we're seeing Chase Elliott in a battle. Elliot, where is Elliot? Elliot in, oh, he's in a battle with, I can't tell. I cannot tell because they're side by side. It looks like the 10 to me, so it's the nine and 10 battling it out together. So that is going down the order. So it's Chase Elliot, but that 10 is gonna be Noah Gregson, who's out of position. There we go, Elliot in nine, Noah Gregson 10. So it's 12th and 13th position. There we have it finally on the timing tower. It's a while to update every now and then, but we get uh, into the order towards the end of it. Hello to Christian, who uh, an hour ago said hi to everyone. Hi, hello, welcome. As we continue to push here, and going up wide was Gregson. Elliot slips through on the inside line. A little bit of a kiss there. Coming through turn two, into three and four just to have that inside line, a better position for the runnings. It's a full-on position, full-on fight. 
exactly how you liked it. See it? To be fair, that's how you do it in these type of races these days. You continue to push, you continue to find and play with the factors and see what happens and see where it comes across. Ty Gibbs at 21 years old from Charlotte, North Carolina. He was the 2023 Cup Series Rookie of the Year. Noah Gregson now as well. 13 Xfinity Series victories. Really came into it. Race headlines. Race started on wet weather tyres. Larson was the stage one winner. Trex was the stage two winner. To give you some information there. Here's Truex now leading this race, the 43-year-old from Mayetta in New Jersey, the 2017 Cup Series champion. Watching on and leading this race after winning stage two, he's got Kyle Larson directly behind him in one stage one. These two have dominated the proceedings here today for the Toyota Owners 400. They've kept it together and it's been that smooth a day. Burton, Haley and Lejaw still two laps down on the overall field. They have yet to change that positioning between them. And it's uh, getting quite entertaining, this one, as there was Bubba Wallace, who, for a time, looked strong in this race and had the lead, but he's dropped down. He started fifth, then to stage one, he was second. Stage two was eighth, nine, stage three. He's currently fought his way back up into sixth position. But... What exactly the strategy is going to be, we don't know. Splitting in half in 80-80 run, that's a, a possibility with it being 160 when we went green. Could be a, a it could be a 85-85 uh, run, but there's a lot to go and a lot to tick down here in this race. 147 to go. Lap 253 now on the board as we will continue to run here. On board with Denny Hamlin. Start 11th. Stage 1, he was 11th. Currently runs in 4th position. I'll tell you more on Hamlin in a second when he flies upon our monitors here. Yeah, Hamlin. Stage 1 was 11th. Stage 2 was 5th. Currently now running in 4th position. Of course, he starts 11th. Eric Jones starts at 27th. 31st in Stage 1. 14th Stage 2. Now 15th as well. Pretty much having an average race for the 43, and he got the free pass last time. Right? Bowman, two, back on the lead lap, past Michael McDowell. So Bowman now just stays in, but we saw the TV pictures. It was half an inch across the line, a photo finish between him and Truex to determine who crossed that line first. Truex did put the lap on Bowman, unfortunately, so Bowman did get the free pass, but lost out a little bit as well. That really hurt Daniel Suarez, who was hoping for that free pass to get back into the lead lap. He and I have to go through at this rate for the uh, racing as well to get back in. Let's get some information quickly. I smelled the tires and I heard the engines roaring by. I was done. Yeah, he, he just asked me the other day, do you still have your season tickets on there? I sure do. I love that the Toyota Owners 400 is here at Richmond because I have been driving with Toyota now for better part of 15 years. But now the manufacturer that sponsored us is now the head sponsor here of this race. In my home track, it just means a little bit more. Can Steady. Denny Hamlin win at home? Mary Lou, his mum watching on and is here tonight cheering on her boy. He's running in fourth place at the moment. Denny Hamlin's won. He, he's had the pole here three times. He's won here four times. 18 top fives, 22 top tens. Best, of course, the first four times, but he has never DNF'd here in his NASCAR Cup Series career as Denny Hamlin. Not one time as he had a DNF. It is quite unbelievable. Now, in terms of cautions, uh, the last race we had here was three, uh, and we've had four tonight, so already one more. But one of those was a competition, so does it count? Ah, yes, no, yes, no. Michael McDowell enters the pit lane as well now. Let's go down to Larry Mack. 60 to go. If you're going to just split the stage in half, you're going to spit, sp pit somewhere around lap 315 to 320. 
If you're going to split it into thirds, the next pit stop will come somewhere around lap 285 to 290, and then again with 60 to go. So I still think we might see some split strategies, but the one thing about the final stage, it has to be right. You don't get a second chance. Thanks very much to Larry Mack. And that's the case as well. It has to be pitch perfect. And he got stage two to practice it as well. Similar distances across the two. There's no third times a charm. You get it wrong, you will suffer the consequences. And Kyle Larson can feel that one coming into it as well. Second at the moment, one stage one. Fourth in stage two. Now second here at the moment, just being off and on the pace. Can't tell it's a vein or some all the ink stamp. You know. Coming in. Jamie Little. They unloaded yesterday. It's really made that car darty. But he said the biggest problem right now is he's just too tight. They've made some gains on it, but hopefully he can keep it here. Mikey's never finished in the top ten at Richmond. Thanks, Jamie. Kyle Larson here, he had the pole position, uh, as I said. He was never finished in the top 10 here. Briscoe has it, Burton has it, Sindrick, Ty Dillon, Todd Gilliland, Gregson, Grala, Haley, Hosevar, Corey LeJour, Nemechek, Reddick, Smith, and Bubba Wallace. Well, there must be Bubba Wallace on about there, because he's down in sixth position. He's never finished inside the top 10 before here at uh, Richmond in, the, in this specific race as well. As around the outside, Hamlin making some more lap traffic coming through. And now he sets off after the Garner. That was lap traffic to the 20 as well of Christopher Bell, who was coming into it. And I believe just setting up is Matthew Owens, who's uh, joined the box, so he'll get set up and uh, get ready to join us on this one. 133 laps to go. About 267 at the moment as Hamlin again goes defensive and gets la gets re-taken. So his tyres starting to go a little bit. And it's quite annoying actually, I bet, for Hamlin at the moment, who is fifth position, but Truex is the lead car and the lead Toyota. As uh, now ready and set to go, and hopefully I'll just select him on the monitor and then I'll bring him up on the main camera screen here. Is, uh, joining us now on the commentary team, I'm delighted to welcome in, if I can actually find him, where is it? Here he is. That's me. There he is. It's Matthew Owens. Hello, Matthew. How are you doing? Oh, we can't hear you. Me. We'll wait for his mic to come in. A bit of a bump tap behind as well. As Truex leads by second now to Larson. And then we get uh, Logano, Bell, Hamden top five. Josh Berry in P7, very impressive from him. Four tenths now behind yeah. to that. And I think, uh, give us a thumbs up when you're ready, Matthew. He gets all sorted. Oh, go on. Hello, Matthew. How are you? Hello. Can indeed. Hello. Oh, very good. Hello, everybody. It was a slight echo. It was a slight echo. Uh, okay, we're getting a lot of feedback there on uh, Matthew's side. I can hear myself twice on that one as well, so uh, we'll let Matthew get that sorted uh, in a second. Give us a thumbs up when you're ready. As uh, Mark Trix, as you see here, leading 116 laps out of this running order at the moment. Suarez, by the way, Still running in 20th place. Uh, after he He's now, if we get a caution, the next one to get the free pass. He did spin out in stage one, and he's been playing catch-up ever since in this race. So we're coming up to when uh, Larry Mack said about a possibility of having another pit stop. Round about lap 282 to 285, if they want to come in and split the stage. So it's lap 272 now. Keep an eye out for getting the early goers and try and bank them out for some pace car laps. Truex leads 1.1 now, but this free gap between him and Larson. So Larson can start reeling him in, and now Truex is going to have a lot of time here behind more lapped cars, because it's Kaz Grala, Henry, Daniel Henry, Ty Dillon, Ricky Stiles, they're all coming into that little 
position on the monitors as they'll attack again down the low. 126 laps to go then. In stage three, Truex leads this one from Larson and Logan. Let's see what happens as we approach possible pit stops. Well, you can hear me now. I can. Hello, how are you? Yes, all sorted. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. And happy Easter, one and all. Happy Easter to you as well. Did you have a good uh, luncheon? Yes, all uh, all has gone well, and uh, here we are with what is it now? A hundred and twenty-five laps to go. Um, I have tried to keep up from afar. I know we did start in the wet, um, and at the risk of you know coming in totally blind here, and you have already covered over half of this race. What did you think about NASCAR in the wet on an oval? I was very much under the assumption that we would have multiple yellows, especially it was it was more water than at North Wilkesboro last year when we last had the tyres. It was more water on the track there. They delayed the start a little bit. I was like, are we actually going to get this one going? And it's like, they went out there on the wet tyres and it worked. So that was a brilliant uh, sight to see. And then about lap 30, they all caught us out because they put the yellow flag out. And then they told it was a, it, very late. It was the competition caution. And then they put the red flag out and stopped the race for two minutes while they changed from the wet tyres to the dry tyres because they didn't want anyone to refuel and do anything like that. And then we went back to green. Then we had a couple of cautions outside that. I think, what, four in total, according to the monitor. So, yeah, it, it went well. And... Um, it dried out quite quickly, actually, and then it was, it's was it been a good race. And Megan was alongside me for the first two hours. Uh, she fell asleep, she was falling asleep, bless her, in the last 20 minutes of that one, though. She, she, was, she was out of it uh, completely, because it's 2.53 a.m. here in the U.K. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, um, first off, let me just start, before I get into anything else, thanking you. Uh, oh, as always, uh, for putting in the hard yards here uh, for us on USRN and, of course, on the YouTube channel as well for very late hours racing for you. Um, I have some thoughts on this race being held on this night. More on that coming up. But just from what we were talking about, starting on the wet weather tires and so forth and so on... Um, now that with it being the first time we'd ever done it in a points paying event you can understand a competition caution and nascar declaring the track you know dry versus damp or wet or whatever you have and not having you know live competitive pit stops um because it, it is a safety issue and we're still very new yeah. on this running on ovals in the wet thing but i think from what we've seen tonight and North Wilkesboro last year, and if it, it, we saw it in a truck race at Martinsville last year as well, hopefully as we do it more, it will become a little quote-unquote normal in the fact of we don't have to throw a caution out for everyone to come in and change tires. Uh, NASCAR is still kind of putting it together as we go because it's still so new doing this, but hopefully as we go on we can start getting to <laughs> what what normal <laughs> racing series do in the wet and just have teams and drivers make the decision themselves on when to come in for slicks and how long to stay out on wet weather tires. I hope we get to that point sometime. Bell's trying to go around the outside of Logano as he's been held up with a lot of traffic as we see the seven of Corey the Jaw getting pushed out and Logano going to swing it through down low on that middle and low line that's been competitive in the first two corners but by the time you get to three and four the high line has been paying off so Bell's going to hold it and he's going to get better traction on the back straight away just breezes past through into third position he'll try and cut down and block Logano will be helped with the traffic but Logano's trying to get a wheel back through on the inside line across the line and it's going to be Bell to take third place textbook there Logano's going to fight back through one and two and oh, that's close but we've got that annoying traffic problem now as we are going to get some pit stops coming through uh, Bob Pockress just said by the way uh, that NASCAR are checking for some possible raindrops 
but all is good mm. so far. And Truex coming in as it's oh. three wide. Wow. Uh, Logano and Bell in a really good battle here, and they had to get around Kaz Grala. Uh, but this is a really... F this is a fist fight uh, between Logano and Bell for third. And uh, while they're racing this hard, Josh, they're not losing touch with Kyle Larson just in front of them. So they're able to battle this hard while ooh, Logano loose out of turn four. But they're able to battle hard here, and they're not losing time to Larson ahead as we have some guys on pit road, Brad Keselowski and Chase Briscoe. Two tires as well for Briscoe. Don't know if they were chained on the other side. We cut away from the camera angles, but into the pit lane comes Byron then. Let's go down uh, pit road. Truex just come on. Here comes Larson. Here comes the rest of them. They're all coming. Jamie. Martin Truex Jr. making his way down. They've been happy with that race car all night long. Four tires for him. As you see it right there, they catch that tire. The 22, Joey Logano, just came to a stop in his box. Air pressure adjustment, four tires, Regan. Danny Hamlin in the 11 car. Just feels like he has to slow down the center too much. Can't roll speed through the middle of the corner, so he wants some help with that. In the five car, Kyle Larson, relatively quiet on the radio. They've just been updating him on when he moves around and changes things on the track. What's going on? All right, now Bubba. Right, so now uh, Bubba's coming in too. Bell's taking the lead. Berry in and off. There is Bubba Wallace. Uh, that's two times already. But is, it me or is Bell sliding at the rear a lot? He's looking very loose at the back of the track there. Yeah, he, he's certainly struggling uh, with rear grip and uh, honestly a little bit surprised they've left him out this long with everyone else coming in and getting fresh shoes. So they're going to keep it going. And I do wonder if what you just mentioned about possible raindrops starting to fall, if maybe that's why they're sticking this out, trying to go long, maybe catch a yellow for rain and then have everyone come in under caution with them. Uh, but because I, I don't think normally you would see a guy running, what was he running, fourth, yeah. battling for third, stay out this long and go off off uh, off strategy. But he might be pitting here. He was a little bit, no, he's, no, he's, he's a little bit off the wall coming out of turn two, but he's not pitting. And he's been lapped now. He's got, uh, been unlapped. Bowman's gone through. He's going to get that lap back as well. Briscoe followed him in. And now Bell is... The only driver who has yet to pit. He's got a lap on the rest of the field. Now it's 23.7 seconds to him and Truex. So he's going around again and again and again. And Truex on fresh rubber, touching the back of the 14 oh. of Briscoe. Hello, I'm still here. Uh, yeah, and he, again, catching Bell like crazy. It's going to be a very acute angle getting into the corner. Truex going after Bell, and he gives Bell a little nudge, and here comes Kyle Larson closing in on Truex. And that's a lap back then. So Bell trying to stay out there to get that lap has not worked out. He's losing time and time and time. That's why the gap at 22 seconds. Larson got through there for third as well. So now Truex, I think, has the advantage, but Larson, the stage one winner, is going to hound him, and Bell... Pray for that rain and pray for that yellow this lap, otherwise he's done for. He's got to pit. Yeah, I, I, I think they've got to bring that car to pit road, and I think they are. Yeah, they've brought him in. Yeah, that's that's about three laps too late, in my opinion. Way, way too yeah. late. Adam says, by the way, happy yeah. Easter to you, Matthew. Oh, thank you. Hope everyone's had a terrific Easter holiday, um, which, again... I'll, I'll share some thoughts later when we have a chance about running a race on Easter Sunday. But right now, more pressing issues to talk about is Bell Pitts. Truex getting squirmed up a little bit in that traffic has really allowed Larson to close the gap now, Josh. And it's only a car length between Truex and Larson in what is now the battle for the lead as they have taken it away from Bell, who exits pit road. And coming out alongside him as well was Harrison Burton. I think jumped him. To, so that's another lap back for Burton on that one. But I think Bell might be trying to do a one-stopper. That's my take on the matter. 104. Can do it on fuel now for certain. Tires are a question. How much are they being eaten up? I've got the I've got side by side. We've got the international pictures, and on the other screen now I've got the Fox coverage as well. So I'm seeing all the other graphics, and I'm just trying to <laughs> trying to work out two different things at once as well up here in the commentary box. I've got my other monitor back, Matthew. So I'm no longer having to bend down as much. So I'm finally back to normal. 
But uh, yeah, <laughs> half a second between Truex and Larson. Oh no, it's all over for Bell. Never mind. Speeding on pit road. He's got a, a drive through. So Pell's day gets worse and worse. Yeah, that that totally throws him away, and that's real a real shame. What? So he was battling Logano for third when the pit stop cycle started. He's come out eighth, so just by staying out that much longer, dropped him back four or five spots, and now this speeding penalty is going to take him off the lead lap and out of the top. 20 at least how, how many cars are on the lead lap it's about 20 i think uh i, I um, want to agree with you because I, I don't know about suarez because he's just got back on the lead lap yes host of ours a lap down so it's 20 it's 20 exactly yeah yeah so yeah he'll fall off the lead lap and outside the top 20 uh with this so this has gone terribly uh, i i have to say josh I, i've been stunned about the toyotas have not been as dominant as they were at phoenix the first time we ran this short track package. Now, granted, Truex, Hamlin, and Wallace are all in the top five, but, boy, the Chevrolets dominated qualifying. Um, I, I expected it to be a lot more like Phoenix. Very similar track, the very same uh, short track package, but the Chevrolets have taken some fight here to the Toyotas, and we're about to have the top three just about nose to tail here with 100 laps to go. They're going to close it in nice and slow. So we've got Trex, Larson and Hamlin right up there ready for our parties as Bell has served his drive through penalty. There he is. So he's taking now down the low line. That's him coming out of it, actually, as well. He's already taking it on the inside line. So, no, here he is. So how far away is that picture? That's a replay we're seeing. <laughs> not, it's not live. That's a replay because... 302, 303, yeah, he's no, no, live. Okay, that's a bit weird for the Fox camera because now we are back live with this camera now. So that's weird. There's a glitch somewhere because we've gone back, but we haven't gone back. Okay, so. Okay, so what I, I think he's done it twice. He's done it twice. That can't be right. Did he go through twice? Uh, yeah, I would certainly hope not. <laughs> Computer showing him he's gone through twice. That has to be a glitch from someone's side. Did he like go yeah, to I the commit? So. I wonder if he went to the commitment line and then went back up again. Like it, it, maybe the sensor got him. But no. Uh, oh, that that might be possible, but no, yeah. there's certainly no way he did the drive through twice. It he's looks like 19th. he's being scored nineteenth. Yeah. One lap down. So yeah. He's done it um, once. I want to look into that because the computers put him as twice through the pits. And I was that's why I was confused because I saw him going through again. And I literally said, the lap before, he's just gone through. So that's that's a bizarre one. My pictures and timings are synced up perfectly, so there's no gap between them. Okay. Okay, weird. Um well we had that earlier on in the race actually when the red flag came out. It went red, then it went checkered for about a minute as well. So on our timing screens, I was like, what's going on here? I was honestly thinking about lightning. I was like, is uh, what is that lightning that's coming in? Because they didn't tell us a thing. NASCAR were completely off the pace again. So um yeah, I've put Bob Podcast's tweets on. Um, uh, so they flash up now on my phone. That's three oh seven. I've got a feeling they're going to, what do you think, Matthew? Coast through, save tyres and fuel? They want to go one-stoppers here. Yeah, this is very interesting. We had this situation play out in this race a couple of years ago with one stop in the final stage or two. And Denny Hamlin did the two-stop strategy absolutely perfectly because he made the winning pass with about five laps to go on William Byron. So... The way Richmond is now, what Richmond is, is very interesting on how you want to play this strategically in this final stage. And um, I'll be very interested to see what these leaders do. And, and I'll also be interested to see how Larson, Hamlin, and Logano play this because they're right there behind Truex. These top four are pretty much nose to tail. But do you go hard to try to get the lead here knowing you've still got a little over 90 laps to go, and maybe you're not pitting again. So this is, uh, Richmond has definitely become one of the biggest chess match races uh, of the season. 
And uh, this is going to be a chess match right to the very end uh, with these leaders. We don't know if they're going to go all the way to the end without pitting or make another stop with a, what would presumably be about 40 or 50 laps to go. Uh, this is going to be very interesting right down to the end. Keep but the top four are within a second of each other. Keeping an eye on Bubba Wallace, who's three seconds back to that little party, but did lead laps early on in the race. It was, what about Josh Berry running in 10th place? He's proved he can carve his way through the field. One well-timed pace car will change this race again because I would bet that the top four would come in and change two sets of tires. Oh, yeah. I mean, if we get a caution, everyone mm. would definitely come in for sure. Uh, you can't afford to stay out. I mean, even Christopher Bell, we saw him blow by the leaders just a moment ago. Bell pitted, what, six, seven laps yeah. later than the leaders, and just those six or seven laps uh, have allowed him to blow by the leaders and get his lap back. He is now, in fact, 16th. So not only has he passed the leaders, he's passed Chase Briscoe and Alex Bowman as well to gain a couple of spots. Um, that, that's how important tires are here these days. Uh, so, yeah, if we get a caution, yeah, we would see everyone on pit road. There's Chris Bush, yep, who, as uh, I did note down, I haven't had a chance to say it yet today, starts his 300th career cup series start and uh, briefly led a lap, but now down the order as well. I'm trying to see where he's gone down, actually. Eighth position currently. It's not, not too bad for him, actually. Brad uh, most most recent uh, Richmond winner, Chris Busher, one oh, here yes. last summer. And uh, very unsurprising to see Keselowski and Busher running together. It, Matt's the one that always uh, mentions it on our broadcast. The, these are FK cars. You can tell they're teammates yeah. because they're always <laughs> running together, whether they're all running together third and fourth, or as they are now, seventh and eighth, or if they're running together, 25th and 26th. <laughs> These guys are always together on the racetrack. They definitely have the same equipment. So he joins a Ned Jack, Rusty Wallace as well, coming in, Kyle Busch, Danny Hammond, Joey Nagano, Brad Kozlowski. That's drivers to win their 300th start in the Cup Series so far. There's another one that was on the list I missed uh, because I didn't look down at the Fox coverage quick enough, but yeah, Busher is a habit of winning a 300 start. What about Dale Earnhardt? Did he get to 300 starts? Did he win his 300th? Yeah, he de definitely got to 300 yeah. starts. Don't know if he won his 300th start. That was a lot of drivers that <laughs> won their 300th start. Uh, Rusty Wallace uh, up there, of course, one of the masters of Richmond. But that's a lot of drivers uh, that won in their 300th start. That's pretty impressive. Seven. I think I counted. Four on the second page, three on the first. So that is a lot. Yeah, that's quite a bit. I wonder if it says it on my, on my little notes here, in the, on the uh, quick facts styles. No, I haven't got anything there. I've only got the first start of this track. Jeffrey Earnhardt started here back in 2015. Danny Hemrick, yeah, he started here. Chandler Smith. Nothing completed on that one. I can tell you he's led the most laps here. Richard Petty. That's easily yeah, done. That's a shock. <laughs> In fact, think about it. All-time all races, Richard Petty uh, as well. Uh, he's got the number of races here totals. I think it's at 63, which is ironic again. Uh, Paul's... Gosh, so many races at a single track. Good Lord. Yeah. Oh, actually, Bobby Allison and Richard, Richard Petty, uh, eight poles each. They tie. Wins, Richard Petty had 13 here. Top fives. Petty had 34. Top tens, Petty had 41. He held that record. Lead laps, Kevin Harvick actually has that one on 37. Lead lap finishes as well. Uh, laps completed, Mark Martin has uh, uh, 21,603 laps completed here. Laps led, as I said, Richard Petty, 5,136. Most DNFs, Bill Champion as well on 116. Actually tied with G.J. McDuffie as well on 16. DNFs, the least, Kevin Harvick, nil in his career. But that is currently the same because someone else uh, hasn't DNF'd here in quite a lot of starts. Yeah, Alex Bowman hasn't DNF'd here in 15 starts at the series. The same for Chris Buscher. But the big one, Kyle Busch, 36 starts here, no DNFs. And 
I wow. said it for Denny Hamlin, 34 starts here and never had a DNF and has been inside the top 10 uh, 22 times in his four wins at the circuit. I love you, you, you have them all. <laughs> you, you have them all right there on the tips of your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I've just got two page. I've got two pages on the on the on the uh, clipboards. That's uh, got it out. We, I've got more that I've not even looked at or below. I've got the box score here as well. Denny Hamlin, home circuit average start nine point two, um, one hundred twenty different passes, green flag passes one thousand six hundred ninety six. And uh, let's have a look. Laps led, 2,226 laps led. I don't know if that's um, this track specific or career. It's not telling me on that front. 77 to go. Is it, I guess this is next time out that we're going to see. Or is this past Richmond races? I can't quite tell. Yeah, the, the, these yeah. are these are the times that Clint Boyer and Kevin Harvick won at Richmond. The Fox ah. the Fox booth ha does have a combined six Richmond wins. To be fair, I think Boyer's now, come now, on leaps and bounds, but Harvick was a trained professional bit up there in the box as well. I think Mike Joy's brought him along well enough. Now Boyer. His first win here, now that was a story, in <laughs> 2008. That's the famous race where Kyle Busch turned at Dale Earnhardt Jr. with a few oh, laps yes. to go when Jr. was on that long winless drought. Clint Boyer's the one that snuck by the both of them there and ended up winning the race in overtime. We haven't had that so far this year, and I'm risking it, but uh, we've gone... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. We've gone, what, seven races, um, a duel, two, we've got seven races, two duels, and a clash, no overtime. So, yeah, not too bad, actually. That, that's pretty impressive, too. That That's, that, we went through spells sometimes these last handful of years where we'd go three, four, five races in a row mm. with overtime. Well, it's because they don't want to hear me try and explain it to the new viewers who tune in as well. I was like, how am I going to explain that? It'll happen at Talladega when I'm not there. The first race I miss at Talladega. Oh, yeah. yeah it'll, it'll happen there. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. And that's because I'm covering Long Beach, also on USRN and on the J Mersworth, because I think Jackson's going trackside. So uh, I've got Long Beach and you have Talladega. But I'm not too displeased because I get the second Talladega later on in the year. So I'm all right with that. Yeah, don't want to miss the second Talladega race, that's for sure. Yeah, that's that uh, to me is the better one. Yes. But yes, can't wait to get back to Talladega, especially after the Daytona 500 we've seen. Talladega should be oh, uh, sensational. Don't, I really and, uh, pray that, that I really pray IndyCar just hurries up and I can join the box for the end of the NASCAR. <laughs> Even though it will be my birthday, I don't care. I want to do oh. Talladega. Yeah, yeah. Although, I don't know how knackered I'd be because it would be in the morning, you get China and then <laughs> for Formula One, then he goes, Oh, Dear. God. Yeah. And there's a party to have in between. Dear me. It's going to be an interesting uh, day, actually. And then there's a, there's a sprint race the day before, like 1 a.m. for Formula One as well. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That'll be live on USRN as well, by the way. Sprint races this year. We've got them all sorted. In fact, I'm, I'm surprised, actually, because um, I've created a, a go-around, and I've, I've updated the Mixler app, finally. And I think now that um, the computer isn't hammered up with USB bandwidth, now it's using like a powered thing. Um, US and OBS have actually worked together still today in harmony. They are working really well. Oh. Yeah, not one oh. issue. So, oh. perfect. Beautiful news. Yeah, three hours, 44 minutes in. Usually, they would have kicked each other out by now, but it's been perfect. So, yeah, that's fine. Who's this down pit road? Uh, is it Reddick, Briscoe, or McDowell? Can't tell us this picture. I'm going to say Reddick. Because McDowell's heart is quite easy to spot. It was very difficult to tell who that was. Uh, but that would lead me to think that maybe we're about to see some leaders come in and they are going to split this stage just about in half. And if that's the case, 
these leaders are going to have to get to pit road quick. Who pits first and uh, who then has to react uh, to the leaders coming to pit road. So we are about to see the money stops, I think. Byron uh, here's in. William Byron in from sixth. I think Hamlin's coming in as well. Regan Smith. William Byron continues to battle back after overshooting the pit stall a little bit earlier on. Right now, he just needs some more overall grip. They've been working on that car all night long. Keeps getting a little bit better each stop. Four missed right there, Kevin. Yeah. The and then as well comes the nine of uh, Chase Elliott. So he comes in, gets away. Was there four tires there? There was, wasn't there? I wasn't. I was looking down at the timing screens. And here comes Truex from the lead. So Truex and Larson are going to pit together, and it looks Ooh. like Denny Hamlin is going to stay out an extra lap. Jamie and Joey Logano both in their pit boxes. Martin happy as he has been all race long. Joey Logano firing off a little too tight. Another air pressure adjustment. Legan. Bubba Wallace looking for his first career top 10 at, uh, at Richmond. Right now, there's no more comments on the brake shake. He's been very focused, and the five of Kyle Larson has not said a word since the caution way back at the end of the last stage. He's zoned in right now. That's Truex. That's Larson. He hey, beat Truex. Truex. He got he him. He beat him. Whoa, he got him. It's a long pit lane here, and he got him. Larson takes the net lead of the race away from Truex. Matthew, that's unheard of. Uh, that's huge. That's a great stop by the five team. We know how important track position is on these short tracks these days. And now, Larson in control of this race for now. Uh, Truex is going to have to get going because the way this track runs in particular on this short track package, you do not want to be riding in behind Larson very long. I think Truex is going to get going now to go after him. Yeah, he's got lap traffic in front of him as Larson, the 51. Yeah. And, oh, he's going to go low. Look at this. That's unheard of. Turn one and two, the low line has been better all day long. Truex is going to try and find... He's got him. Oh, wow. And now that's looked to me that Larson backed off there. He knew that his tires aren't up to temperature. Oh, and Truex sliding the rear. Sparks flying. Oh, boy. That a Truex. You don't see Martin Truex Jr. force the issue like that very often. He went down to the very bottom of the racetrack on the main straightaway where it still looks to be pretty damp. That was a heck of a move from Martin Truex Jr. Just wedged his way underneath Kyle Larson. So this is out of the pit lane. A lot of fuel went into the 10. So to the 11, uh, to the 5. Last 10 in pit stops, so... Oh, yeah, Larson. Larson got the elbows out a little bit there on pit exit. My brain's gone frazzled with the information I'm receiving right now because that's Truex getting third position effectively on the road as well. So now we can set up after Hamlin and Bell who haven't stopped yet. So Larson's down a lot here and is not up to temperature. Wow. So still Toyota's... Uh, one, two, three, but it's gonna. Well, I thought Chevy might have had a chance there. I feel most sorry for uh, for Denny Hamlin here, who is leading this race on home soil, and he's not gonna lose out here. Unless there's a yeah, caution. Yeah, th this is this is interesting from Chris Gabehart to leave him out. So obviously they're going to a different strategy. Now they're not gonna win this race by staying out. Truex and Larson have already unlapped themselves, and there's still 57 laps to go. So they're easily going to come back and get Hamlin. So the question is, how long does Chris Gabehart leave Hamlin out? Hmm. They're, they're definitely going to a different strategy here with the 11 and the 20 Christopher Bell, I guess, a little bit. But remember, Bell stayed out later last time, too. So this kind of sticks with their strategy. Yeah, Bell wants to do a one-stopper, doesn't he, in this final stage. So they're going to leave him as long as possible to make it possibly 48, I'm thinking, for Bell, if that's following the strategy. Hamlin comes in, though. Bell does take the lead of this race. Is there anybody down there in the pit lane for us? As Truex takes through. Regan Smith. Well, Danny Hamlin. Gabehart never afraid to try different strategies and different things. No different tonight. Right now, the drive on the race car started off very good on that last run, but started to fade off too much for him at the end, meaning he was spinning the rear tires. And then we're seeing as well, he comes out on pit road a bit further down. So, 
Bell's going to have the advantage here. As the 10 of the 20 go wheel to wheel. So that is Gregson getting a lap back from... Well, that's, that's Bell losing out, actually, so yeah. You heard Regan there rightly say that Chris Gabehart is never afraid to do something a little different on the pit box there. And uh, we'll see if that comes back in any way, them staying out longer, and see if Hamlin may have the tire advantage toward, at, at any point as this run goes on from Truex and Larson. But it looks like from our timing screen, what we're seeing, Josh, mm. Truex got by Larson and has gapped him by about a second. So, uh, like I said uh, before that pass, Truex did not, could not afford to wait because track position is so important and so difficult to get on these short tracks these days. He couldn't afford to wait. He saw one opportunity early in the run, what, second or third lap in the run, <laughs> and he took it. And I'm telling you, he went down all the way to the yellow line on the front straight, and what we're seeing now from an aerial shot, that is still very damp down there. That was as as dicey as Martin Truex Jr. does things right there. That was not something that Martin Truex Jr. normally does. Sign of his old championship self trying to come back through as well. He's been a, a, He won a race earlier on this year, did he, Truex? I can't, he won some stages. Has he won a race this year? Not off the top of my this head. This year, no. Yeah, not off the top of my head. No, I thought not. I know he's won, two, he's won three stages. Two stages at Phoenix, and he didn't manage to get the victory there in stage three. So this will be a win for him on the line with 50 to go. So there's the happy hour commercial going on in the background. Oh, and now we're seeing some others because they've taken off the world feed. Is that uh, <laughs> Jeff Gordon? Yeah, that was, so th that was back in 2002 when the second... Richmond race had this uh, the sponsorship came from Chevrolet and Chevrolet teamed up with the Looney Tunes it was the Chevrolet Monte Carlo 400 <laughs> at Richmond with the Looney Tunes and all the Chevrolet drivers would run a special Looney Tunes livery and in 2002 they decided to bring big mascots of the Looney Tune characters and they ran a race with golf carts with NASCAR drivers and Jeff Gordon ended up getting crashed by a Looney Tune on a golf cart. It was quite comical. <laughs> Looney Tune, is, that is brilliant. Oh, Martin. yeah, he had, but he had a, Jeff had Bugs Bunny on the <laughs> car each year. So it really was. That's all, folks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes, and the first year they did that, he was rudely crashed earlier, uh, early in the race by Sterling Marlin, who just dumped him going into turn three and destroyed that Looney Tunes car when Jeff Gordon was the championship leader going into that race. And Sterling Marlin, with reckless abandon, just crashed him into the turn three wall at Richmond. It's a fantastic circuit, this one. It's given us a very... Uh, this is a replay, actually, we're now seeing in that move. He hit... So that is Truex pushing Bowman out of the way about five times through turn two and three he was hitting him as well to slip back through. So Truex is holding no bounds. He's pulled 2.5 seconds now to Kyle Larson. Um, yeah. Just take, taking a look at the, on the monitor once again. So that was into three. Just a little bit of contact again. So Bowman lifted off. Bowman, of course, in the Chevy. And who drives a Chevy? Carl Larson, <laughs> just saying. I'm going to add that into it. <laughs> yeah, did that's look like true. He, he did look like he was lifting, lifting him off a little bit there, to be fair. So it, it was a bit, a bit of a cheeky manoeuvre to try and come through. But still 2.5. Oh, yes, Berry's back into the top 10. He's just passed Tyler Reddick. So Josh Berry back into that top ten in that Sunny Dika. For me though, even last year, Matthew, when he when he debutized for a couple of races, he was super impressive. Now he's full time. He's getting better and better week in, week out. I think if he had a stronger car and wasn't reliant on the Stuart Haas, he'll have a he would be right up there in a championship position. Uh, well, he was second in this race a year ago driving the nine car. 
uh, for Chase Elliott. He finished second in this race, and he lined up second on a late restart next to Kyle Larson. He had a legit chance to win that race. I think you're right. I think I, I think he's getting a little bit better. It's not, you know, huge leaps, but it, it, it shouldn't be at this point. It should be very small gains week after week. But this is his best shot uh, to have good top 10 or even top 5 finishes is on these short tracks. He loves the short tracks. Uh, the strength of the Stuart Haas cars right now are also this short track package. So these are the chances that Josh Berry has to run competitively for top fives and top tens, like at Bristol when he was competitive all day long there, and, and now here. And these are the chances that he's going to have to take throughout the season. And right now he is running a strong tenth, uh, as we might have a fist fight starting to break out for second here between Kyle Larson and Joey Logano. Yeah, Larson's dropped back massively. Logano's going to be on the attack, and there's traffic ahead as Logano stays to that lower line. The damper runs through three and four. Higher line, turn one and two, inside line, three and four, the high line. That's where the lines have been all day uh, since the rain started to ease Whoa. off and the track getting dry. Logano really took Larson out there. <laughs> well, Logano oh, will hello. get aggressive. We're under, we're under 50 to go. Logano will get aggressive for this spot. Uh, if he feels the need to, but Larson's car just hasn't gone on this run. Um, not uh, not only was he ahead of Truex, now he's not only second, but two and a half seconds behind. So clearly Larson's car, it, either they made an adjustment that the car is not liked, or the car just isn't, they, it doesn't like this set of tires. But this is not a good time for Larson to be backpedaling the way that he is. Zane Smith got through there as well. Now Sidgwick's trying to get through as well. Um, while there's a small gap, um, I want to say something I hope doesn't sound stupid, but you be here seven races into nine weeks, seven races in. Why doesn't Hendrick Motorsport buy Berry away from Stuart Haas and replace Berry uh, um, in the 48 car and get rid of Bowman? Uh, well, I would have to think it's... My my only answer to that was it would be that it would be the sponsorship that Bowman has and brings in with Ally. That has to yeah. be it because if Hendrick if Hendrick Motorsports wanted to go after Josh Berry, then last year would have been the perfect time yeah. to do it when he was running their cars when he was running their cars and running well with them. It would have made all the sense in the world. So clearly, Alex Bowman. Either one has a contract that they can't get out of, and we know that's not the case because contracts are gotten out of in this industry all the time. Yeah. Or it's that Hendrick has all this sponsorship money coming through with Ally, and they don't want to give that up, which, I mean, that's the business of the sport. That would be my only answer. Yeah, because judging by the early stage of these races, we've yeah, Bowman's been at the back quite a lot. He's impressed today but he's been dropping backwards and backwards and backwards. And out in the commentary box uh, is Kevin Harvick's son. That's, I'm going to throw <laughs> Second over. Second lane with those hash marks and, and trying to drive straight up off the corner like you had mentioned with that diamond earlier, Clinton, taking advantage of that, that Kyle Larson car that seems to be getting tighter. Well, what a great shot in the arm for Logano. And okay, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I think he's just showing his son around the commentary box. He hasn't actually said anything, but I'm seeing on the Fox coverage right now. They were side by side, as we see. Uh, Logano has passed Larson for second position during all that drama around the outside. It turns three and four. The high line that's been working all day. And uh, Larson, uh, a line of least resistance, unfortunately. 32 to go. And it's Truex leading the way as she goes side by side on Fox. Yeah, that's a comfortable, comfortable lead for Truex. And Logano not only has gotten by Larson, but now Larson has slipped back five, six tenths, uh, even more than that now, almost a second behind Logano. So, yeah, Larson's car is just not going on this run. And uh, that's a shame. He's lost his chance to win this race if we go green from uh, here on out with 31 laps to go. But we could get a late caution, and if we do, that would certainly change everything up. And it would bring Logano into it. And again, as I said earlier, we know how aggressive Logano can get late in these races. 
uh, especially when he's had the start to the season that he has, because Logano <laughs> has not had a good start to this season. So if he does get a late restart, he will go all out to try to get this win, uh, because there's just been nothing good happened so far for the 22 this season. As uh, it looks like Hamlin is starting to close in on Larson in a fight for third. As they go off into turn one, Josh, where in the seats it turns one and two, there look to be just dozens of people there. Yeah, I mean... Why, why are we running this race <laughs> on Easter Sunday night in the Bible Belt as Hamlin does make this pass on Larson for third? First off, we should not be running a race on Easter Sunday. I, I'm I sorry. I get it. There's a chance for TV ratings to be had, and TV rules everything these days. But if you're going to run a race on Easter Sunday, maybe don't do it in the Bible Belt. Because this is... There's no one here. There's, there's, no, there's one. no one here. And it, that's, that's a real shame... Again, religious beliefs aside for a moment on this, these teams run what? They run 38 races in a 40 to 42 week span. Yeah. They need more off weeks, and I think this would be a good off week to have. I would personally reduce the season. Do we really need to visit tracks twice? Do we? Can we not shrink, shrink uh, things down? No. It's, it's ridiculous. No. We, we, we could cut the schedule down to 30 or 32 races and life would go on brilliantly for everyone except the TV executives. Yeah. And that's the reason that we don't cut it down. Okay, it's tiring and tiring and tiring. and uh, Yeah, what was where? Well, to be fair, the only reason we decided to drive NASCAR is because we never stop. We're literally running uh, week in, week out anyway. So that's the bonus things to us. And to be fair, I didn't expect to be covering what what would be, I think, uh, ten weeks running of NASCAR, nine races across it. I didn't yeah. expect to be covering that. I was expecting to be handing over to USRN uh, a lot more often. Haven't had to do that yet, and Talladega will be the first one. Next one, I think, is uh, when we're at Canada, IndyCar's at Red America, and I can't remember where NASCAR is. But yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. Although, where is... is that, um, yeah, it's that magical weekend. Is that, is that Sonoma? Sonoma, yeah, yeah, last Fox race, that's it, yeah. So, I know USRN uh, will have the NASCAR. USRN 2 will probably have the Formula 1. Question though to you, Matthew. <laughs> where's IndyCar going? Yeah, where's IndyCar going? Yeah, that's something we haven't had to deal with before, have we? Oh, jeez. I, mean, yeah. I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> We might have to call WSR and ask for their radio network. We might have here. to. <laughs> we might have to. I could always oh, put geez. F1 Don't on. you love it when you have three races going on at the same time? Brilliant. Brilliant oh, no. work, guys. I'm, I, I tell you what, I might shove F1 on the USRN YouTube channel as well, that, and then that frees up IndyCar for USRN 2. I don't know. Oh, that's, that's so annoying. That is just, that's so annoying. <laughs> I know I'm on the F1. You're at Sonoma. And I think Jess is calling um, IndyCar, but I don't know who's where. Like, okay. is is Jess going to be with Matt White? In because Seth's with you. Is <laughs> it's like who? I know. I know. I know. Adams with me on um, Canada with someone because although Josh T I think is doing IndyCar. I have no idea. That's June's problem. No clue. <laughs> that, that is. Yeah, we need to get through April and May first. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a busy one. And uh, we are in April. And just remind you, April the 10th and April the 11th, the open test for the Indianapolis 500, the 108th running as well. The coverage currently in discussion, because we don't know what uh, NBC are doing yet. If it's going to be TV pictures. Uh, as we see right now, Trex trying to lap uh, Ross Chastain. So just a little bit of uh, contact there. But, uh, yeah, basically, if if... If NBC show the open days, we're there. Yes. Can't wait. Uh, countdown to Indianapolis is very much on. I'm very I've, actually, yeah. um, I've actually just started the process this week, just to give you a peek behind the curtain. Oh, I've written out some more uh, spots 
to play on USRN yes. to promote Indianapolis. I've written them out. They will be recorded tomorrow, and I will get them into a finished product as the week goes on. And what do I need to voice? Those spots will likely be debuted next Saturday during the Final Four. Excellent. What do I need to voice? Because you said I, there's some things I need to do, and some F1 stuff. And Yeah, yeah. We, I, I can absolutely get you scripts. You're, yeah, you're you a very busy some... person, no, send them but over. I can absolutely get you some scripts. Send them over. <laughs> send them over. Let's get some scripts out. Hamlin's closing okay. in on the back of the gun. Out. Well, what's the gap? 0.2 of a second. Okay. So this is going to be close. I, uh, I will say Truex is in a lot of traffic up there, too. So Truex, uh, Logano and Hamlin only need one mistake by Truex, and they'll be right there because Truex is. He's in a nest of lap traffic here. Despite the red flag, which was out for two minutes, I know, but still, it, we're three hours into the race, it's not being as long as I thought it was. I mean, it's, dare I say, <laughs> might be in bed by 4 a.m., which is in 23 minutes yeah. time. That's a, that's a record. Uh, as well. But uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to actually, we'll, we'll have to concert at the end of the race soon because we are into the last 15 laps. But uh, I'm very much looking forward to, Matthew, our traditional team up at the bump day qualifying formats as well. That's going to be fun. Yes, yes, it will. I hope Matt White and All Seth things can join Indianapolis, us. I'm here mm. for. Oh, yes. And uh, also, whoops, blimey. How close do you want to get, Chase Elliott? Robbing with Brad Keselowski, and that's over the battle for seventh position. And he's going to go on the inside. Elliott using that traction through turn one and two. Now, though, the outside line was faster through three and four. So watch the traction now from Brad Keselowski on the outside line. He'll get the power down, and he'll breeze through with ease. That outside line through three and four has been so much more powerful. That's not regular either, is it? Because I had... Uh, look back at previous races. Usually it's pretty level wherever you put the car, but this rain today has sort of created a dry, wet line. Yeah, the, the rain has changed the racetrack, and of course, this is the first time we've run here at night in a yeah. long time, too, so uh, not, su not surprising to see some intricacies of the track change here, but I'm telling you, Joey Legato and Denny Hamlin are running down Martin Truex Jr. It's down under one second here, We'll see when they cross the line what timing and scoring is telling us. Six it, yeah, Now it's down to three quarters of a second legato to Truex. So this this might still get tied at the front. And Truex now being held up by Austin Dillon as well. So that this traffic's causing him a load of problems. Bell's just passed Berry and Keslowski, And he's put himself into eight. He's going to have a go at Elliott as well. So there's action everywhere you look because... Logano has got a bit of breathing room to handle now, so it's, I think it's Logano versus Truex for the race win here. I think it is, and problem for Logano is, is Truex is going to get by Chastain and Dillon here. Now Logano's got to get through that traffic, and time running out for sure with what? Coming to nine yeah. to go, and they are double file in front of Logano, Dillon, and Chastain, so this is not going to be quick and easy for Joey to get around the one and the three. He's going to take the one on the inside line, and he's, well, he's got ahead of Syndrome. Can he get ahead of Chastain? Uh, I thought Ross might go up a little bit through turn two. Just keeping that line smooth. For some reason, uh, Fox's timer is wrong. There's not nine laps to go, there's eight laps to go. That ticker is wrong. So watch for that white flag. It's got, it's, uh, now it's corrected itself. There you go. Uh, the ticker was wrong uh, for a couple of seconds there because now there's eight laps to go. It was saying there was nine. It was uh, 15 seconds behind, but uh, Fox have corrected that ticker. Uh, well, I say it's Fox. I presume that's the international feed graphics that they've got it on. So it was probably NASCAR themselves that run that one that we look at. Uh, up here in the box. Six tenths of Legano. This is getting a bit tense now. He's got, what, two, three car lengths? He's going to get here. Yeah, the and, uh, yeah, and Truex just passed Ricky Stenhouse. Now Logano is going to get by Stenhouse. Problem for Logano is going to be getting to Truex. Now, if he gets him, <laughs> we've seen Logano move Truex out of the way for wins in the past, but the problem is going to be getting there as we are getting down to it six laps to go There's oh and look how deep oh, Logano oh, oh. drives it in turn one wow you could hear the brakes couldn't you how late he was taking that in and he's right up 
was it five tenths of a second to Truex and he look how high he's going through three now Truex has taken the wrong line he's losing a lot of time there through the last two corners as we have five laps to go Logano takes it low through one and two that's the best line Truex follows it through and it's high medium medium to high line lanes two and three through the last two corners that's the best layout and Truex is going to go ultra down low and he's losing a lot of time yeah, Logano seems to be diamonding turns one and two. He'll start low, drift up, then cut it down low again. There is a little bit of traffic ahead of Truex. I believe that might be the John Hunter Nemechek car just in front of him. No, I beg your pardon, it's Todd Gilliland. So uh, Truex has a little bit of traffic to deal with, but he's almost to the finish line here, coming to three to go. But he's going to need these cars ahead of him to work with him here. The gap is, we'll call it five car lengths. Very close. Coming through. And Truex is going to have that run on Gilliland as well. The exit. Gilliland's running in 22nd position. Oh, what's happened? We've jumped to three to go now across the line. Did we just jump backwards or forwards? What happened there? I think we jump forward. Yeah, three yeah. to go. Oh, caution! Yellow's out. We're gonna go. Oh, I don't believe it. The yellow's come out. Now, what's happened to the? T is it? Is it an interference with the picture? Because that looked like a lightning strike. That's come out. Larson. What's happened? He's still. F Larson's dropped back a lot. Yellow's out. And it's Larson spinning. That's why he's dropped back. Kyle Larson spins out from fourth place, and for the first time this year, we go to overtime. And that's why the computers jump to six to go. That's why the pictures froze. So that yellow came out before we saw the incident. So the caution comes out, and I think I cursed that one, Matthew, because I said it earlier on that we haven't gone to overtime. Yeah, and now, folks, now, well, first, what happened to Larson? Was he hit by Wallace coming out of turn four? Yeah. Was there contact? Oh, yes, there was. Bubba. Dude, not only was there contact, it was it was well out of the corner. That was onto the straightaway where Wallace hit Larson. Of course, Larson, he was struggling really badly this entire run. Mm. So now what we're going to get here is I'm guessing, Josh, everyone's going to pit yep. for four fresh tires. But does anyone at the tail end of the lead lap take a take a shot here? Does like a Ty Gibbs or a Noah Gregson, they don't have any chance to win this race. Do they take a shot here and go two tires or maybe stay out completely? If you're one of those guys, I think oh, you have to. What is there to take lose? It. Take it. Take it, take it, take, go for it. Otherwise, you, you are out of it. You've got two laps to try and sort it. So, for the first time in 2024, we go to overtime, and Denny Hamlin is coming in, and he has the lead of the race, apparently, but it's not. So, I think the computer's got it wrong there, because uh, Truex definitely got the lead from Logano. So, everyone's going to dive in. We will explain the oval time rule after the pit stops because everybody is diving in for tyres. And Chastain's going out. And yeah, so everyone on the lead lap's coming in. Oh, those are. This is going to be interesting. Jamie? Jamie, Ch what a Jamie. turn of events here. Martin Truex Jr. on the radio right away. You got to be kidding me. They said, come on, bring Two it to, to us. Same with Joey Logano. Put four tires on here. Pit crews must step up and perform and make it happen. You see the 11 in as well as the 23. Slow. 19. You see the 22 up beside him. Keep an eye on. Danny. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at Truex and Logano. Oh, They're coming Hamlin. out side by side. Uh, Hamlin, oh. Hamlin's going to beat them both. Hamlin's going to, and so Chastain's got, apparently they're in front, but that's Denny Hamlin on home soil taking the lead. Oh, yes. Yeah. Look at, look at that's this. A great stop. Great stop from the 11 crew. Cho Gibbs Racing are delighted with that one. They get the lead. And Denny Hamlin on home soil might just make it a, a, a fifth victory. Well, this could so, yeah. Right. I, I don't think anyone stayed out either, so I think that's the order right there is Hamlin, 
yeah. Truex and Logano. I don't think anyone stayed. But did we did we get it figured if Chastain stayed out or not? He's just come in now. Ross Chastain's just come in this lap, so he's taken it in right. Let's try then for the first time this year and to everybody new on JV Motorsports who joins us. Those on USRN know this of old. Those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, this is what overtime means. We have completed the scheduled distance of 400 laps. Overtime occurs if a caution comes out within the last three laps. So basically what this now means is we will have two laps extra to decide the end of this race. When the green flag goes out, we must complete the two to go. If the white flag is then displayed at the end of that lap, the next flag will end the race, be it a yellow or the checkered. However, if on that penultimate lap there is another caution, we do the whole procedure again. And here's the deal. It is unlimited unlimited tries to finish the race under green and that in the past is where things get a little bit complicated because yellows breed yellows and in nascar we could do this all day like we uh, what was it we've had 15 <laughs> overtime events i think it's the highest going off the top of my head you've probably called a lot on them matthew <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you you explained it perfectly. Unlimited attempts at a clean restart, and a clean restart defined, as you said, as the leader receiving the white flag. Now, that's all. The, the, that's the only driver that has to receive the white flag for it to be deemed a clean restart. It does not have to be the whole field getting the white flag. As soon as the leader crosses the line to receive the white flag. That's when we have a clean restart, and the next flag, as you mentioned, yellow or checkered, finishes the race. So, as you said, this is the first overtime race of the season. Now, this is going to be really interesting here. You've got teammates on the front row, Hamlin and Truex. We'll see which lane Hamlin chooses. Does he go inside or outside? And how nice do these teammates race against each other here on this overtime restart? About to find out. <laughs> this is yeah. this is gonna get really, really good. If, and, I, uh, if I was Hamlin, I'd take the inside line because that's the best one through one and two, and then drift up high through three and four and try and take that flag. And has he? Yes, he has. He's taken that inside line. Overtime attempt one here for the Toyota owners. Four hundred. Hamlin and Truex coming through a two-lap shootout. And the leader must take the white flag for the next one to end the race. Caution prior won't matter. Overtime is green here at Richmond. And it's a good restart from Hamlin. He has taken that low line through one. Logano is now under pressure from Larson. But Truex is pressuring. He wants this race win. But Hamlin can feel the five. Oh, and he's drifting. And he ought to put Truex in the wall there, Matthew. Yeah, uh, Hamlin was really loose. Got Truex up out of the groove. Logano's on both of them, but it's going to be Hamlin, the leader at the white flag. Final lap. Next flag ends it, and the white flag is out, and Truex down into third position. Logano takes second place. Hamlin's only going to make it through two more corners. We thought it was all over. The boy from Richmond might not have got it, as we see Truex drop off the podium now as well. But it is high five at Richmond. Denny Hamlin does does it and wins on home soil yes yes that is so important and joe gibbs racing loves every second of it and denny hamlin wins and another win this year for him that was brilliant matthew boy uh, and yeah oh, whoa Truex, Truex, Truex is going after him Oh my goodness! Martin Truex Jr. is going after his teammate here after the flag. Has he got a puncture now as well? Yeah, look, he's got a puncture. Front and right down. Where did that oh, happen? Martin Truex Jr. I, I don't know what he's mad about. There. He can't be mad at Hamlin. Oh my gosh! He, well, uh, we saw it live on the last lap. Truex and Larson making contact. I don't know why Truex is upset at. Hamlin? Oh, Hamlin put him Boy, in the wall. Boy, he and Larson made a bunch of contact after the flag. Oh, my goodness. Oh my word. That's what caused the puncture. 
Larson hit him. And so, so Truix hits Larson on the back straight way out of three and four. And then Larson shoves him into the wall. And he, that's where the puncture comes in. And Hamlin, well, I don't think that he, yeah, he was. Oh, what was that from Larson? Yeah, Lar Larson it wasn't happy that he hit him the first two times, but then why Truex went down the back stretch and ran into the back of Hamlin two times, I do <laughs> not know. I mean, Hamlin did nothing wrong there. Listen, I'll be the first to tell you when Denny Hamlin does something wrong, he did nothing <laughs> wrong there. He didn't do a thing. Uh, I think Martin Truex Jr. is just very upset and frustrated with, uh, he had this race won before that caution, but he does not need to be doing that. Going after Denny Hamlin, his teammate that did zero wrong. Hamlin has absolutely snookered one here from everyone at his home track. He's talked so many times in the past how this is as important a race to win for him as any to win at Richmond. He's done it so many times before, and he's done it again tonight here. He's gotten a little bit lucky, but you have to be lucky in this sport to win these races, but I can't wait to hear from Martin Truex Jr. because that was unnecessary. That was unnecessary what he just did. I get it. He's frustrated. He had the race won. He was 30 seconds away from winning the race if Daryl Wallace Jr. does not spin Kyle Larson, but you don't do that. That is unbelievable. Truex feels like the race has gone from him, and it was Larson I think he blames. Larson steals a podium despite spinning and causing the yellow. You, you, as you say, yeah. Matthew, you can understand yeah. it. <laughs> but Denny Hamlin becomes our official second repeat winner of the year. Yes. A few cheers for you, booze. But Jamie's down there. Home no, Smith. Richmond, Denny Hamlin. You find a way to get the win. Your pit crew on the final pit stop gets you out front. You did the job from there. Yeah. Yeah, they all pick crew. This is a team win for sure. Uh, this trophy needs to go and, and to each one of these pick crew members' uh, house. It just did an amazing job. They've been killing it all year. Uh, thanks to Mavis Tires and Brakes for uh, coming on. Man, we got some good runs with these guys. So thank to uh, Jordan Brand, Coca-Cola, Shady Rays, uh, just everyone that makes this happen. It's just such, such a great feeling when you know you can come in and have a pick crew like that. Denny Hamlin wins in Richmond on Easter Sunday. Here's Joey Logano. 228 no, laps led by Martin Truex Jr. and everything changes at the end of this race. Martin, take us through the emotional roller coaster that it was. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's unfortunate, you know. But fortunately, this this has happened here a few times uh, over the years. So um, yeah, we we're you know in a great spot and um, had a great Auto Owners Camry all night long, and the guys did a really good job. Just uh, got beat out of the pits, and then you know got I don't know. He jumped the start and then just used me up in turn one. So, uh, definitely uh, sucks, uh, but, uh, you know, good solid start? day and another another car capable of winning. Oh, he did jump the start. So, we'll just have to uh, come back next week, try to get him again. Thanks, Martin. Yeah. So, Larson jumped the start so, and bumped the back of Truex. Yeah, yeah. So, he, he's saying that Hamlin jumped the start. Really? Oh. And then, what did he say? That he that he drove him up the track in turn two? Is that what he said? I mean, <laughs> what do you what do you expect to happen? Right here we go again. Um. So okay, we're gonna watch the restart. So Hamlin can get to the first line of the restart zone, and he can go once he hits the first line of the restart zone. He can accelerate any time he wants to. Once he, he hits it. that first line. So I don't see anything with that. I, I thought he accelerated right on the first line. I see nothing wrong with that restart. Hang on, looking at it again, so across that white line, did he? when did he hit that accelerator? About a well, let's hear from Kyle. He did fine. You got loose and you run out and you were able to save it and then salvage this great finish. Well, I was a little bit loose and then I got finished off there, so... Uh, Thankfully, it all kind of just worked out, and and I didn't, you know, I only lost whatever you know a spot to Bubba and then to, to Byron there. I was able to keep it going, and then my pit crew did a really good job to uh, get us off pit road, gain us those spots, restart fourth, and, and gain one more. So um, I will take a third after what could have been a lot worse there on the front stretch. So uh, proud of the HendrickCars.com team, proud of Chevy, uh, everybody Hendrick Motorsports. So it was a good good weekend for us, you know, getting the pole and. 
winning a stage and, and you're getting back to third there at the end. So uh, happy about that. A lot of rubbing, a lot of marks on yours and the 19 car. What happened between you two? <laughs> I think he was just mad, you know, like he was he was mad that the 11 used him up on the restart. That's probably where it really started from. And then you know, the 22 got to his inside one and two. I got in behind the 22 and he just turned left across my nose and uh, had me up on the apron off a of two. And then I don't know if he thought that I just piled it in there, but then he door slammed me down the middle of the back stretch. So you know, I just figured in three and four, I was going to use him up a little bit. So I think he just is more mad at Denny, but I was the closest one to take his anger out on. So uh, I'm sure I haven't seen a replay either, but um, I'm I'm guessing the replay looks the way I kind of saw it one and two, and then he'll he'll realize that and and probably be all right. You know, Martin Martin's one of the most re probably the most respected guy uh, in the garage area. So I was surprised when he turned left on me down the back stretch, um, and then again after the checkered. But um, it's all good. I, I I hope he doesn't have any hard feelings to me because I definitely don't towards him. I like I said, I got a lot of respect for him. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Mike. Checkers are wreckers. That's what we've been having here today. I'm just, I'm awfully confused why Martin Truex Jr. is so upset. So he's saying that Denny Hamlin has jumped the restart. We're looking at a replay here. You can't see it. I don't see anything wrong with what Hamlin did there. I mean, he accelerated early in the zone. Well, right when he got on the line, the first line he can go. But that's his prerogative. Then what he's saying off of turn two that Hamlin used him up, I don't see that at all. I see Hamlin went a little wide, yeah, yeah. but that's that's what you do on an overtime restart when you're the guy on the inside. Also, let's not act like Denny Hamlin's not done that before to people. <laughs> Daytona um, Jules. I mean, Pocono last year, he put Larson in the wall. Uh... He did it to Chastain at Pocono the year before, actually. So that's kind of Denny Hamlin's move on these late restarts. He's going to take the inside, and then he's going to drift up on the guy to his outside, and either the guy on the outside is going to give, let off the throttle, or he's going to put him in the wall. <laughs> so I don't know why Truex is acting, one, so surprised about it, and two, I, I, that's just what you're going to get on an overtime restart in this series. Sorry. Well, at least only one thing from this. It wasn't multiple attempts. It was one overtime. <laughs> That's what it's designed for as well. Right, let's go through the um, standings in the championship. I know it's pretty useless at this stage of the season, but it's always interesting to see where they are because Truex does lead by 14 points to Kyle Larson now. That's what I wanted to pick up. Denny Hamlin's 18 points back. Ty Gibbs, 34 points back. Then it's Blaney, 41 back. Uh, Bell is 51 back. Oops, as I think they've signed off, actually, on uh, the uh, international feed there uh, to come through. Byron, 55 back. Uh, then it's Chase Elliott, 61 back. Chastain, 63 back. And Tyler Reddick, 71 back. Rounds out the top 10. In terms of the results uh, from this race... It is Denny Hamlin, victorious, from Joey Logano. Kyle Larson, third. Uh, Truex finishes fourth. Elliott's fifth. Bell, sixth. Byron, seventh. Keselowski, eighth. Busher, ninth. Reddick finishes tenth. Josh Berry just dropped outside on that restart in 11th. And it's Gregson in 12th. Bubba Wallace back in 13th place. Not the great end for him. Uh, then it's Eric Jones in 14th. Chastain, 15th. And it's uh, Ty Gibbs, 16th. Bowman 17th, Briscoe 18th, Blaney 19th, and Kyle Busch finishing in 20th still, though, uh, getting his 100% uh, record at this circuit without retiring. Further down, yeah. uh, we get Todd Gilliland 21st and Suarez 22nd, Sinjin 23rd, Dylan 24th, John Hunter Nemechek 25th, Michael McDowell 26th, great start of the year, low start to them in the um, following five races. Uh, then it's Carson Holsevar, Ryan Priest, Ty Dillon, uh, Daniel Henry, Kaz Guala, Justin Haley, Ricky Tires Jr., Harrison Burton, Zane Smith, Corey the Jaw. And you know what, Matthew? Not one retirement for the first time this season. Wow, that's that's impressive. We, we had so many running at the finish at Bristol, too. So uh, everyone seems to be getting to the flag on these short tracks. And um, listen, it wasn't the best race, but it certainly did have... A very dramatic finish, as a number of these races uh, can have 
at times. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and uh, this short track package, we keep hearing it, and I, I understand fans are getting annoyed by to continue hearing the phrase that it's a work in progress, but they are chipping away at it. They're trying to get it better. They know it's a difficult proposition with this new car on short tracks, and they're trying to get it going and get it better. I think they have gotten it better last season to this. It's not, you know, <laughs> night and day difference, but I do think they are getting it better. And uh, l listen, before that caution came out, we had Logano and Hamlin running down Truex. It and we might have been finish. in for a frantic finish then, but then, of course, we had the caution. Caution breeds yellow, but this time we got to the end. Okay, uh, Matthew, what's coming up next week on USRN? Uh, so we have Martinsville next Sunday. Uh, 400 lap Martinsville race, by the way, next Sunday on USRN and on JB Motorsports as well. I know who I have, um, uh, who I have on the USRN broadcast with me, Brandon Crossland. Oh, really? With me. Oh, wow. Yes. So, uh, looking forward to that. He was with us one time last year for a truck race at IRP. Uh, so, this will be his cup debut on USRN. Very much looking forward to that as uh, we'll go to Martinsville uh, to continue this spring swing uh, through the southeast, going from Bristol to Texas to Richmond, now to Martinsville, and then back to Texas the following week. Um, but, yeah, can't wait for Martinsville next week. I'm just double checking. What's the start time of that Eastern? I believe it's 3 p.m. Eastern time. So that'd be here in the UK. Because I'm just starting to con get it. Is 8 o'clock now? Have you changed your clock? We have. Oh, my God. Well, um, you'd be delighted to know that next week um, it will be a USON race, as we are covering MotoGP in oh. America. Oh. Yeah. So next week it's your first go on JV Motorsports, Matthew. Oh, wow. I thought it'd be sooner. Oh, the pressure, the, the pressure has been ramped up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, I, I guess I would, I, I'll do what you've done, and as soon as MotoGP's over, I'll hop back on. That's what I'm guessing would happen, like, in between stage breaks. So, yeah, that's uh, interesting, as, uh, yeah, same time as MotoGP. I thought now the clocks have changed, haven't they? So, yeah. Oh. Who puts it on the same time as the MotoGP? They've got no scheduling. Okay, right, we'll work that out midweek then and get it all sorted. So, uh, my thanks to you, Matthew, for A, lending me USRN's airwaves and allowing us to continue our Cup Series coverage this year. That's all part of the plan, and next week you'll be doing the same for me, it looks like. And uh, my thanks to Megan as well for the two hours she did and has now since fallen asleep. Uh, and I will go in, and I bet she's not even changed out of her clothes. So I'll probably have to double-check on her and make sure. Um, Matthew, thank you very much. Uh, any closing words from you? Uh, yeah. Um, I wish we wouldn't race on Easter. Hmm. Um, especially Easter Sunday. We very well could have ran this race on Saturday, and the team's going to have been home uh, to spend Easter Sunday with their families. But that aside, I, I, I've spoken my speech uh, on my... <laughs> words on that not only tonight but the last few years that we've done this at bristol uh other than that um a, another test of nascar in wet conditions on an oval mm. um i hope they can use those data points to get to where they want to be on this which i think is uh not have to throw a competition caution and declare the track or the race wet or dry or whatever so hopefully we're get, we get closer to that um, another strong performance on this uh, in this short track package from Toyotas, but they didn't dominate completely the way they did, they did at Phoenix and at Bristol. The Chevrolets had something for them, and uh, credit to the Chevrolets for making a gain here in the short track package. What, we had Larson, Byron, and Elliott, I think, finish mm. in the top ten, so they were all Hendrick Chevrolets. But they have made a few gains, but Toyota still seems to have... Uh, a stranglehold on everyone in this package. They've now won with this package with Bell at Phoenix, Hamlin tonight. Bristol did not run this package, but it was a short track race, and Hamlin won that one as well. So Toyota seemed to have what they need on these short tracks so far. Which is comparison to what we were talking about early on in the season when we were worried that they wouldn't have the best car 
coming forward, they have proved us wrong and now stand very good. On our monitor, Denny Hamlin lifts the belt. He is our 2024 Spring Richmond winner for the fifth time winning here at the circuit. We'll be back here in the summer. My thanks to you, Matthew. My thanks to Megan. My thanks to all of you on USRN and JB Motorsports as well. A very happy Easter Sunday and a very happy Easter Monday to you all around the world. Now, for God's sake, go spend some time with your family. I'm going to bed as well. Take care. Happy Easter. Bye-bye.